Where are we right now? That's uh, about a nine, David. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we've seen several lowerings with the storm. We've seen scud being pulled up into the base of the storm. Uh, this whole updraft is obviously rotating here. Uh, it's just not getting rotation, uh, strong rotation to the cloud base level yet. It's still a little bit high base at this point. We've also seen some half-inch hail that has fallen on us here, David. But, I mean, this thing is just evolving. The storm continues to, to get stronger, in my opinion, as it goes. It's, it's basically trying to get organized now, David. All right, great job, Val. Looking good. And uh, hopefully this will just stay like that. But uh, this thing is spinning, right? A little bit of a... See the scud here trying to develop? All right, so we have scud developing underneath that updraft. That's there. Okay, so many, many storms to deal with. So let's go ahead and zoom on in, and let me show you what's going on here as far as velocity data. Let's start with the Southwest Metro storm, and then we'll make our way down the line. Hank is right there, and that is, let's see, let's make sure we get our, uh, make sure control room that Hank's shot is up. We need Hank's shot up in one of these boxes. I don't care which one, but let's, let's switch Hank out. I want to see him. And Hank's right here. This is the velocity. The couplet is just to his west. Okay, not strong enough for a tornado warning yet, but it's moving northeast. There's your couplet right here, area of spin. It's going to go right on and just west of Will Rogers coming into the southwest metro. Do we have anything on shear rate? Lacey, anything on shear nothing, rate? No, nothing, nothing yet. Okay. impressive right now. Okay, so nothing crazy. It is spinning. It's a deep mesocyclone producing large hail damaging winds. Okay, so, uh, wow. All right, a lot going on. Uh, let's come back down the line here, and uh, shear rate showing something down here, it yeah, looks this like. Yeah, these are a couple stronger storms Strong? down southwest. Yeah. Okay. All right, so hook here. What you got? Okay, well, okay, well, we can, he can come a little farther. I mean, it's only going to be there for, hey, uh, Greg, if he gets on the, yeah, on the back side of this, on the southwest, a little farther, you know, he can... He can make his way in. All right, let's go to southwestern Oklahoma now. Severe storm over cement. Another one back and uh, to the southwest of Pine Ridge or southwest of Fort Cobb. And uh, Fort Cobb Lake's right here. This is another severe storm. Let's turn radar on down okay. here. And these are, again, rotating thunderstorms. And uh, we'll switch radars here. This has a hook on it a little bit. It's a little bit elevated. And you're thinking, what does that mean? It's, it's not completely rooted down into the lowest levels. And because it's kind of got a hook on the northwest side. So it is a supercell. It is rotating. It's moving northeast at about 40, and it's going to Fort Cobb. Uh, it's going to Anadarko. The biggest storm right now is where Jeremy is, and uh, Jeremy's on this hill down here near cement. Let's go to Jeremy Carter. Let's bring his shot in, and Jeremy, uh, give us an update. Show us that base there, that base. Uh, tilt your camera up, Jeremy Carter. Give us a shot if you can. Go ahead. Still high base. It's kind of a, but it's a smooth base. You know, it don't take long for these things to, to get rotated and turn around, but we're watching it. I'm here at the base, and we're getting some pretty decent hell, maybe quarter uh, nickels and dimes, but uh, we're going to keep our eye closely on it. David, back to you. All right, great job, Jeremy. So he's on the cement storm down there. So we have trackers on all of the storms, and there's a lot, but when you have a lot of trackers, you can cover a lot of storms, all right? We have a lot of real estate to cover right now. All right, so that's Jeremy's shot. That's a cement storm. Let's come back to the metro now, and uh, let me see Jim Gardner's shot when we get it back up. And, okay, there's, there's that. I see Jim shot. And uh, let's go back to Lynx. I'll tell you what, let's go back. He, he's moved north, right? Big microburst at Will Rogers and hail at Pine. Okay. Okay, all right. Big hail, microburst uh, at Will Rogers. And uh, I, I'm, I'm going to guess doing some, some kind of damage at the airport, it looks like, from damaging wind. Damaging wind, okay. Uh, that's where the hook is right here. This is moving all across Oklahoma City. Not tornadic, nickel, dime, quarter size hail. And here's your hook. Hank's right there. Let's go to Jim Gardner. Then we'll go back to Hank. Let's go to Jim. And then we'll do a storm track. It's going to Edmond. It's moving across the entire city. Jim Gardner, that has a mesocyclone in it. You can see the updraft. It is rotating. What do you think? Give us an update. Big hail in there and damaging winds for now. Go ahead, Jim. Well, that's right, David. I'm just about five miles directly west of Will Rogers. Uh, I've got to get a special BFR clearance to go through their airspace right now due to the storm passing through. I just heard that they issued a microburst alert just moments ago to an airliner. Had a pretty about a 29 knot loss on approach to the runway there, which is really a big loss there. They also had hail coming down at the hangars there. So again, we're on the, on the west side of this, David, because until I get clearance to pass 
through their airspace here, but it is dropping a lot of hail. And as you can see, as we pan, uh, let's, I think, yeah, we got a shot there. You can actually see the hail, David. You can actually see the hail right there if you can see it at the bottom of the screen there coming off the ground right there. So that's a pretty impressive shot. But again, this is a large storm. It's moving, we're tracking, we're right behind it. And like I said, once I get clearance through Will Rogers, I'll be able to do a little more. Jim Garpoint live from Bob Mills, Skies 9, back to you. All right, great job, Jim. Now this is the, again, Southwest Oklahoma City storm. And uh, again, this is coming into the Metro. It's already in Oklahoma City, all right? It's already over downtown OCU. And uh, this is hail falling out of that. That is hail and the sunlight is hitting that, and uh, this core has just opened up with nickels and dimes and quarters. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 1, and let me show what this storm looks like. Look at the hook on this. Hank's right there, and uh, this is going to be big hail, nickels, dimes, quarters, running from downtown Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City University, uh, back to the fairgrounds, back to the Dell plant, back to Lillard Park. Uh, this is what we call a V-notched hail core, right? It's taking on that screaming eagle look, like... There are the wings, and then you have the beak back in here, right? Like the wings are back, and it, it's flying to the southwest. Technically, it's moving to the northeast, but uh, you can see the hook back in here, and there's the beak, right? There's the beak. There's the dangerous part of the storm right now. So let's go back to Hank, and the uh, rotation is just north of Wheatland, which is west-northwest of Will Rogers, about four miles. Let's go to Hank Brown and bring him back in. Not tornado warned right now. We have not issued a tornado warning on this. It is severe, large hail, damaging winds. Hank, give us an update on the area of circulation now, just to your west-northwest. Yeah, David, so you can see that the area of circulation has kind of changed. It doesn't look near as pronounced as it did. What's left of it is right over me, right on top of me. Um, the main concern, pardon me, let me go through this. Um, the main concern really is the hail and wind that is just off to our east. So we're on council. Uh, out by the Hobby Lobby uh, Mardell area at Southwest 44th and Council. And that rotation, although it, it almost looks like it's maybe elongated a little bit or, or that storm is tilted over perhaps because um, it's not as well pronounced. We don't have that pronounced wall cloud like we had, um, you know, several minutes ago. But the hail and the heavy rain is just to my east. And you can see here as I'm driving down Council that uh, – road flooding localized road flooding is definitely a problem so and it's in the middle of rush hour traffic so we're going to make our way up uh, here to about i-40 and get back east and get back into the heart of the city with it back to you all right great job way to go hank so hank's on that rotating storm in the southwest metro of obviously jim gardner's up top uh let's go to links two let me show you a storm track on this and this is going to overspread a good chunk of oklahoma city all right and uh this is it right here the hook is right here and again not tornadic we have uh, Hank shot up. We're looking right at it. That's Hank's shot, right? And uh, he's in southwest Oklahoma City. The hook is west of the airport now. Actually, it's northwest. There's your hook. So we've done a strong track on the whole storm lifting northeast, right? We're looking at uh, Spencer moving in now, but you really got to get back a little further west. I tell you what, Cass, let's kind of tighten this up a little bit um, and, and bring it back into, yeah, bring it back to about, about Tinker. And David, with the yeah. split, look at the hook now over Northwest Expressway, yep. um, over Highway 3 now, lifting to the north. Kind of that northern split is starting to develop a hook as well. Okay, over yes. Lake Hefner. Right now, hopefully with a, a left split, the tornado threat is normally, usually lower. When you have a, a storm that splits, the left split usually does not produce tornadoes, but that can be a little crazy. we got to watch that. But either way, this is a new hook developing on the Northwest split, which is still... Boy, that's impressive right now. It is. And the hail core with it is just pounding. Nichols Hills, the village. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, all the way back over to the base, up to the Kilpatrick almost now. And how about oh, the hail? I mean, I'm seeing golf balls Quart and quarters. Yes. Okay. So it's a, it's a Nichols Hills, Chesapeake, the village, this whole area. You, your folks are you're used to hail storms the last 15 years. How many have you had? My gosh. Uh, looking at some of the hail tracks coming through here, you can see the path of the hail. Okay, so once again, no tornado warnings in effect right now. This is a severe storm, several, moving into the metro. This is the first one of the day that is severe. We have two hooks on one storm, right? I'm favoring this down here just because this is normally, uh, if you're going to have a tornado, it's going to come out of this, this right part of the storm versus this left part because that is a left mover. But uh, either way, we need to keep an eye on both as this moves up towards the northeast. Heavy rain in here, lots of heavy rain, quarter, 
golf ball size hail overspreading Oklahoma City. There's going to be a lot of hail reports, lots of hail damage on roofs and cars happening right now moving across the city. All right, so um, let's go ahead and zoom on in on the hook, and then we're going to jump back south as the next storm comes in towards Moore Norman. Okay, so again, no tornado warnings in effect. This hook now is going to be right over Ski Island. There's your mesocyclone lifting northeast up towards uh, Edmond. Okay, Edmond, you're in the line of fire. Look at this hail core here. Let's zoom in on this. This is going to be crossing the Kilpatrick right here. Big hail. Big hail now east of the Broadway extension and over to um, I-35. Not quite to I-35, but uh, I-35 is right here. So, it's yeah, I'm sorry. I'm right. Broadway extension to I-35, and there's the Kilpatrick. So you got Kilpatrick, you got 122nd, now crossing 122nd, quarter, golf ball size hail. That's going to Edmond. You folks in Edmond, South Edmond, North Oklahoma City, prepare. OCU, Oklahoma Christian University, prepare for a damaging hail event with quarters up to golf ball size hail, moving north at about 40 miles per hour. Let's go down the line. More hail, not as big, over the heart of Oklahoma City, over near the capital, northeast of the capital, over near Lake Aluma, and then coming into the Dell plant, more hail here with the other hook. This hook does not look as impressive as it did. So these hooks are not as tight as what they were. They're still there. They're still spinning. Yes, but no tornado warning in effect, okay? A little bit of a hook here, but it's nothing like what it was. And the storm to the north, the, the left split of the storm is still... Uh, still has a hook on it. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 2. And uh, moving into Frontier City now on Lynx 2, we'll do a storm track. And uh, if we can get that going, there we go. Edmond, 552. Remember, that's downtown Edmond, 552. It's going to be a south, oh, south Edmond at about five, in about five minutes. It's moving in right now. That's that leading edge here. Edmond, get ready. It's coming in, moving from south to north. And uh, nothing tornadic right now. These are both rotating storms, okay, but no tornado warning. We have not issued a News 9 tornado warning. Jim Gardner is there. He's right here. And uh, he's going to keep moving with that thing to the north. All right, let's go back to Jim Gardner up top. And let me show you what this looks like right here where Hank is. Let me go back to Jim. Jim's looking off to the northeast. And Jim, you're on the back side of both of these rotating thunderstorms right now. No tornado warning. We have not issued one. Give us an update. Big hail in there just hammering the heart of Oklahoma City. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hang on just a second, David. You bet. Go ahead. Take your time. News 9, Roger that. We'll be looking for them. Yeah, sorry about that, Dave. We You're got fine. traffic. We're trying to cross Wiley Post. They got insane traffic out here at uh, Wiley Post and Will Rogers and trying to get everybody around these storms and getting traffic in and everything. Right now, we're crossing south of Wiley Post. Like you said, we're on the back side of this storm. And uh, so we're going to kind of hang on the east side of Wiley Post here as this moves. But yeah, it's definitely, it's a it's, uh, hill producer, David. A lot of rain, really still haven't seen too much cloud to ground lightning, but again, we're on the backside. We're just trying, we couldn't see from the south because we just got, it's got so much hail and rain in between us and where this storm is. So we finally worked in here on the east side. So we'll keep you updated. Jim Garfield live from Bob Mills. Uh, Scotty's time, back to you. I got the tower talking to me, back to you. Now I get it, man. Remember, Jim's in the air. He's flying near uh, Will Rogers, near Wiley Post. There's planes, helicopters. It's, it's a, you know, and he's got 10 people talking to him in his ear while talking to you at home. And he can do all those things at the same time. That's why he's the best, but he can do it. All right, there's that storm. Let's go back to um, Lynx 1. And to talk about the storm strength here, I like that. Let's go back to that, Lacey, on Lynx 1 control room. And there's, there's the lake now, okay? That's uh, Lake Overholzer. Um, okay, so the storm strength, these are all pretty intense, severe storms. The biggest, baddest storm now in the state is the cement storm down here where Jeremy is. And we will check in with Jeremy uh, coming up here in just a minute. And uh, Justin, we need to have Jeremy move out of the trees and get to a high point because I'll go to him next. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Like we've said, five supercells, five rotating thunderstorms. They're all producing damaging winds and damaging hail. But as of right now, no tornado warnings and no tornado on the ground, okay? So we're doing okay. Hopefully it'll stay like that. But as I have said and have been saying the last several hours, the tornado threat is going to increase into the evening as the low-level dynamics increase, okay? Everything moving from the southwest 
to the northeast. And while you're looking at, at that, 40. we, we did get a report of golf ball size hail near Blanchard okay. and quarter size hail in Mustang. So the hail core was coming down some, but easily, like you were saying, quarters to half dollars possible in the metro in Edmond now as that north split is coming on through. Yeah, and uh, the north split, as you know, uh, can often produce the biggest hail yes. sometimes. So some big hail out of that. Okay, um, let's go back to reflectivity here. And let me kind of get our bearings straight. Kind of give you the big view. We have these five storms. One, two, three, four, five. And actually we have six now. Another one developing near Colony. They're moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. Marty Logan's coming in from the north. Justin, let's make sure Marty gets on the good side of this thing and brings it into the Edmond area. And uh, I'm looking at Marty's shot here. He's coming in from the north. Okay, so let's go back down to Moore and Norman. Talk about what's coming your way. Norman, Moore, we have you covered. It's just, it's knocking on the door. Let's go ahead and zoom on in with Links 1. And uh, here we go. This storm is severe. It does have a hook on it. Right here, Tom and Val are here. There's your hook, right? That's an interesting feature right here. See the hook? It has kind of got a little bit of a break and then it kind of reforms. Okay, I don't like the looks of that right now. Um, yeah, it's right there. Yeah, it sure is. What does shear rate look like? Okay. It's now starting to show up. There it is. Okay, let's go to Val Caster. Let's bring Val in. He's looking off to the west-northwest. Val, um, still a little bit away from you. You're looking off to your west-northwest. What do you think? Looks like it might be trying to tighten up as it heads towards northwest Norman and more. Okay, no tornado warning, but it is rotating now. More on that coming up in just a second. Val, what do you see to your northwest uh, looking to the north out of Blanchard? Okay, so look at our shot right there. You can see the base has been somewhat high uh, for a time. The storm weakened probably 15 minutes ago, but now it appears to be strengthening again. That little feature you see right in the middle of our shot, David, uh, that's a lowering that's forming in the middle of that somewhat higher base. And just, just north of that, there's a big area of golf ball size hail, too. Uh, also, what you can't see that's in our shot to our north is a big, long feeder band that has just now developed from the northeast also flowing into it. So generally, I would say this is on, a, on an uptick at the moment, David. Back to you. Okay. All right. So Val and Amy on that storm along with uh, Tom. And uh, let me see if I can see Tom's shot. I've got it. Okay. Let's go back to Tom. And uh, Tom has a little different shot. Same storm, just a different perspective here. Tom Pastrano, you're hot. You're on. And uh, I could see, there you go, there's your cigar cloud coming out of the rain court, looks like, back to your northeast, to your southwest. Tom, rotation on that, at least slow at this point, right? Go ahead, give us an update. Yeah, that's right. It's really slow rotation. Um, the wind looks like it picked up going into the storm. Um, the, the base is still kind of the same as it was when it was in Chickasha. Um, I have noticed that the cigar cloud has gotten a little bit larger. So it does have a lot of moisture feeding into it from all directions. And the hail, we did see some golf ball-sized hail on the ground. And I did hear reports of some baseballs just to our north. So we're going to go check that out. Back to you. All right. Great job, Tom. Um, i tell you what. Give me just a second. Let's go back to Lynx 1 one more time. And uh, let me show you here. This is that max rotation here. See this right here? See this? This is a hail core. And this is right here. So we got to get uh, Tom and... Tom and Val up. Let's get them. Let's get them coming up uh, the highway here. Let's get them on this. I know that's what they're doing, but I see their shot. Okay, so here, here's your hail core. There's your downdraft, your updraft. You're right here. What at you that got? Core. David, we got a report from a firefighter uh, near the Mustang area of nearly baseball size hail, and we got a picture from a viewer near Blanchard of nearly baseball size hail as well. Okay. So, um, so some of these hail cores, as far as the radar estimates, are underdone from what we're seeing. Yeah. I mean, folks, I mean, you, you bring up, I mean, this day and age, you bring baseballs in Oklahoma City, it's a million-dollar hailstorm like that. We'll do that. Yeah. Some multi, of the, multi Some of the other stone dollar. pictures, even with the baseball, is smaller, so it's not all baseball right. size hail, sure. but there are some big stones in those updrafts. Yeah, yeah. Nickels and dimes, quarters, golf ball, and then we throw in baseballs just for fun. Not really, but that's what's going on. All right, so there's a the hook there that Tom's on, and uh, let's go ahead and, uh, Cassie, get a storm track on the storm and uh, kind of do it from, you know, west of Bridge Creek down to the southeast here, include the mezzo, include the whole storm as it races off. There's your uh, quarters and golf balls, but we're going to have tennis ball in there, maybe baseballs with that lifting off to the northeast. Okay. Um, Newcastle has golf balls. Newcastle has golf balls. 
Okay, let's go back to reflectivity. Big supercell, hook here, big hail, damaging winds, Bridge Creek going to Newcastle. You folks in Newcastle and the casino prepare for a damaging hail event. Golf uh, balls in Edmond. Golf balls in Edmond now. Let's go back to the north. Get ready, Newcastle. Get ready, North Norman and more. Uh, up to tennis balls going to more. All right, let's come back north now. And again, we're going all over the place, so sit tight. Uh, grab you a drink and let's, let's ride this out, folks. There's a lot going on. Uh, hey, uh, Greg, yeah. I'll tell you what, can he shoot the warnings. gap between Spencer and get back in position here? Can he do this? If not, have him just drop around. I'll tell you what, I like that better. Uh, you said he's, oh, yeah, he's right here. I'm sorry, have him drift to the west right here. I'm gonna look at that and I wanna, eventually I'm gonna branch him off, have him come south. Okay, and I'll go to Jim coming up here in just a second. All right, great job, everybody. Okay, so we have Edmund now. Let's go ahead and zoom into Edmund. Let's look at the hail core. Edmund's getting golf balls. And also down here, this is gonna be at least golf balls now. Going to Arcadia Lake, uh, just northeast of Frontier City, just went through there. And uh, there it is, now over Arcadia Lake, quarter golf ball. Gonna have golf balls over Edmund. Let's go ahead and zoom on in and take a closer look. Here's I-35, gonna have quarters and nickels at I-35. Gonna have golf balls. Uh, just went through downtown Edmond. Now moving into North Edmond, there's Mitch Park. Uh, Edmond High School, Edmond North, uh, getting golf balls right now. And this is gonna move up into North Edmond then eventually up into Logan County. So a big hailstorm now in Edmond happening right now with winds 60 to 70 miles per hour. There is a hook on this back to the Southwest, nothing tornadic, we are watching it and uh, it is spinning. Okay, so that's moving North at about 40, all right? So devastating hailstorm in the heart of downtown Edmond. Right, lots of nickels, lots of quarters, dimes, but we're gonna have golf balls in here. John Ross Elementary, uh, there's Danforth, okay, Covell, Coffee Creek, Sorghum Mill, Waterloo. Marty's coming in from the north. Hey, Justin, let's get Marty East on this. What are you doing with Marty? Je okay, all right, let's do that. Okay, so let's back out of this. Edmund, you're at the gun right now for wind and hail. There is a hook, but I'm not worried about it right now. Okay, Tom has hail right now, Justin said. Okay, let's go to Tom Pastrano. And uh, we'll jump back in. Tom is on this storm down here on the one in the s coming into Moore and Norman. Let's go to Tom and get an update. Tom, give us an update on the hail and the mesocyclone and the updraft. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, David, there is some larger than two inch hail falling. I am about three miles to the south of Newcastle, and there's, there's quite a bit of it, and it's pretty hard hail, so it's going to be a damaging hail storm. Um, I'm driving a little bit closer to, the, to Newcastle. As I get closer, the hail gets larger. Back to you. Hail, and uh, this time of year, as you're still in April going into May, the atmosphere is very cold, and our hail is usually very, very hard. So as you get into June and July, if you're still getting some hail, usually it's not as hard. It's a little bit softer because the atmosphere is a little bit warmer, right? Information you probably don't need, but I'm just telling you, the hail today and the hail this time of year, it is hard, and it does more damage, okay? When it hits, it doesn't always break apart. It puts a dent in the roof or everything else. Justin, you have something? Okay, is your mic on? Okay, do we have uh, Justin's mic? Talk again to me. Okay, we'll get Justin figured out. He's alive, I promise. Okay, here's your storm track. Oh, look at the hook on this. Goodness gracious. And the one to the north is also over Midwest City. The hook in the last scan just tightened up as well. Okay, all right. Now, folks, this has me concerned right here. That is really, really tightened up. Okay, all right. Let's go back to this now. Okay, real quick, real quick. Uh, Norman um, at about, uh, let's see, Norman at about 6 o'clock. Now, I want to point out, uh, Norman's going to be on the, on the east side. The, the, the tornado threat's going to be going to Moore. Okay, there's your hook. This is going to North Norman and Moore. So everybody in Moore, um, it's getting close. I'm just gonna tell you that. The hook is becoming very pronounced. No tornado warning, no tornado warning from us, but that hook is very pronounced now, and uh, that is exactly what we don't wanna see. Uh, Norman at six o'clock, Moore, 602. That's gonna be this, the front lip. We've given you some time here. We, we're doing a storm track from the eastern, northeastern side of the hail core, not to where the tornado would be. So you've got a little bit of time. Um, Dell City, 614. Midwest City, 617. Spencer, 630. Luther, 650. 
Chandler, 706, and we'll say uh, Cushing at about 738. Okay, so hook here, hook here, and uh, Justin, Justin, real quick, uh, Hank's position, I know where he is. Uh, are we going to get him east on this hook? Okay, is that what we're thinking? Okay, you don't have any audio. Okay, we got to get that figured out. Hey, we need to get an engineer in here to get that audio figured out for Justin, please. Um, okay, so uh, Justin, real quick, let's get Hank on that Midwest City storm. Yeah, he's heading east towards Midwest City. Okay, thank you. There you go. You sound great. Best you've sounded all day. <laughs> I mean, that's a compliment. All right, so hook here, hook here. Let's go. Um, let's go ahead and zoom on in. Let's go back to Lynx One. Look at the hook on this. And uh, let's go back to Lynx One control room. And uh, do we have Lynx One? That's Lynx One. Lacey, what are you on? Thank you. That's Lynx One. Okay. So there's the hook now just to the east of Bridge uh, yep. Creek riding Highway 9. Yep. Here's Highway 9. This is Tom. And uh, here's Val. I don't see Val's GPS. He's right under Tom. They're in the same location. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They're together. That makes total sense. Okay. They're riding together, at least for a minute. Okay. Let's go to Val Caster. Val's looking off to the west. Val, circulation is one, two, three miles due west of you, Val Caster. Still a little bit elevated, which is a good thing. What do you think? It has a mean-looking hook on it right now, though. It has a uh, stinger coming back on the southwest side. Go ahead, Val. Absolutely. This thing is getting organized quickly as we speak. Um, punch it up on, on the... on the. I've got some hail in my hand here I'm going to show you. Punch it up on the... Uh, there you go, right there. Okay, so, David, we just stopped. This is two-inch hail we just picked up. It's still falling very sporadically, but... Uh, so we got the hail here. This is two-inch hail, a little bit bigger than golf balls. And also, just to our west, maybe three miles, David, this, this thing is getting wrapped up again. We noticed it on radar first, and then started forming a lowering back there. So it almost also looks like to me that it might be lifting a little bit more northeast rather than more east-northeast. So we're going to stay right with this thing as it moves into the metro. Back to you, David. Okay, folks, this is a dangerous storm, okay? We have at least larger than golf ball size hail uh, going to heyday, between heyday, going to more damaging hail, going to more, okay? With, we'll put a hashtag, possible tornado. It's not there yet, but it is ramping up. All right, let's go back Tom, to Lynx 1. Tom is seeing a little bit of rotation in the base okay. there. All right, and let's go back to Tom here, and let's get an update from Tom. He's a little farther north than Val, looking off to the southwest. Let's take Tom Pastrano's shot. And uh, Tom, boy, look at the base there. I see uh, right, right above the trees, right to the right of that car. I see what looks like it's trying to centralize there. Is it not, Tom? Go ahead. Yeah, it is. You know, this is the worst it's looked all evening. It's definitely rotating. It's getting lower. Um, I don't see anything imminent right now, but, you know, we're really going to have to watch this. It, it's it's really ominous looking. It, it's rotating pretty good right now. Back to you. Okay. All right. It sure is. Now, this is a bowl. I'll show you what it looks like. So take this right here. There's the right side of the mesocyclone. Here's the left side of the mesocyclone. And this is beginning to spin a little bit faster and a little bit faster. Tornado circulations start up. They work their way down. And the mesocyclone is stronger, higher up and it's working its way slowly down. Is it, gonna, is it gonna produce? Only God knows, okay? But that's getting tighter to me, and it's becoming a little more bulbous looking, and that is spinning. I can see it, you can see it at home. This little piece right here, see that? It's going left to right, and this is going right to left. Not very fast, but fast enough. Trust me, it's faster when you're in the field watching it. This And this is lowering too. A little bit lower. Okay, let's go back to radar. Look at the hook now, folks. And I'm just showing you, David, the, the supercell down the line to the west of Chickasha, also developing a hook, also rotating, and Jeremy's watching that. Okay, and we will, we will go back to that storm. Look at the mean hook on this, and we'll talk about the Edmund storm. Big hook, big hail, and uh, it's going to more. Okay, you folks in more. Cassie, give us a storm track on two. Um, this is where the tornado, if it's going to be, it's going to be right here. No tornado warning yet. I'm looking at velocity data. Okay, and here's the deal. It's ramped up, it's, it's, it's ramped back up on levels. On a scale of one to 10, as far as velocity data, it's been a three, it's been a four. Okay, I know it looks like, oh my gosh, that has to be on the ground. Lots of storms rotate, but don't produce tornadoes, right? But this is an environment 
that can produce tornadoes, okay? But that's the hook, and it's moving northeast. It's going to go right into Northmore over Hay Day, Moore, Moore Medical Center, Moore back to the River, uh, New uh, Newcastle Casino. There's your hook. Your hail now is north and east of the casino and then down to the south. There's your hook. Okay, let's go to Lynx 2 control room. Let me show you the storm track. It's on Lynx 3. On Lynx 3. Let's go to Lynx 3 control room. Let me show you the track on that that Cassie put together. And uh, there it is. More medical center moving in now. That's on the, the northeast side, okay? That's way up in here. That, that's the farthest down. But the main part of this is still back to the southwest. Okay, Cassie, and the, uh, well, I'm going to do this, and I want you to do another one. Um, o triple C 609, Crossroads Mall 611, Dell City 616, um, we'll say Midwest City 620, and Spencer at 629. Okay, now let's do a storm track just on this right here and take this off to the northeast. It's going to go right over more. There's your mesocyclone going right over more. Yep, perfect. Okay, take it northeast, a little bit to the east. Yep, perfect. Right over Tinker. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, adjust your time. Okay, so uh, our time's good? Speed good? Not yet. All right, so uh, this is a dangerous storm, large hail, damaging winds. Uh, more at 620. That's with the mesocyclone, not the hail. The hail gets there earlier. Uh, more 620, Dell City 630, Tinker Air Force Base, same time, 630. The Zoo, 637, Choctaw, 645, and we'll say Jacktown at about 7 o'clock. Still a ways down the road, but you folks in Choctaw, Hera, Tinker Air Force Base, large rotating supercell, big hook, could produce a tornado. Right now, we're not quite there. It is producing large hail, damaging hail there. Okay, let's go back to uh, Jim Gardner. Is Jim getting back in position? He's in between Mustang and Kansas City right now. Okay, uh, let's go back to Lynx 1. Let me look at radar here real quick. Let's go back to Lynx 1 control room. Let's switch radars here. Let's back out of this just a second, get our bearings straight. Let me see where Jim is. Make sure we're good. Back out. Okay, just to make sure. Jim's here to the north. Okay, so, um, okay, so where's Jim right now? Okay, great. Here's what I want Jim to do. I want him to drop. I want him to just drop a little farther south, get on the southeast side of this. Right here. Yep, head to Bl uh, don't even go to Blanchard. Just come around that mesocyclone right there. He'll be there uh, within five minutes. So, if you're just joining us, no tornado warnings in effect. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At least eight rotating supercells producing large and damaging hail, larger than golf ball. We've had up to baseball size hail baseball size hail, very hard hail, doing damage. We've had damage in Oklahoma City, in central Oklahoma City. We've had damage in Edmond due to large hail, at least golf balls. And each one of these storms is producing at least golf ball size hail, if not larger. Okay, moving to the northeast. All right, so let's come back down the line here. Let's go to this storm here in eastern Canadian County. Same song and dance, all right? just a different prom, okay? Here's what I'm talking about. Supercell, right over Yukon, big hail now, devastating hailstorm into Yukon. It's happening right now. Yukon, you're going to get trashed. And I'm sorry, but that's going to be uh, big hail. Quarter, golf ball size, could have some tennis balls in there. It's crossing already I-40, crossing Highway 66. It's going to Surrey Hills. It's going to Bethany. Look at the hail core now. And on Lakes 4, David, you can actually see uh, Andrew put together one of the pictures of just one of those massive hailstones. Okay, control room, Lakes 4. There it is. Okay, that, that's Edmond. Yes. Goodness, where we've was that from that in Edmond? From Mustang, Newcastle, Blanchard. That's yeah. what we've seen within every one of these supercells today. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and call it. This is now a multi, multi million dollar hailstorm. For sure. For sure. And it only took how many minutes? And here's the deal. There are more storms to go. Look at that. Look at Blanchard. That's tennis ball to nearly baseball. So that's the kind of hail that will go through your windshield, will go through the window in your house. And if you have any wind with that, you can be hurt from hail that big, okay? That hail, that's the kind of hail that will hurt you. And rare cases, people have lost their lives from a hailstone that big. So just remember, lightning, thunder, hail that big, hail of any size, get inside. 
don't get hit in the head with that, okay? All right, let's go back to reflectivity here. Go back to links one. Big storms, and a lot of them, they're all severe. Okay, so severe storm now, hail core over Yukon, headed to uh, north of Bethany. Go ahead and look, zoom into this, Lacey. Edmund, your storm's moving out. We'll talk about that coming up. Zoom into the Mustang? Yes, I'm or sorry. the Yukon? Okay. Uh, Yukon. Okay, so it's going to Northridge Elementary School, going to Ski Island. This is big hail in here. This is going to have quarter, golf ball, tennis ball size hail. Well, this whole area is not tennis ball, so let's not get nutty. But there's a lot of quarters and golf balls in here with, with tennis ball. And this is showing baseball size hail now. Baseball size hail on the northeast and east side of Yukon. Headed northeast, baseball size hail. Coming into the west side of Oklahoma City here shortly. Baseball size hail. Yeah, right on Route 66 and Sarah Road. Yep, yep, Sarah Road. Hey, Mark, would you hand me my glasses when you get a second? Um, yeah, it's, uh, okay, here's Wilshire, right? That's going to be, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I'll buy you dinner later. Thank you. Well, anything else you need? <laughs> I got you, brother. All right, uh, there's Wilshire, right? And this is going to be 63rd, way out west. There's Morgan Road. This is a very, very large and damaging hail core in here, lifting to the north. Okay, let's go a little farther north here, Lace. Let's talk about what it's, what's coming its way to the north. Uh, Harvest Hills Elementary, keep going. Francis Tuttle, Francis Tuttle is right here. It's going to there. It's going to Surrey Hills. Uh, there's Memorial. There's the Kilpatrick Turnpike that makes the loop out into Canadian County. Uh, Mercy Hospital, prepare for a damaging hail event for you. Deer Creek, back to Four Corners, damaging hailstorm. We're watching it. Okay, let's come back south now. Let's talk about this. Let's, oh, sorry. Let's go back to Edmond. The Edmond storm has now, it's, it's now, yeah, it's well into Logan County now. These things are moving at about 40. So the hook is still here, but again, it's a left mover, probably not going to produce a tornado out of this left side. Still has a hook, left, mo new, uh, left movers. They're called left movers because they split, storm splits. You got one that goes left, one that goes right. Um, and this is a left mover. They'll have a mesocyclone. It's going to be an anticyclonic. They usually don't produce tornadoes, but they produce big hail. Siri, stop. That's going to Meridian. All right, and that's gonna, that hail core is going to Meridian, going to Merrick, and going to Goodnight, and going to Binko. Okay? We're watching that. Nothing tornadic with that. Okay. So, um, Next Gibbs. storm is severe over Hinton, going to the Cherokee Trading Post and Calumet. Yep. Every one of these are going up and trying yeah. to rotate and produce hail. Yeah, every, every, every storm is. Okay. If I, I'll just zoom out so you can see how many. I'm going to turn the warnings off because it's just Yeah, a mess. go ahead. But there you go. Okay. And then we're going to jump back to the, let's go to, yeah, so all these storms are all severe, and they're all coming through central Oklahoma. They're all coming through central Oklahoma. All of these are going to move across the city. So there's a pretty good chance, when you're looking at that, that if you don't have hail yet at your house, there's a decent chance you're going to get some. I'm just saying, because we have a lot of storms. Hail swaths, hail tracks, um, right? And we're starting to see a little bit of that purple showing up where the hail's been really intense. But there are your hail tracks moving across central Oklahoma. Okay, um, let's go back to Val. Val's on the hook down here. This is a scary scene. And like I said, this is coming right into Moore. There's the Orr family farm. Big hail coming into the Orr family farm. Mr. Orr, you need to move it in. You need to cover it up, buddy. And then from there, it's going to Moore. Okay, there's Hayday, right on I-35. Big hail to the west of Hayday, back where Tom is. And Val's down here on the hook. Um, let's go to Tom Pastrano. Tom's looking off to the south there. Tom, what direction are you looking in your shot? Let's bring Tom Pastrano in. There's the bowl. There's the hook. No tornado on the ground. It is rotating. Tom, big hail for sure, just to your north and east. What do you think? Looks like the lowering is a little bit lower. Go ahead. This is looking towards the southeast of Newcastle. Um, Newcastle got pummeled by some large hail, but this wall cloud is its slowly rotating. It's actually slowly getting better organized. They are sounding the sirens here in Newcastle as a safety precaution. I don't see anything imminent at the moment, but that could change at any minute. Back to you. Okay. All right. So that's the wall cloud under the storm that is headed towards Hayday and more. That's the lowering. A little bit of the wall cloud is beginning to show up. If you watch this carefully here, you can see this lifting and turning from left to right. Okay? Uh, he is in Newcastle, and this is going to be just to his south, and that's the mesocyclone right there. He's right where he should be. If it's going to do anything, it's going to be right here. And it is spinning. You can see that the movement here going on. 
but it's not spinning like, oh boy, here comes the News 9 tornado warning. It's, it's not at that mode yet, which is good. Let it do this all day. The hail's bad enough. Um, we don't need a tornado, and we certainly don't need a tornado and more. All right, let's go back to links one and take a look at that and look at the hook on this. Look at this is a Screaming Eagle supercell. The wings are here. The updraft's back here. You have the jet stream flowing over the updraft, and it separates, and you get downstream. You get the separation of the reflectivity. Where's uh, Jim's right? Jim between the two. Okay. Okay, I want, okay, that's great. I'll go to him coming up in just a second. Is he, um, what's his exact location? Okay, all right, so um, I'll tell you what, let's have him come a little farther northeast, just a little bit, okay? Have him come a little bit farther northeast and just, just stay up with that, that storm to his northeast. Uh, let's go to Jim Gardner up top, and uh, this is what this cell looks like from Jim. Val's on the ground, Tom's on the ground, and uh, there it is, Jim. It looks like it's getting a little bit lower, but right now it's not that tornado uh, thread or that tornado level yet. It's still up, it's still spinning, it's still producing big, big hail, Jim Gardner. But uh, look at the hook on that, and that is the hook. That's what the hook looks like from the helicopter, from Jim. Go ahead. Well, that's right, Dave. We just crossed Highway 62 just south of Newcastle here, and it is very broad right now, David, and it's, uh, it, you know, it's starting to lower a little bit. It's gotten a lot lower since we've flown around on the south side of this, but it's, you can see the uh, serrations in it. You can see the stack there, and this is getting lower, David. It is definitely getting lower. There's a lot of hail in front of this and a lot of rain. Well, we're starting to pick up a lot of cloud-to-ground lightning with this now, David. But, uh, yeah, this is one to watch. Jim Garfoyne live from Bob Mills. Scotty's 9, back to you. Okay. All right. So just talking to Justin here and going through the weather team. Remember, we're talking about this earlier when we went on the air today, how the tornado parameters or conditions favorable for tornadoes get higher as we get into it's 6.15, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Low-level jet kicks in, low-level dynamics kick in, and they're really going to start to to feed this, okay? So this is what I'm telling you. This is gonna get lower and lower and lower. It's gonna happen. Now, is it gonna produce a tornado? Again, I don't know. I'm telling you that conditions are favorable. Certainly could. But uh, you see those little tags hanging down here. And uh, remember, from here up, from here it goes to about 50, 60,000 feet up. That's the base of the storm. It goes 60,000 feet up. That mesocyclone goes way, 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 way deep into that. Okay, so let's go from this. All right, right, this is a big circle, mesocyclone. Let's take a look at it here on Lynx. Lace, you're on one. one. Let's go back to Lynx one, and there's the hook. That circular area, that's what Jim's looking at, that's what Val's looking at, right? That's what Jeremy's looking at, or excuse me, uh, Tom's looking at, and that's coming in Oklahoma City. Cassie, if we can, let's get a, uh, ooh. Do you see that on Shearway? Yep. Let's go back to Shearway. We're pretty close to a tornado warning here. Okay, we're pretty close to a tornado warning. Val's right there. And let's go ahead and lapse that. Okay. Just see what it looks like. This is shear rate. It's ramping up. Uh, and ta take a look at live. Take a look at live when you can. Lay, see what it looks like on shear rate. Okay. Let's go back to Valcaster. Val, uh, shear rate is ramping up on shear rate, Valcaster, on your storm, on your mesocyclone. And it looks like the wall cloud's getting better organized. What do you think? Go ahead, buddy. Yeah, so that's it. David, what we've noticed just in the past 30 seconds is a, a strong horizontal rotation going on in, in the base of the cloud. And I, I know that sounds weird, horizontal rotation, but sometimes we see that right before it gets tilted into the vertical. So now, David, if you can see our shot, this thing is really, really strengthening. This is as strong as we have seen it. Uh, the whole time, the whole time. It, it is really starting to crank. That horizontal rotation is starting to get tilted into the vertical right now. And um, strong rising motion you can see right there. I think it's a matter of just minutes we're going to see a funnel out of this thing. If it keeps doing this, we're definitely going to see a funnel. And, uh, you know, the next step after that is probably a tornado. But the rotation is really, really picked up. David, we're two miles south of Newcastle looking northeast. And it's going to be, the, the location of that's going to be about a mile and a quarter southeast of Newcastle. It's pretty close to the river, but still west of the river. Okay. So uh, that's what, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just looking at your shot. And in real time, this whole thing has completely changed shape. Look at the motion here from left to right. Control room, get Jim Gardner shot up. Folks, we're a step away. We're a heartbeat away from a tornado warning. It's coming. We're almost there. Jim Gardner, oh boy, look at that shot from Jim. 
that's the storm now coming into west, northwest Norman and more. Look at the rotation, getting stronger, no doubt about it. And I'm, I'm really concerned about this right now. All velocity data, shear rate, getting stronger with this. Look at the tag here hanging down. This whole thing is moving from left to right. Jim Gardner, take it, you are hot, go ahead. Well, that's right, David, you're exactly right. Val's got her exactly right. And now you're seeing this form, there's a lot of motion in there and we're right up next to it, David. I mean, we're just tracking this thing. I mean, we're glued to it right now, but out in front of this, David, is a lot of hail, a lot of rain, cloud of ground lightning, but this spin, you can see it, it's starting to form, David. It's actually trying to form two right there. And we've seen this before. You get two uh, things rotating there and all of a sudden they became, become one. And uh, I mean, this is happening right now, David. It is very low to the ground. It's not that high off the ground. And uh, again, this is a massive wall cloud. As we look, pull back and look at the, the serrations around and, and the stack is just one huge wall cloud right now, David. And then we're gonna stay with it, keep watching, keep you updated. Jim Gore Point Live from Bob Mills, Scotty's Nine, back to you. All right, Jim, here we go. News Nine, tornado warning for this storm now. And uh, we have tags hanging down, tornado warning for you folks in North and West, Norman and more. Let's do it now. And it's all because of this. You're seeing it live right here on News Nine. The tornado is not on the ground yet, but it's rotating and everything is lifting and turning. We're starting to see some tags underneath here. Tornado warning for this. And for that, right now we have uh, two areas of concern. This one, that's it. Hey, Jim Gardner, that's it right here. Let's go to Valcaster. Okay, stay with Jim. Jim, it's gonna be the cone on the right. The cone on the right is the one that's tightening up. I'm telling you right now, the one on the left is accessory cloud. It's the one on the right. Go ahead, Jim. That is spinning, spinning. That's Look on the ground. Line, David, that's the one we, yep. we're Yep, Look on the ground. That. For a minute there, I really thought it was gonna go ahead and do it and still might do it here, but it's the one on the right. The one on the left is, like you said, is just kind of following along here, but that uh, one on the right is what we're really watching. Val's got a really good position on it, David, so do we. And uh, I mean, just, I don't know what it, why it didn't go just minutes ago, but uh, we're in a position and, uh, you know, it's time, don't even mess with this one. It's time to go to your safe spot, uh, like I said, and, and, and get out of the way of this thing, because it is massive, David. Okay, all right, great job. So tornado warning, this is gonna be for West Moore, excuse me, Moore, all of Moore and West Norman because of this right here. That's it. We're looking on the ground for anything on the ground. This is crossing the river at Franklin Road. Yep, let's go, right? Let's do it. Let's go back to uh, Lynx 1. Lacey, let's go back to your radar. Let's go back to Lynx 1. They're gonna go back with Val. So here's Tom, here's Val, here's your hook, right? This is all the quarter golf ball, tennis ball size hail. It's a double whammy. You get trashed by hail and you might end up with a tornado. It doesn't get any worse than that, right? So that's what's going on. This is gonna be Northeast 16th. And uh, what do we have right here? Is that 62? You're looking at Main Street coming out of Newcastle, yeah. yes. Yeah, Highway 62. Yeah, Highway 62, yes. Yeah, Highway 62, there's Newcastle Casino. Uh, this is the Newcastle Fire Department. There's the hook right here. Tom is right there. Val's on the ground. And I'm gonna Tor lapse it so you can see it moving east, northeast. Yeah, it, it's almost lifting north. Yeah, it did it again. We got to nope. be careful here. It's wobbling like an eye it of a hurricane. Is. Yes. It's low pressure, lots of physics going on. The, here's the deal. It, remember, it's trying to live, it's trying to eat, it's trying to survive. What it wants is warm, moist air, okay? So it's trying to make its way a little farther east to tap into that warm, moist air and that low level jet about three, three to 5,000 feet up. But other dynamics in the atmosphere are thinking, hang on. We're gonna try to pull you to the north. So you get this big area of spin and that's spinning and trying to do this. And wow, look at that shot from Jim Gardner, guys. And here's our live David now coming in. It's crossing the river as we speak. Look at the, mes folks, you don't see mesocyclones that, like that very often. Control room, let's put the three box up. Look at the Whoa. right side of the mesocyclone. Look at the left side of the mesocyclone. Grandma is serving pancakes, wow. That is incredible. Check that out. That is a mesocyclone that is hanging out. It's an LP. There's no precipitation around the mesocyclone. That is spectacular looking, I'm telling you, for Oklahoma City. That's what you see in western Oklahoma and the panhandles, not in Oklahoma City. Very often do they look like that. All right, so this whole area is spinning, tornado warning with that. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, let's go back. We're gonna get a storm track on this. There's your hook. Once again, the hook is gonna go on between Hay Day and Downtown Moore. Tornado warning now. Between Hay Day 
and Moore and downtown Moore, lowest level, center part of the house. Right now, you folks in Moore are getting absolutely hammered with nickels, dimes, quarters, golf ball, tennis ball size hail, all in here. Or Family Farm, Southwest Oklahoma City, up to North Moore. Remember, this is coming into southern sides of Oklahoma City, too. And the next one down the Big line, hook. it's not Tornado Warren, David, but that one is rotating quickly. It's actually intensified just north of Chickasha, coming up I-44. So there's another one to the southwest yeah. of this one that we're still watching closely. Okay. All right. So both of these are dangerous. They're all dangerous storms because of the hail. These two storms are dangerous because potentially going to try to produce a tornado. All right. So big hail. Or family farm down to Southmore High School. Right here, folks, I'm looking at, I'm looking at baseball size hail now. Southwest 149th. This is where the tornado is. Okay? And that shot there, that mesocyclone is that right there. This donut feature, that is that from Jim Gardner. And we have Balcaster on the ground along with Tom. Okay. Um, okay. What, what does Shearate look like? Here's our okay. shear rate. I mean, it's it's still just as intense as it was. It hasn't changed That's fine. too much. Okay, is this is that our live? Yes. Go back to our live. One more time. Okay, this is a product you'll only see on News 9. Everybody else is delayed. Not this radar. It's a million-watt dual-pole radar, the most powerful live radar in Oklahoma, and our data is not delayed, and it matters. It matters to you at home when storms are moving 30, 40, 50, 60 miles per hour. This is not delayed, okay? This is not delayed. This is live radar. That shear rate tells you exactly where the rotation is, and it's being derived off of our live radar scan. There's shear rate. There's the hook. There's where the tornado is. If it sets down right now, there is no tornado on the ground, but the tornado warning is there, and it continues for west, northwest Norman and West and Southwest Moore, if I live in Moore, lowest level, how many times do we have to say this? For Moore, lowest level, center part of the house. Many of you have storm shelters. Go there if you live in Moore. And if you don't have a storm shelter, fine. Listen up. Turn the TV up. If you're in your house, turn it up so you can hear me. Make it way loud that everybody can hear. Go to the center part of the house, lowest level. If you live in Moore, if you live in West and Northwest Norman, Small closet, small bathroom, okay? Grab grandma, grandpa, whoever. Grab everybody, get in that small closet, get in there, and hang, hang in there. Let this thing ride itself out. Look at that shot, folks. That is absolutely amazing. Okay, so this is coming into more right now. Let's go ahead and zoom on in. Okay. Here's the hook. Stop Big the hail, just trashing wow. more. Or Family Farm is just getting absolutely hammered. Or Family Farm right now, and from there north is getting hammered. Okay, let's go back to Valcaster, and then we'll do a storm track. Let's go back to Val on the ground. Val, is that? Okay, all right, now, I know you're thinking it's on the ground. I think that's not a tornado. That's not a tornado. I know it looks like one. Val, um, it looks like, uh, is, that, is, that try, is that trying to go vertical and pull that into it? Uh, uh, hor uh, horizontal into the vertical. What do you have going on right here with that? Yeah, it, it's slowly rotating, um, and it's it's kind of halfway horizontal and halfway vertical right there. That's a lot more ominous than it looks. Um, but when I see those kind of things, and we've seen those many, many times before, it usually leads to a tornado. Um, so we're going to watch it very, very close. Uh, it is uh, east of us. It's right, David, that thing is right over the river. And um, it looks like it's just kind of slowly moving northeast, right towards the southwest part of uh, Oklahoma City, more Norman area there. So, yeah, it's, it's not rotating strongly at the moment, but we know how fast it can ramp up just like it did a while ago, David. Yeah, it doesn't take any time at all. Okay, so the circulation, um, Lacey, okay, so that, that bow's in Newcastle. This thing is in West Norman. It's west of Norman. And let's go back to velocity data here and shear rate. Let's take a look exactly where this is. And uh, Val's back in here, and he's looking off to his east. So it's right here. Here's Norman Regional Health Plex. Uh, here's Ruby Grant Park. Here's Heyday. And uh, it's right here. It's, it's back in here. It's over the river. It's over the river and big hail. Uh, just went on top and north of Briarwood. 
and that's going to ride up I-35, going to go right over the Moore Medical Center. All right, so tornado warning continues for you folks in Moore, lowest level, center part of the house. If it's going to produce a tornado, you're going to see it live on News 9. It's going to be in that top box. And there's no tornado on the ground right now. And Hank has a shot on 35 moving south. Okay. All right, let's F go. To, okay. Okay, Hank so Hank. The Moore Medical Center. Yep, Hank is at the Moore Medical Center. Let's go back to Hank. And, oh, what a nightmare. And David, oh, if you look at that older hook kind of occluded, and the new one is now what's approaching I-35, almost moving due east. Oh, wow. That shot is awful. Over, yeah, that shot is about as bad as it gets. Uh, yeah, I see the new mezzo now. It looks like northwest of Ruby Grant Park. Yes. Talking about the new mezzo. Yes. Yeah, I see that now. Okay, let's go to Hank. Hank, I-35, not good. Bad place to be right now is in Moore. Go ahead. Yeah, David, I-35 and 19th Street, people have parked underneath. They've blocked almost the entire I-35 southbound off. I'm in some golf ball size hell right now. Patty, pan the camera to the right. So right in front of us is a new mesocyclone. It looks like it's forming on the east. Pan to the right. This is back to the west. This is back towards uh, 19th and western. And that looks like the old circulation to me that's occluding. I come back here. This is at I-35, uh, somewhere near Hayday, Indian Hill Road, and you can see the movement in that cloud base right there. But, folks, if you're coming down I-35 southbound, if you're in the car listening to us, just get off. If you're in the northern part of Moore, get off and wait for a few minutes. This is going to pass I-35 here in the next four or five minutes because if not, you're getting a very dangerous situation where uh, people are parking up under the overpass. But, David, as you can see, back to the circulation, I am at 19th Street looking due south, and this is going to be near Indian Hills Road, give or take somewhere around there. About a mile to my south is where the new circulation is formed, and it's crossing I-35 or coming on to I-35 right now, David. Back to you. Hey, folks, and uh, great summary there, Hank. This is I-35 southbound at Indian Hills Road. Um, people are trying to block the highway, which is illegal. You cannot do that. You should not do that. You need to be thinking about other people that are trying to get home and get places, and you're blocking the road. It's illegal, and it drives me crazy. Don't do it. This all started April 26th of 1991, and uh, people trying to get up under underpasses, and it's a horrible idea. First of all, it's selfish. You're only thinking about yourself. Don't do it. Keep moving. Keep moving, okay? All right, um, so this is the new mesocyclone. Let's go back to Lynx 1. And uh, some damaging winds. So here we go. Here's the hook. Now, this is the old hook. Here's the new hook. The new hook now is coming in and uh, just to the south of, uh, well, pretty close to Hay Day. It is. Indian Hills and I 35. Yeah. Yeah. So Indian Hills, and yeah, it's, it's over Hay Day. And Tom has wrapping rain <laughs> curtains from his position. Okay. I'll go to Tom coming up. So, tornado warning now. Um, so, here's the deal big hail in Moore. The tornado threat is going to be in Southmore. Okay, the tornado threat's down here by Heyday right now. And you can see it in Jim Gardner's shot. Look at that bowl there. Look at that bowl. No tornado on the ground right now. We can clearly see that. We've got trackers on the ground. We have Jim in the air. The uh, circulation's right here. It's coming up to I-35. As a matter of fact, it's going to be crossing I-35 uh, here shortly. And then from there, it's going to go right over Broadmoor Elementary School. Uh, here it is, Trails Elementary School. It'll cross State Highway 77. It'll cross sooner as it gets farther east. But man, gargantuan hail up in here. Okay, so let's take a look at this shot from Jim Gardner. And uh, let's go to Jim. Let's bring Jim's shot in here. And uh, Jim, it does not look like it's on the ground. Circulation is still strong, especially in the lower levels and to the mid levels. But the circulation has not strengthened enough to go to the ground yet. But uh, still a concern, big hail, trashing, hammering more right now coming into south oklahoma city go ahead jim yeah exactly right david this has gotten kind of raggy raggy on the bottom it's not really tightened up but as we've seen with these things they kind of circulate they come in and all of a sudden they can really uh smooth up and you know form that tornado this is very low to the ground you're seeing right in the center of the screen that is very low to the ground david but what's really interesting david is we pan to the right and there's a tremendous amount of cloud of ground lightning out here you can see the hail you see the greenish there that's the hail that's the hail coming down. But look at this cigar cloud, David. Keep panning to your right, Rich. This cigar cloud has just connected up. It kept working. It finally connected, and it goes all the way down here off to the southeast. That is a huge cigar cloud being drawn into this storm here. 
and uh, right over David we're watching but just uh, the hail is tremendous the cloud of ground lightning has really picked up and this we're just going to stay with it David and watch it Jim Garford live for Bob Mills got his nine back to you okay Jim here's the deal it's tightening up just Jim Garner since we've been talking to you it's getting tighter on radar so you're right there you're right where we should be don't leave it stay with it and here we go let's go back to links one look at shear rate and uh, this is why we have the tornado warning in effect. Look at that, it's maxed out now. Okay, so it's a little bit south of heyday. It's a little bit south. There's heyday, but there's your, it's over, we, we said this earlier, over Ruby Grant Park. It's now crossing I-35, Hanks there, Val's off to the northwest, looking at it, and I see it in Val's shot. And let's go ahead and lapse this. Let's okay. just see what it's doing on shear rate. See it kind of evolve. It's it's moving pretty much northeast. So it's going to cross 77 and 34, that intersection. Highway uh, 77 and 34, I think it crosses there. And then the next line of fire is going to be Lake Stanley Draper. Lake Stanley Draper, possible tornado for you. Okay, so if you live in, well, or just east of Ruby, Grant Park, Tornado safe spot, lowest level, obviously storm shelter first, lowest level, center part of the house, small closet, small bathroom, without any windows. And you got to go now. Not on the ground, but it could happen at any time. Look at the shot, folks. Look at the supercell. Look at that. I mean, that thing. This is Franklin Road and Eastern yeah. approaching 12th Northwest in Norman. Here it is. Okay, so here's Heyday. Here's the park. The circulation is at Franklin Road and crossing 12th Avenue. 12th Avenue and Franklin Road. From there, it's gonna go to 12th Street and Indian Hills Road. It's gonna make its way over here, okay? There's your hook, there's your mesocyclone, and that's what it looks like right there. And it is spinning. And, I, I, and this is what I said earlier, the tornado potential or ingredients become more favorable as we get into the next couple of hours. You're thinking, oh my gosh. So if these storms that are still alive and still breathing, the tornado threat, I think, we think, will get a little bit higher as we get into the 7, 8, 9 o'clock time frame. All right, so let me give you the big view I here. I turned the severe thunderstorm warnings off just because every one of these are, are warned. I'll yeah, time, every but, storm is I mean, severe. So I'm just See? turning that off. Okay. Um, let's talk about the Perkins storm real quick. We're, we're, we're trying to get everybody in. Uh, not tornadic, but it is severe now. Just roll through Perkins. It's going to Ingalls. Still water. You're going to get a little bit of hail in Stillwater, maybe some quarters, maybe some golf balls, moving northeast towards uh, Merrimack and uh, possibly as far northwest as, as Glencoe. Not a tornado warning, big hail, damaging winds. Okay, let's go back to the southwest here. Uh, Okarchi, big hail for you. Quarters, golf balls, maybe tennis balls, maybe baseballs, west of Okarchi. That's gonna go on to Kingfisher. You folks in Kingfisher, you already had the big hail storm a couple of weeks ago. You're gonna do it again. On and south of Kingfisher, Edmond got another storm. Yeah, that's the second know. storm, right? Second storm in Edmond. And that's now moved through Edmond with more golf balls. That's going to Lazy E Arena. And this, is, this storm is going to also impact Guthrie again, especially South Guthrie to Lazy E. It's going to Meridian, it's going to Langston, and it's going to Coil. Not tornadic. Right now, I'm not too worried about this for a tornado at all right now. It's just big hail, but still big and bad enough. Okarchi storm still severe. Uh, this storm has weakened into the West Metro, it looks like to me, over the outlet shop, still some hail in there. This is our, this is our big one. And uh, tornado warning now continues for east and southeast more. Tornado warning continues for you. There's what it looks like from our trackers and from Jim Gardner. No tornado warning on the ground, or no tornado warning, no tornado on the ground. Tornado warning does continue uh, with that. And it's just to the southeast of Heyday. All right, let's go back to shear rate on this. And... And then we will do a storm track. There it is again. There's where the tornado is. It's going to be just east of I-35 now. Okay, and we'll go back to Hank. It is spinning. There's a Hank shot. There's Jim shot. It does not look like it's on the ground right now. Boy, big hail. And more is just absolutely getting hammered. Just There's going to be all kinds of damage. Okay. Okay, I think that's too small. I think the radar's yeah, kind of missing we've had it. had reports larger than that. Yeah, and there's your hail swath where the hail has fallen so far. You can see the path of that hail. Okay, let's go to Hank Brown and get an update from Hank. And uh, Hank, it's uh, now east of I-35, uh, south of Hayday. You're looking off your southeast, I assume. What do you think? Give us an update. Go. 
Yeah, David, I'm I'm just about well, I'm just north of Heyday, so I'm I'm sitting at uh, uh, Oklahoma Free Will Baptist College, and uh, the circulation has has kind of come down a little bit. There's there's a new area taken over, so pan to the right, Patty. This area to the right, this is right on top of I-35. We had a funnel, a brief funnel that lasted for about 10 seconds out of that, and then it went back up, and then this area more to my east. Um, so this area here is going to be le- near like the old Broadmoor Golf Course, uh, Apple Creek Estates or Apple Valley. Uh, it's going to go towards Apple Creek Middle School, Highland East, eventually as it gets up towards Moore uh, or further up into Moore. But right now, I, I thought for sure three minutes ago or four minutes ago it was going to tornado. Uh, and now it looks like it's trying to recycle again as it, as it did, uh, you know, 15 or 20 minutes ago where it occluded. But now this new circulation is forming, and it's getting more mature, and it's going to be to the east of I-35. So um, if you know where I'm at, if you live in Moore, you know where I'm at. I'm between um, Heyday and, and the hospital, and I'm looking due east across I-35. So this is probably somewhere near uh, Sunny Lane or sooner at the time right now, David. Back to you. All right, great job, Hank. So Hank, again, down in uh, Moore and Norman, looking at this storm down here. Big hook on it, folks, for sure. There's your wall cloud, All right? Look at traffic. This is I-35. He's looking off to the southeast. And uh, big hook, tornado warning continues. Let's go back to Lynx 1. Go ahead. Echo region. It looks like a donut hole there on the hook. If I a little bit. Just enough. Do you see that? Right here. Yeah. Right here. I mean, so it is definitely spinning. Yeah. Okay, so, so see this? This is what we're talking about. This is where the tornado is. If it's going to happen, it's right there. This is all big hail. And uh, Cass, go ahead and get a storm track on that and do it from, the, do it from here. And uh, let's go back to Jim Gardner up top. And I want to see what this looks like from Jim's shot. Let's take that full. And uh, Jim, you've got a donut in the air, right? And right in the middle of it, we have a problem. I like donuts, but I don't like them with problems. Go ahead, Jim. Give us an update on that storm. And uh, rotation continues. It looks like it's getting a little bit tighter. It's tightened up. It gets a little weaker. It comes back. But the tornado warning, yes, and it should. And it does. Wow, look at that shot on velocity. Um, so, Jim, give us an update on the rotation right now. It is now east of I-35, uh, east of Heyday, southeast of Heyday. Go ahead, Jim. Hell, but this is what the, uh, we're really watching it. We just hope this never spins up and really tightens up because this could be a pretty large tornado here, David. But like I said, my position right now is 48th Avenue Northeast, just uh, coming up on Rock Creek Road. So Rock Creek and uh, 48th Road uh, Northeast is where I'm sitting, shooting back to the Northwest, tracking this thing, David. Jim Garpro and live from Bob Mills, Scotty's 9, back to you. Okay, nice job, and look at that. Jim, if you can, can you pull out of that shot, um, have Rich back out of that so we can maybe get a better perspective of what this thing looks like? For those folks that have never seen what we call an LP um, supercell, and uh, he might be too close. He is, huh? I'm sorry, low precipitation. Yes, an LP supercell. And look, look at this. Look at that. Look at the spin. Um, folks, I mean, if you've never been storm chasing before, um, people travel the world over to be able to see something like that. No joke. They come from all over the world to come to Oklahoma to see something like that. This is the mesocyclone. This is a solid column of rotating air from left to right, right? Everything is going up here. Everything over here is falling down. There's your downdraft. There's your updraft. And look at all the striations. I mean, absolutely incredible. Now, if Jim can tilt his shot back down, if Rich can bring the shot back down, and there you go, under the mesocyclone, Hello, Mr. Wall Cloud. All right, so that's what we have going on. All right, so no tornado on the ground yet, which is great news. It's still spinning, and it's really spinning once you get just a few thousand feet up. It just hasn't worked its way down to the ground yet, which is great news. Okay, so um, by the way, has the speed, is it just me or has the speed, the speed slowed down it some? Is, it slowed once it started to really get into Westmore, yeah. yes. So it's taking over its environment. Um, it was moving at 40. Now, what are we, are we 20? 25, what are we? Yeah, we've come down about 15 miles per hour. All right, so there's your hook. There's your dangerous part of the storm. This is all big damaging hail in here, quarter golf ball, tennis ball. There's your hook. Okay, I'm going to leave this just for a second. You can see that we're going to leave that shot up. The tornado is not on the ground. Tornado warning for you folks. Again, 
in East Moore, downtown Moore, you're fine for now. This is to your east. You're not going to get the tornado. It's going to be just south of Highway 37, and uh, that's going to be Val's shot right there. That's what it looks like from Val. Uh, that is Hank's shot. Boy, that's an impressive shot from Hank and Val. And David, yeah. the storm that Jeremy's on, Cassie was just saying, also going tornado warren. Jeremy's yep. right there east of Chickasha. I've been watching that thing spin for the last, what, hour and a half now. Yeah. Yeah, let's go back down there now. Let's go back down here. News 9, let's do this. This will be a tornado warning now. Uh, and this is going to be northeast of Chickasha, barely uh, back to uh, uh, Tabler. And uh, let's go to Jeremy now. And this is going to Middleburg. It's going to Blanchard. Tornado warning for you. The tornado is going to be just a little bit west of uh, Middleburg there. Uh, Jeremy, go ahead. Give us an update. Let's take Jeremy's shot. Go ahead. Yeah, David, this thing's been spinning for quite a little while. I don't see anything at this point that's just like screaming tornado, but definitely, definitely some organized, uh, organized rotation beginning to develop here with this storm. Back to you, David. Hey, Jeremy, let me ask you a question there. Uh, the mesocyclone, uh, rain on the backside. I can see some of the knuckles. What, how strong is the rotation just above you, like right in front of you right now? How, how strong is that spinning right there? Well, it, it's not spinning so hard that I'm like, that I'm like nervous about. I don't think a tornado is just like ready to jump out of this cloud, but there's another area of rotation back to my south, and I'm actually in the process of trying to get relocated, keep from getting locked up in the rain here. But you can see the rotation clearly here. Rain sort of falling out of it. It's, I've seen a few funnels, David, but nothing really crazy. Back to you. Okay. All right. Hey, Justin, and help him maneuver. You know, he's in between. That's kind of a tricky area. That storm looks a lot different than our storms uh, up here in Oklahoma City. A little more precip down there. Uh, that's a little bit uh, sketchy going on down there. Okay. So let's go back to Lynx 1. Let me show you where Jeremy is. You were seeing his shot live. We have both tornado warnings covered with trackers on the ground and Jim Gardner in the air. And this storm also making its way up towards Norman. Yeah. Just Heads up, Norman. Yeah, it's it's going to Norman. Norman, you've they've kind of missed it today. West Norman, North Norman, but uh, this is making its way to Norman. And the last thing you want to hear from me and from us is a damaging, devastating hailstorm headed to Norman, possibly happening. And it's right here. Okay, look at it. Shear rate. Jeremy's right here. This is going to be off to his northwest between him and Amber. Okay, and okay, there's shear rates right here. Let's go to velocity. Okay. It's right here. It's tucked back in. There it is. Okay, yeah. And uh, what about uh, base? Does it look like anything better? Okay. I mean, yeah. you can see that and also a little circulation in the hail. The biggest hail core with this is actually over just in the north of the airport, north of Chickasha. Yeah. And that's where some of the largest hail is, and it's going to go up towards Amber. Yeah, Amber, you're going to get hammered. Amber's going to get hammered. And this is going to go right to Amber. Big hail, tennis ball, baseball size hail. There you can see Radar saying core. baseballs. Okay, radar's not off today. And uh, sometimes if you had a lot of rain or a bunch of small hail, the algorithms that write the, that take the radar and actually interpret what size hail we think is being produced today, it's done a pretty good job. Yeah, um, this if, is actually, if it's, I'm sorry. David. It's been a little bit lower. This is actually a storm that raced out of the southwest uh, into the main supercell that's been ongoing for an, a good hour and a half that's making this, this new storm that's becoming one because there's two storms yeah, right there yeah. that are merging yeah so what's going to happen is as these merge and go ahead and laugh that Lacey let's see what that looks like I want to see this this merge and, and uh, tell the control room uh, just to take Justin's camera when he when he talks please okay yeah see how that merged into it so this is going to disrupt this mesocyclone which is right here so what's going to happen is this is going to become one big storm and then it's either going to hold its own or we're going to have problems. Because that, that, this, this is now turning into the biggest storm in the state. Am I right on that? Yeah. Okay, so that's a problem. Okay, so tornado warning now for you folks uh, down in Grady County, coming right up I-44. And we have two storms merging. It's going to disrupt the mesocyclone. It might actually weaken the mesocyclone or the area of spin. And then after that, most times it will come back possibly even stronger. So I have to watch that. And right now, folks, this is going to Norman. Uh, Cassie, let's get a storm track on that. And let's go back to the it. north now. She's got it on Lynx 3 when you're ready. Okay, Lynx 3, storm track on this big mess, on the two big storms down here, going to Norman. Bridge Creek High School, a 711. Uh, Blanchard, 712. Newcastle, 725. Uh, Newcastle Fire Department, 728. Riverwind Casino, 735. 
Truman Elementary, or Truman Primary, excuse me, Elementary School, same deal, 736. Sooner Mall, down in uh, Norman on Main Street, uh, 738. Okay, so it's, it's going to Norman. Do we have downtown Norman on that? And uh, why is it not? We need to, there we go. Downtown Norman, 744. Downtown Norman, 744. Now, let me point that out. That is with the tornado itself back here. Okay? All right. Uh, go ahead and lapse that again. Wow, look how fast. Look how fast that has, did you guys see that? How quickly that storm has absorbed and yeah. now the northeast mezzo might be actually weakening and the new mezzo is the it's one, one that's further back is really now beginning to take over man that's a scary looking storm norman prepare for another hailstorm and a big one if this thing takes its same same line here downtown norman 744 that's with the the mezzo cyclone the possible tornado the hail core is going to be there before that your hail core now is coming into blanchard to bridge creek and right now, the hail core with the other supercell is right over the Tinker Air Force Base, right at the diagonal split there between I-40 and 240 okay. in West OKC. Yep, yep. Okay, um, let's go back to Hank here real quick. Hank is still on the North Storm up in the metro, up in North Moor, East Moor. And uh, let's take Hank's shot. And uh, Hank, area of rotation, still spinning. Give us an update. And uh, tornado warning continues. Yeah, David, uh, this storm, I'm looking to the northeast. I'm still from Indian Hills Road uh, just because I'm trying to play in between the two. Um, this storm is not near as mature and pronounced as it was. Um, to me, it appears that this storm is getting smaller. I'm seeing a little bit more movement in the cloud base. Usually what happens when a, an updraft gets smaller, I'm, you know, we're seeing that, but, but we do not have that huge wall cloud with that real merry-go-round type of type circulation like we had when it was crossing I-35. We don't have that anymore. There's some slight rotation in the base, but it appears to me that this storm that's, that's now headed towards the Tinker area is, is, has weakened, and it's not near the threat that it was 10 minutes ago or so. Back to you. All right. Well, there's some great news from Hank, and, uh, and Radar does support that as well. So, um, the tornado warning does continue. The hook is still there, but you know it's ramped up and it it, it got up there to that level. And we dropped you know tornado warning on it. And I get it, but um, it did not produce, which is great. On it's, radar, it's, you can just see the hook get absorbed, yeah. pulled right back up into it. Yeah, it's 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 being eaten alive I mean, right now. Something. Okay, see what I'm talking about here. See the hook being pulled right here, being absorbed. And when it's going to try to produce something, that hook will be hanging us out. We still have to watch this. Let's New go to Val Cassidy. New funnel. hook is developing now. All right, let's go to Val. New hook developing. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Just let's, over Highway 37. Okay, let's go to Val. And uh, Val is, uh, he's on 77, coming up to 77 and 37. Uh, one, two, three, four, five miles east of the Moore Medical Center. That's Highway 37 East in between there and Lake Stanley Draper. Val, uh, the hook, that first hook to your north has weakened a little bit. Give us an update. What do you think? What do you see? Yeah, so we had a, we had a small funnel that just appeared, and, and what we've got here is we've got an occluding or weakening mezzo, and this is exactly what the storm did earlier uh, when it was uh, like west of Moore coming into that area. We had a very small funnel form, and this is the occluding or weakening mezzo in this area. I would expect if this thing's going to further intensify it again we'll see another mezzo uh form uh, another wall cloud possibly formed to the east or east southeast like we happened a while ago but that little funnel is gone uh it, w it was small it was rotating but it was with a weakening mezzo back to you david yeah okay all right well great job val so val again uh in more looking off to his north uh the rotation there it's still there these things will spin for days and we don't leave them until they're gone because a cell this big the volume and the physics and all that's behind this for mesocyclone to, to do what it's doing just to produce a large hail and the damaging winds, you stay with these things and you never leave a mesocyclone because they can tighten up, they tighten up, they stretch, and, and you possibly get a tornado. All right, so we're still tracking that. Um, let's go back to Lynx 1, and then we're going to jump into southwestern Oklahoma, and we'll go to Jeremy coming up. Big Hail, St. Anthony Healthplex, Tinker Air Force Base, Carl Albert High School, Midwest City, uh, Valley Brook, big hail in here, quarter, golf ball size hail. 
uh, tennis ball size hail up to baseball size hail in the south and southeast metro. This is a crippling hailstorm. Let's put hail on here. Let's change over, see what it looks like. And uh, yeah, we're showing pockets of baseballs and uh, tennis ball. Golf ball, tennis ball is in the red. Kind of hard to see. Yeah. Oh, because, oh, I see why. The tornado warning is It's gotcha. covered, yeah. Okay. Um, and then here's your hail swath. This is where the hail has fallen. Lots and lots of miles covered up with a devastating hailstorm. Quarters, nickels, out. dimes, golf balls, tennis balls. And look at the hail tracks. Look at there. Edmond, Okarchi, Kingfisher, uh, Chickasha coming into the metro. Edmond had two hailstorms. And David, the hail core that's over Langston right now will probably go south of Stillwater, but it's headed towards Perkins. And it's golf balls, maybe up to tennis balls as well. And that's right this there. This is the one over Guthrie here. I'll turn back on reflectivity. There okay. you go. The move yep. north of Guthrie. And this is severe. It yes. just went through Langston with some hail there. It's going to, uh, it's going to be close. Right. If I live in Stillwater and my car is outside and I can cover it, protect it, I'm protecting it. Um, it's going to be close. But if you live in Stillwater, south of Stillwater, or east of Stillwater, protect your property. That storm. By the way, it does have mesocyclone in it. It is turning. It could ramp up. No tornado warning on it. It is severe. Yes. The hook's back here on the northwest or southwest side. Okay. Um, other severe storm now, south of Dover. Not tornadic. Producing some big hail. Going to Mulhall. Going to Crescent. Going to Mulhall for sure. Okay. Uh, is this the third storm coming into Edmond? This is the third storm. For Edmond. And uh, is, it, is it severe? It is, it is severe. Yeah. I just have turned all the warnings off because... You still have the tornado warning on? I do. Okay. It's, it, it doesn't look as big and bad as... Yes, the bill has down come here. down on that one in the last check. Here, I'll yeah. turn it on really quick and you can see. But uh, yeah, definitely. The, so that storm's weakened. Still severe. Winds 60 to 70. Golf balls. Turn on hail size and see what this thing's producing now in the West Oklahoma City area. And then we'll get back to the torn. Okay, yeah, hail sizes have come down. Okay, let's uh, touch base. South Metro, big hail, tennis ball, up to baseballs, Tinker Air Force Base, crippling hail storm, uh, multi million dollar hail storm running from Tinker, uh, Midwest City. It's going to Choctaw. You folks in Choctaw, you got a little bit of time before this moves in. And it's barely moving. I know. That's a 15 minute lapse. Yeah. A 15 minute lapse. And so it's just hailing like crazy. Yeah. I could, I could tell that earlier. I was like, man, this thing has really been talking about the same areas for, it should have been long gone. And okay, so move, and it's moving a little more north now, it looks like. Yeah, heading up towards Not, West City. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's moving northeast, but it's, it's being pulled a little bit to the north. So Willowbrook Elementary School, Midwest City, get ready, Midwest City. It's moving in right now. You're going to have big hail, quarters, golf balls, maybe larger in Midwest City. And uh, tennis ball, this is all big hail down here, crossing uh, I-40 right now. Leaving I-240 in between I-240 and I-40, Dell City, Oak Ridge Elementary School. Boy, this is big hail. And it's going right into Dell City, and it's going right into Midwest City, and it's going right into... Uh, Tinker Air Force Base. The planes are already gone. They got a billion dollars worth of planes down there. They're they're not sitting outside. These things have been gone for hours. It's pretty cool. You've been down there on a big day. These things take off like the world's on fire, and they leave. They do not leave those planes here. Okay. Um, this is our other tornado warning. We have on that. We'll check in with Jeremy coming up. And this is the old mesocyclone. This is the new mesocyclone. Big hook here developing just north of Chickasha, just north of the airport. That is going to try to go to Amber. Let's go to Jeremy Carter. Tornado warning now. Chickasha, you're in the clear. It's to your north. It's not going to hit Chickasha. And uh, wow, that is low, okay? It is slowly. See this? This is moving from left to right. Call it the cigar cloud on the right, moving from right to left. And these are not funnels, all right? I know a lot of people will see that and, oh, they send in pictures. And that's fine. We appreciate the pictures. Um, is that kind of scary looking to you? Yeah. But these are not funnels. These are what we call updraft lowerings underneath the mesocyclone. Okay, see how this is starting to spin faster? You guys see that right there? It's starting to fold. Let's go to Jeremy Carter. That may be tightening up right there. Jeremy, the cloud, the, the front lip uh, in the foreground of the wall cloud, it looks like it's getting tighter, moving from left to right. Go ahead, Jeremy, give me an update. Yeah, David, so I'm right at 92 south of Amber, right on, right on 39 meets 92. And you can see this thing definitely is lowering. We've got a, definitely a strong updraft here uh, at, at times. We've got very 
where the where the scuds are just lifting very strong back up into that base. And I'll be real honest with you, David. This year, bells and whistles are going off in my head when I see a wall cloud this low to the ground with this much movement. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job. Great job. Say that again, Justin. Just just tell me, Doc. Say that again. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. All right. So what's happening is here, uh, the wall cloud is quickly developing. And uh, this is in real time. And notice how, just follow me here. This is, again, uh, down just north of Chickasha. And I'll just step out of the way here. Let, my, let me get out of the way here. You can see the movement from left to right and lifting. Left to right and lifting. And uh, there's our storm trackers down there. Hang on. 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 Hang on, Jeremy. What's this right here? Zoom in on it's that, Jeremy. It's a yeah, 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 yeah. I see it. Go, 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 go. What is that? Yeah, yeah. So, David, so okay. David, that was a brief. It was a brief funnel. It was kind of spinning. You see them spin out and see them go away before. That's what it did there. So this thing is definitely taking on the nature of, of really a possible tornado producer here now. We got to watch this close. We're just barely south of Amber, and I mean this thing's probably right over the McDonald's on the turnpike. David, back to you. <laughs> Okay. And uh, Justin, uh, Jeremy, just so you know, you don't have time to go there. Uh, you don't have time to stop. I know. I know. Um, okay. I'm going that away. I know. <laughs> I know. All right. So, folks, tornado warning uh, north of Chickasha. Let's get back to velocity data control room. Um, keep Jeremy shot up, please. I like it. And so this is where the hook is right here. Jeremy's looking off to his northwest. The old mesocyclone is to the north. And what does that look like on velocity data? Okay. It's the yeah, it's, it's, it's tucked back in here. It's right here. Yeah, okay. Two mesocyclones here, right? There One, you, go. you can see the two. Two. We have, we have two mesocyclones, right? Two areas of spin. One of these, can both of them produce tornadoes? Absolutely. Do they? Yes. Will it? Odds are that one of these is going to die, and it's probably going to be this one. It's probably going to fill and weaken and just become part of this other storm, which is getting um, untapped air from the south and southeast. And that's what these storms want, right? They're, they're just like us. They live, they breathe, they get old, and they die. The problem is that they're young bucks, and they're running, and they're just going at it right now. And, and they're, they're, they're fully at their peak right here north of Chickasha, right? No weakening with that whatsoever. That storm is actually getting stronger. And then we have the old mesocyclone right here. Okay, so let's go and back to uh, velocity data or shear rate. Give me something just to show you what, okay. what I'm talking about. Tornado warning now. So if you live in Chickasha, I have no idea if the sirens are blowing. You're fine in Chickasha. It's north of you. It's well north of you, okay? It's right here, north of Chickasha. It's right back in here. And, and then we have the other mesocyclone, which is right here. And there's a new hook developing on Tom and Val's storm that's southwest of Tinker. That storm has just pumped the brakes, David. It's almost stalled. And Great. More, there more is hail damage. definitely new inflow and a new hook starting to develop for okay. Highway 77. Okay, we'll get back to that. So if you live uh, between Amber and Middleburg and back to about three miles east northeast of Chickasha, lowest level, center part of the house, or storm shelter, center part of the house, lowest level, bathroom, closet. You got to get there now. Tornado warning for you, okay? It's going to ride up I-44. Actually, it's going to move more towards Blanchard and try to make its way into Norman. Rain now falling in Norman. Big hail. Once you get south of Bridge Creek, you folks in Bridge Creek, how many times had we said your name the last 30 years for severe weather? Endless. And that rotation is getting stronger with the northern storm west of Lake Stanley Draper. Okay, and we'll go back to that. Okay, so Norman, prepare. West Norman, prepare for a tornado warning. It's going to come out of this back to the west, two areas of circulation. All right, let's go back to Oklahoma City here. There's your hook ramping up south metro. And remember, the last hook got absorbed. It was weakening. We talked about it's 7 o'clock. Low-level dynamics kicking in. The tornado parameter was going to get better. Let's go to Val. Let's go to Val Caster. Val, there's your hook. There's Tom. What do you think? Is it on the ground? There it is. Tornado on the ground. Go, Val, go. I think it's on the ground. It's on the ground. Go. Tornado on the ground, David. On the ground. It is about three-quarters of a mile to our north. Man, uh, this thing wrapped up. It tightened up real, real fast. Uh, you can see it spinning right there. This is going to be east of Draper Lake, about a mile and a half. It's going to be... 
No, no, we're going this way. So, yeah, I'm sorry. West of Draper Lake, a mile and a half, David. It just pulled up. It looks like it lifted, but, I mean, it could come down at any minute now. now, now okay, so now, the now. location on the tornado, David, okay. is going to be east of Sooner Road. East of Sooner Road. It's on the ground. And north of 104th. Yeah. Hey, Val. It's on the ground again. Yeah, it's on it's, the ground. No, it's it has, on the ground. Yeah, it hasn't lifted. I, 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 I still see debris. I, I've seen debris the whole time. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this okay, is going to so, be... A, um, hey, by the way, hey, Val. Hang on. Val, this is a News 9 tornado warning, okay? Uh, the, only, only we have this and only we're saying it. This is a News 9 tornado warning. Okay, Val, is it crossing the road? Is it crossing 77? Go, take it. So it's going to be crossing uh, 89th Street right now. Crossing 89th, getting very close, very close to 240, David. I can't tell if it's on 240 yet, um, but if it's not, it's going to be crossing. It will be crossing very shortly, uh, the way this thing is moving. So you put the camera right there. Uh, we are making our way up to southeast 89th. 89th, I'm going to go... Okay, I'm going to go east on 89th and, and then go north up to 240. Um, I can't see. We're getting lots of wraparound rain right now, David, but it's probably still on the ground. I can't tell for certain. Matter of fact, we're going to go all the way up to 240 and get on. Uh, it, it's, it's slower taking 89th Street. So here we go. We're going up to 240. Just getting tornado warnings coming over the phone now. All right, David, so we're about a half a mile from 240. We're going to go east to see if this thing crosses 240 yet. Yep. Starting to get some hail. Okay, go ahead. Take no, it. no, no, I just want to say yes, and, and the lake's ahead of you, so you got to go left. you got to go left. The lake's coming up. Let's go, to, let's go back to radar here, and let's keep bow shot up. Tornado on the ground. News 9, first to bring it to you live, right here on News 9. News 9, tornado warning. Bow's right here where the tornado is. It's just to his... It's just to his east. It's right here. There's a tornado. See that little hole? Go ahead and zoom in on that, Lacey. There's the hole right here. And this is coming up towards Tinker Air Force Base. It'll be there in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, there's Tinker. Well, unless it it's, slows down any, yeah. <laughs> anymore. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not moving very quickly. Yeah, it's not moving fast at all. Um, there's a tornado right there. It, it's, it's right here. It's just east of Val. Okay, so let's go back to Tom now. Let's bring Tom in here. Tom? Um, it was on the ground just briefly for maybe 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds. What do you think, Tom? You see it on the ground? And it kind of, it, the condensate was about 70, 60 percent to the ground, but we had debris in the air. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, that's right. I just got on I-240, and I am just to the west of Midwest Boulevard. Um, I don't see it on the ground at the moment. Um, I was in some wrapping rain curtains. You know what? It is. It might be on the ground over Tinker Air Force. Yeah, it could be over Tinker Air Force Base right now. Um, yeah, I think it is on the ground. It's not a pronounced funnel, but there is, there's rapid rotation. And it's all the way to the ground. Okay. All right. Okay. It's so just right behind me. Okay. So r r real quick, real quick. Are right, you're you're on get get our bearings straight. You're on 240 coming up on Midwest Boulevard. It's still to the right of 240, right? It looks like it's to the north of 240. Yes. Okay, it's now to the north. Okay, it's just now to the north. Okay. Okay, let's go back to Valcaster. We have uh, debris. This big plant right here. Okay, no, control room. Yeah, lose, got... lose that. Go back to Valcaster, control room. Lose that shot. Valcaster, take it now. Go. Go ahead, Val. All right, David, I'm going to get the get the roof cam and get the roof cam on it. I'm going to I'm going to get over here on the shoulder so we can stop and look at it. It is David, it's touching down. It's going up and going down. Uh, we just saw debris. Just a second ago, I don't see debris now. Um, that right, right back there. You got it on the roof cam? Okay, she's trying to get it on the roof What's cam over here? here. What's All over right, here? The sirens are going off. Yeah. Okay, that's it right there. Yeah. <sighs> Hang on. Val, your shot's a little dark. Val Caster, your shot's right. a little dark. Okay. David, I see rotation. I see ro I see rotation on the ground. There's not a lot of debris. Okay. I'm going to try and turn. Right I'm, I'm going to try and turn right so I can get a shot because our roof cam has water all over it. Yep. So just give me a second here. Okay, you're fine. Give me a second here. You're fine. Um, let's go back to radar here, control room, and we'll get come. In the mud. We'll come back to Val. <laughs> He's in mud. Okay, so this is where the tornado is. It's just to his west and to his northwest, southeast 59th. Uh, this is Tinker Air Force Base. It's coming into Tinker right now. 
from the south and southwest. Tornado again on the ground intermittently off and on. Tornado's been on the ground off and on the last couple of minutes now. Uh, News 9, tornado warning for southeast Oklahoma City and for Midwest City proper and for Tinker Air Force Base. If you live in and around Tinker Air Force Base, there's your tornado. About ready to cross southeast 59th, is it not? It's crossing southeast 59th. Yes. Right now. Okay, I see Bal's getting his camera back in here. Okay, what does shear rate look yeah, like? I'm just going to zoom out so you can see the whole supercell itself, David. It is crawling to the north. The hook is actually being pulled up quickly, but the storm itself is still barely moving. Okay. All right, uh, go to shear rate. Let's see what it looks like. Tornado continues on the ground. I see bow shot. And there's shear rate, right where it should be. Cross, like I said, cross the southeast 59th. Okay, this is and southeast that's air depot. 44. This is, uh, this is air depot? Yeah. No, sorry, this is air depot. This air, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Air depot's right here. Uh, this is Air Depot. This is Midwest Boulevard. Tinker Air Force Base. If you live in and around Tinker Air Force Base, lowest level, center part of the house so far. It's been a weak tornado, but does it matter? It's a tornado, and I've, it's been on the ground the last couple of minutes. I've got our SSM health cam turned to Tinker. I don't see any power flashes, but watching for that. Okay. All right. Let's go back to Val. Let's go back to Val. Let's see what this looks like. Val's there. Tom's there. Tom's to the east. Val's to the south. Let's go back to Val's shot. And uh, Val, what do you think? Weakened? Maybe lifted? Go ahead. Yeah, David, okay, that's an air depot. What you're seeing right there is what's left over of the tornado. We saw it, it weakly touched down north of uh, I-240, maybe once or twice. I mean, there, it wasn't very strong. Um, right there is the weakening, I guess you could say, cloud debris of, of what's left. Now, where the camera's pointed now is the new wall cloud, David. You know, we, all, we always talk about the old one occluding and the new one trying to form. That is the new one, and that is about two miles, maybe a mile and a half east or so of the other one. And so we're gonna we're we're getting back on the road now. We're gonna go east because uh, the the old one is completely dissipated. I don't think you have to worry about that one back there anymore. Um, but this one is gonna be the new one, and this thing has been very persistent for the last I don't know hour and a half. And um, we're just going to have to watch it. It'll probably do another one. Back to you. Okay. Make sure we are. Um, okay. So here we go, folks. This is the new, but look at the rainbow there, double rainbow. Um, okay. So this is the new mesocyclone forming. Uh, we had the tornado on the ground. By the way, new storm moved to the village, going to Edmond again, not producing a tornado. Marty's on that. Uh, Marty's on that. But uh, this is not on the ground right now. But let me scope, let's go back to links uh, one and... And just like Justin was just saying, the storm near Blanchard really tightened up. Brandon's looking at it and that yeah. storm, very similar to the one that we're watching yeah. over Tinker. It looks like, okay, control room, put that back up. Let's go back to Brandon's shot here and tornado warning for Southeast Medro, Midwest City. Tornado warning now for Blanchard, Middleburg and areas north. Look at that wall cloud. Hello, mama. Look at the size of that. Wow. Okay, folks, it just got real. All right, Brandon, there you go. Uh, that's impressive, and that thing is spinning, and the low-level dynamics, the tornado parameters are getting more favorable right now, and it's just about the peak time for all of this. What do you think? That thing is it's, no doubt about it. It is spinning. It's almost due east. David, so here, here, here's what it's I moving. think has happened. So the old circulation occluded, and a new one formed back to the west. But as it came into it, it recycled the old circulation, and it has taken back over and has shoved it to the east. It's no longer moving northeast. It's almost moving due north. I mean, due east. Um, I just took a major hailstone and, sh and cracked my windshield. I'm getting strong north winds west of uh, Blanchard as I head eastbound and getting sporadic golf balls. And I can tell you that the circulation is dramatically increased. The wall cloud is tremendously wide right now and continues to lower there is a lot of lift a lot of circulation it's still fairly broad circulation but at times it continues to try to localize i mean if you want my honest opinion right now i would say blanchard down highway nine riverwind casino south side of norman if this thing continues over the next five to ten minutes like it has the last five or ten minutes we could have a, a uh, definitely a tornado, if not a fairly strong to significant tornado, the way this thing is going through its cycle right now. 
Back to you. Yeah, well, uh, that, we certainly hope not. And th this thing is, uh, Brandon, if you can still hear me, your storm right now is moving 90 degrees. That can change, but it's taking over the environment. It's becoming so large that it's making its own environment. It's moving due east. It's almost going against the steering winds today, like everything else is moving to the northeast. This thing has become so big, it's like, yeah, I don't think so. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And that's going to be turn right and move east. And we got to watch these areas right here. Okay, look at that. All right, so this is a bad deal. This is bad. Uh, not on the ground right now, but uh, we're watching it very, very carefully. Going to Middleburg, uh, going to Winter Creek Country Club, going to Washington. Um, let's go back to Links One here, and Link let me has show a good perspective of that storm as well, looking southwest from a further distance. Yeah, yeah, say that again, Justin. Uh, Hank has a better uh, has a, a perspective from oh, okay. a distance, looking I see southwest. It. I'll take you a shot coming up. Okay, so here's the deal: the tornado warning. I get it. It's for the, uh, the mesocycle in here. There, this is going to be a News 9 tornado warning farther south, okay? For right here, where Jeremy is, uh, this is another mesocyclone going to Winter Creek. We have two areas of spin. Both of these are spinning, and both of these could produce a tornado, okay? So if you live in Middleburg, Blanchard, Cole, Goldsby, um, you know, maybe as far north, yeah, we got we to put Norman back in it here because it could occlude and lift to the northeast. Tornado warning for you. All the way up to Norman again. Okay, let's go to Shear, right? Let's see what we have in here. Then we're gonna jump back north to South Oklahoma City. I get it, folks. There's a lot going on. One area of spin. Um, is the radar, is it right? It looks like it, yes. It, okay, yes, it is. That's increasing now. So that's what Jeremy's looking at. Okay, that makes sense in his shot, okay. So the circulation's here, right? And then we have the other one back to the southwest where Brandon is. Two areas of spin right here. Two areas of spin. One little farther. Boy, there's some damaging winds in there. What are the winds? 70, 80? Yeah. 80 mile an hour winds on the north side of Blanchard. Damaging winds. Damaging winds. And, oh, yeah, throwing some big hail just for fun. Okay, so this is all going to more Norman. We'll do a storm track on that. Let's come back north now. Let's come back to Oklahoma City and uh, talk about what's going on. Big hail in the metro, let's go back. And, okay, wow, look at the hail. Wow, Tacoma Park, Dungy Park, Highway 62. It's actually, let's see. Yeah, it's starting to, it's, it's not moving like it was, but yeah, you're, it is moving. Okay, so um, let's go a little farther north here. Let's look down the road, what's coming our way. Um, yeah, it, it's gonna go to Jones. Uh, big hail storm for Jones, uh, Choctaw, west of Choctaw. Going to Spencer, Jones, big hail here. More big hail coming back into Edmond. Quarter, golf ball, size hail. Is this Edmond's third or fourth hailstorm of the day? One, two, three. Fourth. Yes. I don't think, I don't think you're on. I'm on. There we go. Yeah, you are. Yep. Yeah, so this is, this is the fourth. A uh, storm to move through Edmond. It's the third large hailstorm to move through Edmond. So okay. this is easily as big as the first two. Right. And here's the deal. Hook on this over North Park Mall. Right now, we're not jumping down, up and down about a tornado warning with it, but it is spinning. And we have big hail in here. We have big hail. Man, big hail. Now, uh, crossing Broadway Extension and the Kilpatrick. That's gargantuan hail. That's big hail. That's going to be tennis ball size hail. And it's going right up Broadway Extension. It's going to downtown. Another crippling hailstorm for Edmond. Fourth storm of the day. Rain's good. I could have done without the hail. So could everybody else in Edmond. Welcome to April in Oklahoma. Wow. Another big, big hailstorm. Edmond, protect your property. Maybe too late. You've already been hammered from the other hailstorms. But this is going to go right up to Broadway Extension, right across Memorial, 33rd, 15th, 2nd Street, right? It goes all the way back to Portland. It's going to Mitch Park. Um, it's going to Danforth, Covell, Coffee Creek, e everybody. Uh, everybody's going to get some hail. But this, the black going to the white, that's going to be tennis balls, if not larger. And it's right over Santa Fe. Right over Santa, Santa, yeah, Santa Fe Street, right? And yes. in between, uh, where Memorial and 33rd. Yeah, 33rd here. There's Memorial. Uh, crippling hailstorm, multi-million dollar hailstorm right here. Ooh, wow. Look at it now. 
OCU, big, big hailstorm. <clears throat> Edmund, protect your property, whatever that means. And also move away from the south windows. This is going to blow in from the south. You're going to get tennis balls. You're going to have some baseballs. Baseball size hail moving into Edmond. Not everyone's going to get that. Let's not get nutty. But nickels and dimes, quarters, and up to baseballs. Okay? Coming into Edmond. It's a devastating, it's a crippling hailstorm. Okay, let's go back to the tornado warning. Let's jump back south here. Uh, let's see what it's doing here. Big hail, Nakoma Park, up to Dungey Park, tornado. Um, it looks like it might have lifted. Let's go back to the ground now and check in with Val. And uh, where's, Je where's Val? Here's Tom. Val Val's right Anderson. here. He's back here looking off. Okay. And uh, Val, a little bit of disorganization here. We're kind of moving things around a little bit. Tell me what you're thinking right now. Go ahead, Val. Yeah, so that's exactly what we're thinking, David. Um, you know, it, it kind of became disorganized. It, it is kind of disorganized right now. Uh, the rotation, there's a really large, broad area uh, of this cloud that's rotating here, of this, this big lowering. Uh, and within that broad area, there's several, I, I guess you could say, individual areas that are rotating. So it's not real super organized. But earlier, before it, it produced a tornado, it was doing the same thing. And then it quickly, all of a sudden, consolidated in one spot and then dropped that tornado pretty fast. So this storm has been, I don't know, going now for what, two hours and rotating now. So, I mean, it's a long-lived supercell, and it's going to have to be watched close the whole time. Back to you. Remember, those tornado parameters, Val, uh, they get stronger um, over the next hour to two hours, even though I know we're thinking, oh, it's 719. It's, it, you know, all, every, day is a, every day is a thumbprint. They're all different, right, when it comes to severe weather. Okay, so not on the ground right now. The tornado was not on the ground. Uh, right now, Tom's there, Val's there. Let's go back to links one. And uh, Lacey, I see you have the sweep on, on links one. And let's go back to that control room. And uh, everything up north still severe? Looks yes. like it, north of Mulhall, yeah. Glencoe severe. Not tornadic, okay? All these storms are severe. <laughs> From north of Mulhall to Glencoe. You folks out in western Oklahoma, you got nothing. The dry line, you got nothing. But uh, big storm now, this is going to Perry. That's on the east sides of Glencoe. Not tornadic, but big hail, quarter, golf ball size hail there. Nothing. You're out of it in Canadian County now. You're finished. But, man, south and east, Oklahoma City, Edmond area, big hail coming into Edmond. Uh, moving in right now. And this storm we're talking about is taking over. And it is going to become the dominant storm. Look at the size of this versus this storm that's produced a tornado. Okay, let's zoom on in now. Let's go back. And... Um, I tell you what, and Greg, uh, somebody get Greg for me when they can okay. get a second. And we are streaming live. Magic Man just texts me on all Tyler Media stations, including okay. Magic 104.1. Okay, all Tyler Media stations here in Oklahoma City. You can get us there. You can get us on the News 9 app, streaming live. Your power goes out, your News 9 app, your phone's charged. You can watch us all day long. Okay, for now, let's have uh, Jim stay south on that southern storm and just bring it east, okay? Just on the on the uh, telling Charlie on the storms okay. that are just north of him, you won't have to go very far. All right. uh, let's keep him on the southern side of the uh, of the big storm down there. Okay. All right. Okay, Gre uh, Justin can't hear you. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? I can now. Okay. The inflow winds from Brandon's perspective has uh, created a little bit of damage. He had a shed next to him. The the tin roof got blown off, and that is just inflow winds feeding the warm, moist air into this storm. So it's a living, breathing storm that's kind of getting stronger based on what we're seeing on radar right now. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, he had what, inflow winds, 70, maybe 80 miles an hour, you know. And also, just look at mesoanalysis. Yeah. The bullseye of the highest parameters of uh, tornado, inflow, feeding the storms is pegged over the metro right now with this storm. Okay. So well, based on that, the environment is conducive for tornado development if all, all things come together. Yeah, and that includes down here where this is. I mean, we're all in this. Many uh, has tennis balls right now, speaking of that. Who Brandon. does? Okay, let's go to Brandon. He's right here. Uh, he's down to the southwest, and uh, Hank's here. But uh, there's one area of spin. We'll get back to that. Brandon, give us an update on the hail. There's the wall cloud. And, uh, Brandon, you are, uh, your GPS might be off. I think it is. It is off. Okay. Brandon, go ahead. Give, give, tell me your exact location. Give me your exact location. Uh, okay, so, go ahead. David, 
Okay, David, David, I am just west of Blanchard on 62 and 76. And just about four minutes ago, I had strong inflow winds, and there's some shed, some metal shed, 10 buildings right behind me that took the roof off of some of them. Probably had 60, 70 mile an hour inflow winds into this storm on the circulation just back to our west. And now the, the hell has kind of stopped now, but I have te- every bit of tennis balls laying on the ground, and they're still um, falling all around me. You can still see what is the circulation as it's tracking off to just to my south probably and just starting to come right over the top of me basically. My winds have gone almost calm, which you know what that means. I'm probably not in a very good spot, and I'm going to have to reposition. But um, we've got tennis balls falling still sporadically on the west side of Blanchard. As this thing continues off to the east, this storm is a living, breathing machine right now, and it means business. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job, Brandon. So there's a wall cloud down to the south. Tornado warning does continue for that. We've got two areas of spin down here. We're going to come back north and get on the other area. And Hank's been on that. Jeremy's a little farther south. So uh, how close is Hank to that? He looks like he's it's still to his west, right? Let's go, let's, let's go back to radar here, and then we'll go to Hank. All right. So... Kind of get your bearing straight here. And here's the deal, folks. We have two areas of, of circulation going on, right? So we have this, the storm down to the southwest, and, and uh, this is down near Blanchard. That's where Brandon is. See that? Okay. And uh, the, other, oh, the other area has weakened now, our, our last area. Yeah, it's being pulled into just all one big yeah. storm. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure. I, I want to yeah. make sure the other area one's still hanging on. Okay, so the area of spin is right over Blanchard. And let's go ahead and lapse this, and you can watch the hook. The dangerous part of the storm is right here. This is all big hail, right? This is big hail. It's going to make its way into Norman, uh, down to Highway 9, and eventually even down to Noble. But this whole thing is morphed in from two storms to one, and when two get together, it, it's never a good thing, right? When the no. first hook came right over Blanchard, it weakened. You can see that. Yeah. Now the second one's taking almost the exact same path over Blanchard. Right. It did, and now here comes the main. So the, the eastern mezzo is basically gone. The second mezzo is ramping up right here. Okay, go back and to shear rate. a good shot of that developing wall. Climb. Okay, we'll go to Hank here coming up. Okay, this is it. Now, is this going to go into Norman? That's the question. You said the dorms are going to, uh, all the OU dorms are going to their safe spot? They are taking shelter. The tornado warning does extend all the way through. Okay, Norman. that's good. Okay, and, and that's fine. Um, but right now, this is almost moving due east, uh, maybe a little bit east of northeast, which would take it up, yes, to south Norman or just barely south of Norman. It's going to be close. All right, but here's your, here's your couplet. It's tight. Okay, so the couplet is now right where Brandon is, right over Blanchard. You folks in Blanchard, tornado warning for you right now. Right now, uh, there's uh, right over Blanchard. Right over Blanchard. Let's go to Hank. Hank's just to the east looking back at it here. Brandon's underneath it. Hank is off to the east looking right back at it. And uh, Hank, I think you were the last one several years ago that caught a big LP storm like that just south of Oklahoma City, as I recall, and a low precipitation storm. What do you think? That is a monster storm for sure. It's big, big, and bad now. Go ahead, Hank. Same spot, just looking at a different location. So I'm at Highway 9 in Western. I'm looking back to the southwest. I wanted to give you a good structure shot there. You could see the, the LP vault. You could see the cigar cloud. Zoom into the wall cloud. Um, so you could just see the structure with this. This is on the north side. So this is going to be somewhere probably around 40th or 55th in Blanchard, between like 40th and 70th, give or take. Uh, n very near Highway 76, so it's going to be north of, of downtown Blanchard, but that's a, that's a pretty populated area uh, right in there for the folks that lives out, use, or live out here. The old KTs, this is going to be very close to that, so uh, it's going to go south of Grover Farms, but it is moving kind of east-northeast. It's going to come right up through uh, the Bison Ranch. It's going to come right over the Riverwind Casino, and then when that happens, it goes over the Shackley Vitamin Plant, and it goes right towards the OU campus. So, um, David, you can see this huge wall cloud here, uh, and it's taken on many different shapes in the last 15 minutes. But I can see the whole plates stacked and striated, and I can see strong rising motion 
on the front side of that wall cloud. So I don't see real tight rotation in the base of the wall cloud itself, but we know that there is rotation, obviously, in the supercell by the way that you can see the whole vault twisted like a barber pole. Back to you, David. Wow, what a shot. There's the wall cloud. Now, he is positioned a little farther east than Brandon because we have guys and gals lined up to keep tracking it, right? We don't want it to get away from us. It's not moving that quickly. But, uh, by the way, this mid-level feeder band is coming out of the south, and it is sucking and pulling everything it can out of the south. Low-level jet is feeding into this from the south. He's looking off to his southwest, and this whole thing is wrapping up and spinning like a top. So that's what it looks like on the ground. Let's go back to Jim Gardner. Look at Jim's shot and the plates on this. It looks like something out of a movie from right to left. And look at the plates in the mesocyclone. Folks, people, again, come from all over the world to come to Oklahoma to see that shot right there. And you get to see it in your comfort of your home, in your chair, with a cold drink in your hand. Jim, give us an update as you're looking at that storm. And wow, what a storm it is. Tornado warning continues for that. Go ahead. Well, that's right, David. We're sitting about 14 miles directly south of Blanchard shooting that storm. This is a tail end Charlie storm. So this is the last one in the line here. So it definitely has all the room to suck in all the clean air it wants. And it is one massive super sail. I mean, look at the rain shaft in the center of that. You can see the wall all around it, the donut in the middle. I mean, this is quite a storm, David, and it goes, it, it, the place just keeps stacking up on top of one another out of sight here. So, again, this is the one that we may really have to watch out for because it's by itself. It's isolated back here. It's got clear air behind it. We'll keep you updated. Jim Garfoyne live from Bob Mills. Scotty's 9. Back to you. Okay. All right. Wow. Great shot and uh, just a, an incredible shot. Uh, folks, look at the real time here. Look at the waves forming at the top of this. Look at the plates. Say it goes up, goes up, goes up mesocyclone and this is what you call a perfect storm in the perfect environment it is spinning this is the entire mesocyclone lots of times this is shrouded in rain you don't get to see this we get to see it on radar you get to see this in western oklahoma western kansas our panhandle the texas panhandle it doesn't always look like this in oklahoma city or in central oklahoma but it does today it's called a low precipitation storm it's not completely obviously bone dry but it's enough that we can see all the striations. Okay, let's get back to it. Links one. David, this has produced three inch hail southwest of Blanchard. That's larger than baseball, just under softball size hail. Okay, larger than baseball, southwest of Blanchard. And we also have winds now uh, running from 80 to over 100 miles per hour on the wrap. There's a tornado. It's gonna be right here. Tornado is gonna be right here. If you live in coal, go to your tornado safe spot right now. You've got just a few minutes. If you live in coal, and then from coal, let's take it all the way over to uh, Noble, McGuire. Kathy has this track on Link Slaughterville. And are we still thinking it's still moving basically due east? Is that what we're going with? Yeah, here's the. I do have it moving east. I've got it moving between 25 to 30. So right now I'm okay. going to get 28, but it is moving pretty much. Cass? Link three. No, uh, no microphone. Link three. Okay. Oh, my mic is on. It is now. Okay. Well, you sound great now. Well, great. Uh, yeah. It is moving east, and I've got it moving at about 28 miles an hour, trying to split the difference between 25 to 30, but the track is on Links 3. There you go. Okay. That looks great. And we'll say Cole, 738. Um, like I said, you have a few minutes, seven minutes. Let's not take that chance. Cole, safe spot. Go there now. Goldsby, 749. Washington, 749. David J. Perry Airport, 752. Uh, the National Weather Center is on the very north side of this. You're gonna get the hail in Norman, you're gonna get the rain, you're gonna get the wind, but the tornado threat right now is gonna try. Listen, this can change. So we're gonna keep Norman in it, at least South Norman in it, but this is gonna to try to stay farther south and go right down 74. If it goes down 74, the mesocyclone, Norman, you have no tornado. It's gonna to be in Goldsby and Noble and Slaughterville and over to Etowah, places down to the east. There's the tornado right there. Okay, so um, let's go back. Okay, let's, uh, let's go back to Lynx 1 and look at the hook now on Lynx 1. See this velocity data right here? Look at this. Look at that right there. Big hail wrapping around on the backside. North side is the biggest hail, and this is going to be quarter, golf ball, tennis ball, baseball size hail running from the Canadian River up to Norman. 
you folks in Norman, um, I think you're going to get trashed. I think you're going to get trashed with big hail coming into Norman. And there it is. Radar showing and confirming. We have confirmation from people in the, on the ground, viewers, uh, larger than tennis ball. And Andrew, if you get any pictures of any of that, uh, just dump it and holler. Okay. Was that? Oh, is that, oh, really? Too many pictures? Okay. All right, so uh, this is big hail. This is tennis ball to baseball size hail. This is going to be another multi-million dollar hail storm uh, for Norman, South Norman, West Norman, back there between there and Blanchard, and also points to the south. Big, big hail. Big, big hail. Okay. Um, I tell you what, let's go to Marty Logan's shot. Uh, Justin, where's Marty right now? Justin? He's uh, west of Choctaw. Okay, he's on that little cell over there. Yes. Let's, let's, Marty's down in the metro. Let's get an update from Marty. And uh, he's, okay, he's coming in from the backside. Marty, give us an update as you move your way through Choctaw there. Circulation there off to your east. You're right there looking right at it. Go ahead, give us an update. 23rd is where I am right now. And uh, appears to me that we do have rotation. I'm looking at it's going to be north of me, but also another area right almost over the road right now. So there's two areas to keep an eye on. This one to the north was rotating. Uh, by the way, the lights were flashing red back there, so we've already got a power glitch. We're going to stay on this. the same one that Tom and Val are following, so we'll stay with it. Back to you. Yeah, great job. And, again, this is the same storm that did produce the tornado uh, a little bit earlier. Val had it live right here on News 9. By the way, control room, if we could get that uh, flip back around, that would be great. We'll show that again. Edit that little small little funnel we had. We had the debris. It didn't last very long, but just put that back to back to back to back to back. All right, so uh, there's Marty going down Highway 62. He's about three miles. Oh, he's in Tacoma Park. That's Tacoma Park right there. And uh, he's going to Choctaw. The hook's going to be just to his right. Okay, let's go to the ground again. Let's go to Tom Pastrano. And Tom is just south of Choctaw, about four miles. Tom, I still see, I still see upper left rotating from left to right. What do you think? You're in Choctaw, and uh, yeah, are you at? Are you on the Hawassi? What road are you on right now? North South. David, I'm on Choctaw on Southeast 15th Street. I have seen several funnels halfway to the ground. There's actually three locations of rotation. The other two are occluded off to the west, but this is the real one, and it's been trying and trying. But so far, it just hasn't done anything yet. But like I said, I had that funnel. It's a true funnel, like I saw earlier in Newcastle, halfway to the ground. And, yeah, there you can see it again. There's rapid rising motion. It's really trying hard. Really going to have to watch this on the northeast side of Choctaw. Back to you. Yeah, no doubt about it. So he's at Choctaw, Choctaw Road, southeast 15th. What, Justin, go ahead. Okay, let's go back to Brandon now. Possible tornado. Let's go back to Brandon. Folks, we've got to watch the Choctaw. That's starting to spin. Look how fast that's spinning. Go ahead, Brandon. It's going to be right behind okay, the David, power pole. David, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, David. I'm, I'm, I'm about 90% sure that we most likely have a tornado on the ground just by looking at the rain curtains wrapping around this entire circulation. It's going to be right over the top of these trees. You can probably barely make out what looks appears to be a funnel as I zoom in. I can't see it all the way condensated because of the trees. But just by the violent, I mean, not violent, but the amount of motion that's in these clouds with these rain curtains is pretty tremendous right now. And as I pan a little bit to the right, you can see it comes all the way and then it gets pulled back in. And right there appears to be a funnel right in the middle of the shot. It, I mean, I'm due to the northeast of it as it's tracking basically straight at me right now. I'm, I'm more than confident saying this is a tornado on the ground. If you live in coal, now is the time to get underground. It is. This tornado can sit. This circulation continues oh, to strengthen. There is pretty rapid, rapid rotation with these rain curtains, David. This right. may be a fairly significant tornado. It is. It is. A, it is a, it's now becoming a strong tornado. It's right here. It's wrapped in rain. There's the right side of the tornado, the left side. Left side. See how the rain curtains are being slung back to the right? Well, they're doing this. On the back side, they're going back into it. It's right here. It's, yeah, as we said that earlier, coal, coal, coal. 
Large tornado, at least a strong tornado on the ground right now. Let's go to Velocity Data. Keep his shot up. It's wrapped in rain, which means it's more dangerous and potentially more deadly. There's your tornado. Let's see. Is it going to hit coal? Yep, it's going to coal. What's going on with this one? It's going to coal. Hey, Greg, yeah. tell, tell uh, Jim tornado's on the ground coming into coal. And David, here's, this is a horrible it's, sight. Okay, folks, this is a violent tornado, at least a strong tornado. Let's word that carefully. It's at least a strong tornado. There's your debris. There's your debris debris right there. signature now telling us the radar saying, yes, we have debris lofted. You don't get that out of an EF0 and most times not an EF1 to get debris this high. Yeah, Jeremy's got a good shot. Okay, let's go back to Jeremy Carter here. Let's go back to Jeremy. Let's take his shot. Control room. You folks in coal, lowest level, center part of the house. Go now. There's the tornado on the ground coming at a coal. It's wrapped in rain. It's a potentially deadly tornado, folks. Please take this seriously. If you live in coal, if you live in Goldsby, and eventually maybe Washington, maybe north of Washington a bit. Jeremy, give us an update. There's a big tornado in there. Take it. Go. Yeah, David, I could, I could see clearly that this tornado was huge. Man, there are a lot of people, a lot of homes in this area. Just, this area is just littered with homes. Definitely tornado precautions. If you live in coal, points east, we're talking about Washington running into northern Purcell area. This thing's kind of had a track, David, back towards the southeast, and you can see it very clear. Okay, all right, great job, Jeremy. Let's go back to Brandon now. Brandon, take it. You're hot. Strong tornado. There's the tornado the left side. There's the right side. Folks, that is a strong tornado. That's going to be at least an EF2. Going to be at least an EF2, maybe an EF3 tornado. It's got debris 20,000 feet up in the air. That's going to be an EF2, at least an EF2, probably an EF3. Brandon, take it. You're hot. Here we go. Okay, hey, I got a big tornado on the ground just to my southwest, probably a quarter to a half a mile. Uh, moving rapidly at me. I'm going to have to reposition. I got major debris in the air, David. I got to get out of the way. Um, but we had major debris in the air. We could see parts of roofs and um, major tree debris all up in the air. Um, like I said, that tornado was definitely on the ground. It looked like a big elephant truck. Right now, we're probably taking 75 mile an hour in flips out of the east as this thing. Hey, okay. All right. This yeah. is going to be a significant tornado in coal, David. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's going to coal and um, is he in coal right now? Yes, he's right in coal. No, he's east of, no. Oh, you're right. He is in coal. My bad. Okay, let's go back to Jim Gardner, and uh, he's in coal, okay? You folks in coal, listen to me. If you know somebody, there's a tornado. Go ahead, take it, Jim. Tornado on the ground. Well, that's right, David. Right now, I'm sitting over Washington, shooting back into that tornado. You can see it right there. We saw the wrapping rain curtains in the front. We really couldn't get a good visual on it. But right now I'm sitting right over the top of Washington, shooting back to the west. It's no more than maybe a mile and a half from me. And you can see the rain curtains going around this thing. But this thing has been on the ground for a while. It is massive. It is wide, David. I'm not sure if that's the only one in there. I just had a lightning strike right down my door there. That's all right. But, uh, David, you're just, it, it's massive. If we can pull back uh, a little bit here, you can see there's the whole the whole wall cloud right there, David, and you can see it right there at the bottom. That whole thing is spinning. And now we're getting a little better look at it here, and you can see it on the ground right there, David. I mean, it's a massive tornado. And like I said, I'm right over the top of Washington, shooting back to the west. I'm probably about a mile and a half away from it, and his tracking looks to me like maybe to the north, northeast right now. But it's just a massive tornado, David. Yeah, uh, Jim, no doubt about it. It's a strong tornado, at least an EF2, possibly an EF3. We have debris lofted nearly 20,000 feet up. Let's go back to Lynx 1. Keep Jim shot up. Keep Jim shot up. And then we're going to check back in with the trackers. Let's go back to Lynx 1. Coal, coal. Look at the donut hole over coal. We have it now coming into the city of coal. Please take shelter. Please go to your safe spot in coal. Lowest level, center part of the house. It's almost too late. It's almost too late. If you live in coal or east of coal, this is debris in the air. That's debris. This is reflectivity. There's a donut hole. There's velocity. It's right over you. And there's a donut hole right over coal. It doesn't get any, any easier than that. Let's go back out in the field now. Let's go to Brandon Pennell. Brandon, there's a tornado. The rain's cleared out. It's more visible than what it was. Large tornado. It's going to be an eighth of a mile wide. Eighth of a mile, maybe a quarter of a mile wide tornado doing damage, debris in the air, debris. And that's going to be at least an EF2, if not an EF3 tornado. Take it. Go ahead, Brandon. 
Okay, David. So, hey, David. So, okay, we've came east out of coal probably one to two miles. I believe it missed coal on the south side of Highway 74, which is good. But I can tell you, as we came east, there was a significant amount of debris in the air. You know, I don't know if it was houses or barns and, I mean, obviously a bunch of trees. But this tornado continue, it's trying to get wrapped in rain again. But at one time, I believe it was probably at least a quarter of a mile wide. And as we pulled up here at this location that we're looking back to the um, almost due west, you can hear the roar. And we still have inflow winds 60, 70 miles an hour feeding back into this tornado. It's gotten completely rain wrapped again, so it's obscured. So you're not going to see it coming. If you live on 74 headed towards I-35, you need to take this extremely serious. This was a strong tornado if it's not still a strong tornado, David. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job, Brandon. And uh, that, folks, is a significant tornado. A couple things that are scary about this. It's wrapped in rain. There's the left side of the tornado. There's the right side of the tornado. And, uh, yeah, it is on the ground doing damage as I speak. Okay. Let's go back to Jim Gardner up top. Let's see what it looks like from the air again. Jim Gardner is there. You folks in, in coal, it might have gone just to your south. I tell, it's, I, if, if I live in coal, I'm in the hole, okay? I'm just being honest with you. I'm staying low and I'm staying down to this thing I know has moved by. If you live in or east or southeast of coal, lowest level, center part of the house, you got to go now. You got to get the kids. You got to get your friends. You got to go now. You got to get to that safe spot. Jim Gardner, tornado still on the ground. Take it. It's yours. Yeah. Oh, yeah, David. It is. It, it's, it's big. It is big. We are on Highway 24, which turns into 74, a little further to my north here. And the crossroads going to be uh, 250th Street. But it is a massive tornado, David, right now. As we pull back here, I'm going to have to roll around here for a second and get away from this thing because it, I just got so much inflow. I'm really fighting against it to stay away from it. But there is a shot. And if we can uh, kind of darken that up, Rich, in the front, you can see the rain curtains. If we go in on the front of it where it's real kind of kind of try to darken that up a little bit, you can see those rain curtains wrapping around this big tornado, and it is tracking along here. It is definitely violent, and it is getting bigger, David. You can see the very front of it right there, but we have power flashes going off on the ground right before you gave, came to me. But as we pull back real slow, you can see just how big that tornado is in there, David. And it has continued to stay on the ground yeah. here. I'm going to pitch it back to you. I'm going to have to roll out of here just a little bit and get a little bit of distance here, David. We'll get right back to you. Okay. All right, great, Jim. So this is going to be, folks, now listen to me here. Um, this is going to be uh, down to the southwest. This is McLean County. This is southeast of Blanchard. This is on and just south of the small community of Cole. But this is really what we can consider the metro area. The South Metro, because so many people commute from there into the city, vice versa. There's the tornado right there. And we have another area of circulation back in the city we're concerned about. But that is the left side of the tornado. That is the right side of the tornado. And uh, we were jumping up and down. News 9, tornado warning, and it continues on the ground. Folks, that's a strong tornado. No doubt about it. All right, what does Jeremy have? Let's go back to Jeremy. Let's bring his shot in. There's the tornado from Jim. Okay, wow, look at that. Okay, so uh, this is the right side. There's the tornado. It's right here. It's right there, and it's spinning. Okay, let's go back to uh, Jeremy and get an update from Jeremy Carter. Uh, Jeremy, what do you think? I'm looking at your GPS. Give me your exact location. Go ahead, Jeremy. All right, I'm in the town of Washington just west of, of the town of Washington where 24 turns back to the south. And you can see, you can tell clearly, you can't see the tornado all the way right now, but you can tell clearly that there is a tornado on the ground and doing damage. And David, there are a ton of houses throughout this countryside. I can't even explain to the people how important it is. Take shelter, Washington Goldsby, it's coming your way. Back to you, David. Okay, all right, nice job. And uh, this is the tornado, it's wrapped in rain. We can see it um, from Gardner because of the sunlight behind it. Let's go back to Lynx One. And uh, look at shear rate, look at this, look at max rate on, on uh, Lynx One. There's your tornado. If it missed coal, somebody down there is praying hard, 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 because I don't see how it did. And David? If it did, it was just on the south sides of town. Go ahead, Justin. The Washington Mesonet, some seven miles southeast of where the tornado is, reported a southeast wind at 50. Okay. Here, last three or four minutes. Yeah, so it's so a it, lot of inflow coming in with damaging winds outside of that apparent tornado. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing's just punched a hole in the atmosphere and everything around this storm is being sucked in and up. It's making, it's creating its own environment. Okay, so there's the tornado. 
This is State Highway 74B. Okay, laps this real quick. Okay. Remember, and again, tornadoes wobble. If you're thinking, how did it miss coal? Because they wobble like an eye of a hurricane. Remember, the tornado is not five miles wide. It's a quarter of a mile wide. But it's going right down. It's, it's really pretty much going down 74. B, there's a chance it lifts a little bit to the north and goes to Goldsby. You folks in Goldsby, tornado safe spot, go now. If you live in Goldsby to the south, you got to get to your shelter. There's Jim's location. There's Jeremy. Uh, Brandon is actually right here. He's out ahead of it running for his life, going down 74B right now. And I'm looking at Brandon's shot here, trying to find it, trying to see it up top. Okay, so tornado warning now. Okay, big tornado, at least a... I'm, I'm guessing just what I've seen, done this a while, quarter of a mile wide. We're talking about that's going to be a, an EF2, low end, maybe an EF3. I, I know for sure an EF2, okay, just because of the, the height of how high that debris was being lofted in the sky. Uh, there's max rotation. Uh, there's velocity data. It is a little bit sad. Oh, it's, see that wobble? Wow, you folks in coal, man, somebody is living right. It was moving to coal and it did a little bit of a wobble. Keep praying. All right, so there it goes, still on and south of Highway 74. If you live on Highway 74B or south of 74B, you gotta go to your safe spot, you gotta go now. You're about out of time, tornado continues on the ground. Okay, let's go to Jim Gardner, look at the tornado from Jim. Uh, Jim, big tornado, rain wrapped in around it, but from your perspective, we can see the tornado, the dark spot on the left. Jim's going to bring himself around here. He'll bring the camera around. And uh, we'll get a shot of this from Jim uh, coming up. What you got? Okay, from, uh, from small debris. Okay, all right. Well, let's make sure he's, yeah. Okay, Jim's going to be backing out of the shot. He's getting uh, some debris. Okay. All right, uh, uh, let's go back to links one control room and uh, back to links one and okay so this is a big supercell I want to point out we have other storms yes. we got to watch down here by Lawton that storm is it severe now too it it's, should be I'll it turn, should I turned the warning off because they were fine. all severe but okay yes, yeah these are all severe yes. could, these could produce tornadoes as well if you live in Marlow Duncan we got to watch this Marlow Duncan big hail coming for sure you might get a tornado remember con conditions are more favorable are more favorable for a tornado for the next couple of hours okay but here in Oklahoma City the big show is south of us we did have the one tornado earlier that Val had live on News 9 and those storms are moving into Lincoln County let's do a quick brush by let's get up here okay. let's go to Perry real quick uh, now moving in on Red Rock it's not tornadic it's producing some quarters golf balls maybe even some tennis balls for sure golf balls headed to Red Rock not tornadic but expect damaging wind damaging hail wind 60 to 70 Okay, let's go down the line here. We'll just keep jumping down the line. Other non-severe storms up near Mulhall and Guthrie. Watching those. Uh, Edmund storm has weakened a lot. The hook is still going on. It is no longer tornadic. It is still spinning. Bow's there. There's the hook. Still means business. And on sheer rate, that thing is still, yeah, it's yeah. still spinning. Barty's right there. Tom's right there. Yeah, no doubt about it. Okay, let's go to, uh, let's go to Val Caster and bring him in. Val, you're right there by the hook. There's the hook. This is going to be... Uh, tennis ball to baseball size hill. Uh, there's your wall cloud, just nothing on the ground right now, which is good. Give us an update on that. Go ahead. So, yeah, Greg. David, so this thing continues. It, it gets better organized and it gets less organized. Right now, it appears to be on an uptick as far as getting organized. It does have, you know, at times, fairly strong rotation, uh, but we haven't seen anything close to doing a tornado uh, since it did the last tornado, uh, probably in the last goes up and it goes down right now it appears to be going up just a little back to you okay all right great job val so val is in the east oklahoma city on the east oklahoma city storm let's go back to that on links one and here's what that looks like so there's val area of spin right here there's horseshoe lake and uh, this is where the circulation is with that but it's not as strong not as tight tom's there val's there big hail up to 122nd and luther road up to memorial road Let's go a little farther north here. And this is all headed to Wellston, Chandler. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and get ready. This is going to be, well, it's almost turning right again. 
Okay, so here we have big, big hail here moving east now. That's going to be um, east Oklahoma County. Tennis balls up to tennis balls. Lots of golf balls in that, okay? So that storm did produce a tornado earlier. Okay, so let's get back down to what's coming back into the metro here. Not severe. Um, it is. Yeah, it's severe. Yeah, okay. Uh, Going to have more hail coming back in Oklahoma City. Lillard Park, Will Rogers. Not tornadic. More rain. More hail. Quarters. Golf balls. Right? That's going to be headed towards downtown. That storm is getting stronger right now, headed northeast. Let's drop back south again, and we'll check back in with our trackers. Okay, let's go to Brandon, who's right there. Uh, he is in the lion's den, as we call it. Tornado looks like it's still on the ground. Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, no doubt about it. Large, strong tornado still on the ground. That's what the tornado looks like. So if you think you're going to go out and look at it and see it, you're not. It's going to get dark, and then it's going to get loud, and it's going to hit you. So be smart. Don't do that. If you live along Highway 74 and south, um, the tornado is on the ground. Let's go to Jeremy. Uh, excuse me. Let's go to Brandon Pennell and get an update. Go ahead, Brandon. Okay, David, so we're going to be at the junction of 74B and 74, where it goes north and south. Looking back to the northwest, the tornado appears to me that it has crossed 74B on the north side, tracking more towards the city of Goldsby. Um, I can tell you just from the – it has the same appearance that it had earlier with the rain curtains. I can't confirm that it's on the ground still, but just from the visible of the way the rain curtains are acting, and I've also seen a couple of small funnels – that have worked their way around the outside of these rain shafts while we were waiting to come to you. Um, and you can see just by, as I, as I pan to the right, it just continues to track off to the east-northeast. You can see the amount of turning that's going on as it moves to the east-northeast. So, I'm sorry, we had somebody walk up. Um, so, Gold, Goldsby, if you live in Goldsby, this thing, David, I can tell you right now, just from looking at the structure as we speak, this thing is wrapped in the rain. It's probably still on the ground. It may still be a significant tornado. There is a lot of motion going on. And now we have golf balls to occasional tennis balls falling back out of the sky as this thing continues to track towards I-35. Back to you. Okay. All right. Wow. Tornado on the ground continues. And, folks, that's what it looks like earlier. We, you know, you, we could see it hanging out. Okay. And control room also, if we could get that video edited from when it was earlier, when you could clearly see the tornado from Brandon, from Jeremy, from Jim, those uh, shots, that would be great. Okay, tornado's right back in here, and it's still on the ground. Let's go back to Lynx 1, and oh, it's occluded. Now, look at it, look at it now. Okay, so here's Goldsby. Talked about this earlier. Watch, folks. Go ahead. L look at that. Oh, my gosh. Do you see how fast that happened? Quickly. Okay, so, Justin... Uh, talking to the tracker at the just moment. Just make sure Jeremy knows it's occluded and it's a hard left. Okay. It's a hard left. Well, I mean, folks. Uh, Two and a half miles to the west of Goldsby. Yeah, but if I'm in Goldsby, I'm going to my safe spot. But this tornado is on the ground. It's a strong tornado. Look at the curve. I'm going to watch my finger here. Brandon has it on the okay. ground right now, David. It's going, it's going almost due north. Okay, let's go back to Brandon. Brandon, it looks like it might be missing Goldsby. It's going to miss town by maybe a mile. And, Brandon, it's lifting almost due north. Towards the tornado the has Casino. changed directions. It's moving due north. Towards the Riverwind Casino. Towards the Riverwind. Okay. Oh, my gosh. It's going right towards the Riverwind Casino. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, David, David, I 100% 100, I 100 confirm that. Um, we just had the RFD come around. 74. I can see the circulation um, through the rain. I know you're probably, it's probably not possible in the shot because it's so dark. Um, I'm going to try to zoom out a little bit, but you can see the right side of the tornado in the shot. Um, it is completely wrapped in rain. Okay. It's wrapped in, um, yeah. it, it's so hard to tell, but I can tell you just from what we've experienced in the last 30 to 45, um, the, the circulation, and every time it really localizes, it really tightens up and produces a strong tornado. Um, I'm trying to get a little bit better visual. It's trying to it's trying to maybe come out of the rain just a hair, just on the west side of Goldsby. Um, we're we're back in south winds now, so it is lifting due, almost due north. David, 100% correct. Um, I'm gonna say the tornado is probably gonna be about one mile to my northwest, David. 
It's still west of 74. Um, it has not crossed 74 um, on the south side of Goldsby yet. So if you live in Goldsby, you still have a couple of minutes, but you need to get there now. Back to you. He is? Okay. All right, great job. Great job there, Brandon. And uh, Brandon has had this tornado and along with uh, Jeremy uh, from start to finish and also with Jim Gardner. All right, so big storm, big tornado, strong tornado. And uh, this thing is, folks, it, it means business, and it's wrapped in rain, okay? Let's go to Lynx 1. Here's what it looks like on radar. You can clearly see where the tornado is. And uh, remember, part of it has swung to the north right in here, right? And uh, we have a new area of spin developing to the south. So uh, this is the tornado here, right here. Well, I, I just barely miss. So Miss Cole, Miss Goldsby, and... It's going to uh, Riverwind Casino, which is at Highway 9. There's a lot down here on the highway now. Hotels, we have loves, you name it. This is kind of a little area there, kind of almost like a little city with all kinds of stuff going on here. So uh, Riverwind Casino, if you know anybody at the casino right now, uh, notify them, tell them. I do not know what their safety precautions are at the casino. I doubt there's an underground shelter or an above-ground shelter for everybody, okay? I know. Now she's in Washington. Yeah, that's the, that, the new mezzo is forming right now. Yeah, she's in Washington. Okay, so we have the old mesocyclone, which is here, the tornado. Then we have the new mesocyclone, which is west of Jeremy. What's it look like in Jeremy's shot? Justin, when you get Jeremy lined up and he gets turned around, uh, have him give me a shot. I want to talk to him. Okay, um, there's the tornado. Let's go ahead and zoom on in. You folks, if, if you know anybody that's in Riverwind Casino, Wow, folks, this is serious. Okay, this is Western Avenue, strong tornado on the ground, lifting due north. Uh, that's going to be, once again, Western Avenue right here. And what is this going to be right here? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Northwest 24th. Okay, you're right. Northwest 24th, Northwest 24th, and Western Avenue. There's your tornado doing damage right now. This is coming into the south sides of Norman. All right, there's Riverwind Casino right there just west of I-35 and Highway 9. This is a strong tornado. Let's go back to, let's go back to debris detector. Let yeah. me show you the debris. There we go. And, oh, that's bad. Yes. That's so bad. Okay, can we do a uh, RHI on that? Oh, there is a track on the debris. Okay, we'll do that. You got to go and do north, right? Pretty much, yes. Okay, uh, maybe if we can get an RHI, we don't have to. But, folks, this is the tornado. This is the debris. It's now crossing 310. Okay, Street 310. Um, here's Norman. This is going to come into Southwest Norman. Right now, it's lifting due north. It's going to split the uprights just to the east of Western and 24th Street. 24th Street and Highway 9 and Western. It's crossing 310. And there, right here, there's your tornado. What's Max Rot look like? Anything? Okay. It's yeah. just, it's slightly behind. And that's, this is our live right here. That's our live. This is the tornado right here. It's right here. Right here. This is our live radar. Okay. Tornado. Big tornado. It's been on the ground now, what, 10? 10 miles? Yeah, since southwest of coal. So, yeah, quite a while here. Okay, so there's your tornado. If you're, if you're in Riverwind Casino right now, you know somebody that, that's there that's gambling like they're going to win it all? You need to call them, text them, let them know there's a tornado that's going to go on Riverwind Casino or just west. We hope it goes just west, but that means it's going to impact somebody else, but not like the numbers, the mass numbers that are in the casino. Okay, there's a tornado. It's now less than a mile away from Riverwind Casino. That's about as scary as it gets. And on the south side there that's redeveloping on New Mezzo where Jeremy is. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, that's the same area we've been talking about, and it, it, I mean, is, is that going to take over? Yeah, probably. But right now, it's, it's, it's not taking over fast enough. Okay, let's go to Jeremy Carter. He's a little farther south, and uh, our GPSs aren't on, are they? Oh, they're saying, okay, yeah, they are. Okay, Jeremy, new mesocyclone, your old tornado's still on the ground. Target right now is Riverwind Casino or just west, maybe just maybe a quarter of a mile. We'll see. But go ahead, Jeremy. Give me an update. David, we got another. We got another area of rapidly rotating rain curtains. I have seen multiple funnels spinning out, and this is outside of the tornado warning. I'm talking about West Purcell, 
and it, it's like imminent tornado. I have seen multiple touchdowns right here. Where I'm sitting on 74. Just, just it's about Johnson Road. Okay. Yep. Okay. So this is going to be. Let's do this. Let's do this now. Only on News Nine. News Nine. Tornado warning. Jeremy's there. Velocity data says that he has rapidly rotating rain curtains. He has a couple of funnels. And we're not going to mess around with this. This is going to be a News 9 tornado warning now for you folks in Slaughterville. Take shelter. Do it now. I know there's no official tornado warning in effect for you. And okay. But that's why we're doing what we're doing. Tornado warning once again for you folks down to the south of the northern storm. Let's go back to Lynx 1. Jeremy will get back in position. This, that's for this right here. Brandon. Tornado here going to Slaughterville. Okay, let's go back to Brandon. And uh, did, you, did you say that? Okay, Brandon. let's go back to Brandon now and uh, get an update from Brandon. What's that circulation? Brandon, it's still wrapped in rain. Um, it's lifting north. Go ahead, give us an update. It's weakening. It looks like it might be weakening now. Brandon Pennell. Okay, let's come back to uh, Lynx. One, and let's look at velocity data at both of these areas of spin. Okay, let's take a look at this now. Let's go back. And, uh, okay, here's the other tornado right here. Let's go back to this. Let's jump back in here for a second. Lynx one. And uh, there's the tornado. All right, there's Riverwind Casino. Uh, it's moving north now. It's slowed down. Let's go to CC. There's velocity. There's your tornado on the ground. And go ahead and lapse that. Let's see what it's doing on laps. We have the one main area. Okay. Um, it has weakened. Yes. But still, I think it's still on the ground. Gosh, there's big hail down here, too. There's the latest scan. Okay, there's the latest. Right here. Tornado's right here. It's coming up. Now it's going to cross Highway 9. Okay, there's Northwest 24th Street. There's Western. This is Highway 9. If your home is in here, <clears throat> safe spot, lowest level, go, go, go. You got to go now. This is Southwest Norman. Norman's just getting hammered with big hail. And then they're getting a tornado on the southwest side of town. Okay, this tornado is weakening, though, at least for now. Yes, okay. the latest. Okay, let's just jump south. There's a tornado. It has weakened. It continues to weaken. It might not cross Highway 9. Look yes. at it. Just, gosh, 10 minutes ago. Man, oh, man. Okay, let's come back south to where Jeremy is. Tornado does continue. Tornado warning does right continue. Uh, okay, let's go to Jeremy. Well, he doesn't have a shot up yet. Have him get back in position here. Have him, have him give me a shot. It's crossing right in front of Brandon right now. Okay, let's go back to Brandon. Uh, 35. Let's go back to Brandon. Take Brandon's shot. If he can hear me, let's take it. Let's go. Brandon, is he on Highway 9? Where's Brandon right now? He's on 35. He's on 35. Okay, yeah. Okay, take it, Brandon. Go ahead. Still no Brandon. I don't know. Um, okay, well, he's, he's not up. Let's get an engineer in here. We'll get that figured out. Okay, let's go back to it here. Back to Lynx 1. And uh, Lynx 1 control room. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Riverwind Casino. And this is a casino. This is the tornado. What's left of it? Everyone's in the shelter at the casino. Everyone's in the shelter at the casino. That's good to hear. That's smart. Hopefully it'll be dying out to the west, the southwest of the casino here. Right now it's about a half mile. It occluded even more. It was, it was headed towards the casino and it, and it did one of these. Crazy. Yeah, jogged back to the west a little bit. Yeah. Just a bit. And it's a mile west-southwest of the Riverwind Casino. Missed it by that much. Okay, um, and some of our radio partners here, we can pop that up real quick. Some of our radar uh, radio partners here at News 9. And uh, we're streaming on all of these stations right now, obviously across the state, and a lot of this, you know, right here in the metro. So pick out your favorite station, whatever you want, whatever you got, and tune us in and turn us on. Okay, let's go back to it. Links one and yep. and I want to show you this hail core again coming <coughs> into Oklahoma City. Wow, golly, folks! Another crippling hailstorm for Oklahoma City. Lillard Park um, over to downtown. Uh, there's Capitol Hill Elementary School, Southwest Integris. This is all big hail, damaging hail, not a tornado threat, but big hail. I don't know how many hailstorms we've had today. I've lost count. But this is coming into the southwest metro. Could this produce a tornado? It could. It could start to develop a deeper mesocyclone. It already has one in it. We'll keep an eye on that. But it's going to go right across downtown Oklahoma City, over OU Medical Center, 
From there, it's going to head northeast up towards the zoo, Midwest City again, uh, Choctaw. You're going to get it. It's coming right here. Another big hail storm. There's OCCC. This is big hail in here. Big hail, lots of rain, big hail. Okay, let's jump back south now. Let's talk about the tornado. Tornado warning continues. Big monster storm down here. And Jeremy's in Purcell, and there's people driving around where Jeremy believes there's a tornado that's very imminent right there. Okay. So he was just wanting me to tell, okay. say something. Hey, did, did we get an engineer in here to figure out Brandon? Yeah, Brandon. Is Brandon good? Okay. All right. Is Brand okay? Is is Jeremy is? Both Jeremy and Brandon are. Okay. Let's go back to Jeremy now. Let's get an update. Jeremy's on the new mesocyclone. Tornado warning just on the north sides of Purcell. If you live in or north of Purcell, safe spot. Do it. Go now. If you live north of Purcell, especially, the tornado is wrapped in rain. Go ahead, Jeremy. Give us an update. Take it. Yeah, David. I want to say something about this. I'm talking North Purcell, Noble, Slaughterville. You name it. Uh, I was watching emergency vehicles heading out going north, and I definitely seen multiple touchdown, multiple touchdowns, and I mean, really incredible wrapping rain curtains just in there to my north. So the emergency vehicles kept going north. It's like, hey, this storm is dangerous. You really can't see far. We need to really be careful uh, right now because this thing is flat out. Mean, it, it means business, David. Uh, that's all. Back to you. Yeah. Okay. So Jeremy is in Purcell, and uh, this is going to be. Uh, north of Purcell, but but not very far. Okay, um, let's get to it here, and let's go back to Lynx 1. And Hank doesn't have a shot, but he's been getting some large hail there in Slaughterville. Okay, yeah. Well, here's the tornado, and uh, Hank's right here. What does Hank's shot look like? He's, he's trying to reset it, but he wanted you to go to him because he's going to talk about that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go to Hank. Yeah, absolutely. Hank, great job today. Circulation out just to your west. Wow, Hank, it is really, really ramped up. Hank, it looks like it's on the ground right now. David, I, I'm, Patty is resetting uh, the equipment right now. Uh, we have taken multiple lightning strikes, and that may have something to do with it. Anyway, I'm sitting in Slaughterville right now, looking just to the northwest. Um, where am I at? I'm at the quick stop at the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office, looking just to the northwest. And, David, there is this huge core that is probably a mile-wide core that I can see wrapping rain curtains on both sides go, of it. Mark. So I'm not, I'm not saying there's a mile-wide tornado, but I'm saying there has to be a tornado inside this mile-wide of wrapping rain curtains that's going just to the north of Slaughterville. It's going right in between Noble and Slaughterville. It's probably going to go over like Thunder Valley Dragway uh, is probably where it's going to go. But so Jeremy was exactly right. Traffic coming north out of Purcell, out of Slaughterville. Do not drive north out of Slaughterville or Purcell at the moment. It's crossed I-35, and it's almost due north, just a little northwest of Slaughterville. Uh, Patty just reset the equipment. I don't know if the shots come up, uh, but if you see it, you're going to see this huge precip core that is, that is a monster core. I cannot help but believe there is a tornado in the, on the ground inside these wrapping rain cores, David. Back to you. There absolutely has to be, and uh, shear rate supports it. You're telling me that you think there is, and let's go to CC. Let's see what that has out of this, and this is where the tornado is. This is east of I-35. Folks, I, if it's not on the ground, it's going to be on the ground shortly. There's the tornado. If you live in Slaughterville or north of Slaughterville, go to your safe spot, lowest level, center part of the, of the house. And this storm is trying to lift to the north, but then it's back to the east. Slaughterville, if you live in Slaughterville or up to 280th Street right here, go now. You got to go now. You don't have very long. Like, I mean, you've got minutes, okay? Center part of the house, lowest level, go to your safe spot, tornado warning, Slaughterville North. The tornado is right here inside this ball. It's right here. It's crossed I-35, it went across I-35, and the tornado is going to be on the ground. I don't see how it's not on the ground right now. Everything else supports it being on the ground. Okay, so there's Slaughterville. All right, so from there, um, it's going to, let's see, uh, McKinneyville, Etowah. This is all big hail in here, I want to point out. McGuire, 
Big hail. This is going to be golf ball. Let's back out of this just a second. Kind of give everybody home and show them the size of the storm. Um, but yeah, this is big hail. Now in Norman, Lloyd Noble, South Norman, uh, this is going to Lake Thunderbird. The hail is down Highway 9, Etowah, Macomb, big hail. Radar is pointing out. We've got tennis balls to baseball size hail here. Also in the South Metro again, baseball size hail in the south sides of Oklahoma City. Not a tornado threat there, but baseball size hail. Any hook developing? I don't hear your audio. It's not organized north of Moore. It's, it's okay. been getting inflow. It tries to look like it's developing a hook. It does not. Yeah. Problem is, it's got a yes. monster. It's got a monster south of it, yes. probably. So impacting the inflow into that, which is good. The big storm to the south, even though it's producing tornadoes, is actually saving Oklahoma City from possibly getting yet another tornado. We have one earlier, all right? Uh, look at the hail now, folks. Wow, it's over the same areas. Golf ball, tennis ball, baseball size hail happening right now running from southwest integris fillmore elementary school over to oak ridge elementary school coming in on dell city just an incredible next hailstorm in line and guys it's going to try to head off to the east towards midwest city matter of fact i know it is it's going to try to get tinker again <clears throat> so wow big big hailstorm Devastating, crippling, multi-million dollar hailstorm. This is one of several we've had today. Okay, so let's drop. Uh, okay, so we have that cell in Oklahoma City. What's the Lincoln County storm look like? Nothing tornadic. Uh, small storm east of Meridian, not severe. A little bit of hail in that. That's coming up, though. That might become severe as it heads towards Tryon. Uh, this cell near Wellston, supercell. This did produce a tornado earlier, and uh, that's going to be between Luther and Wellston, the hook's right there. Wall cloud on that. Uh, that's going to Chandler. And uh, that's going to keep heading off to the east-northeast towards Stroud and Shamrock and Bristow. Other severe storm up north. Uh, another storm came right into Stillwater. Hail court right over Lake Blackwell and Lake McMurtry. Went right over the lakes. Uh, that's going to Morrison. Going to have golf balls and or larger hail there. And then another severe storm uh, north of Burbank. Went right to the west of Burbank there. Some pretty good hail there. So the whole line uh, has lit up. Okay, but notice, okay, ooh, gosh. Yes. Look at the hook on that. Okay, Marlo, 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 Marlo. Big hook to your west. This could, that, this is almost tornadic. Man, look at the screaming eagle on that. Oh, my goodness. What's velocity day to look like out of this? Yeah, a little place. Just starting. Right there it is. North of Highway, uh, Pumpkin Center is right here. Yes, there it is. Okay, so there's Lawton, there's Pumpkin Center, there's Shear Rate, there's your spin. If you live in Marlowe, start paying attention. You're probably going to get a tornado out, or you're going to try to get a tornado. I know we don't want to try, but you're going to get something out of this besides wind and hail. L look at the V-notch. Look at that screaming eagle, right? There's the beak, there's your wings, and yeah, big, big, tells me there's a big updraft that's spinning, that air is flowing around that updraft, and we're getting the big V-notch. That is an impressive storm. Not near as big as the storm we have to the north, but Marlow, Bailey, Bray, Purdy, eventually Elmore City, eventually Paul's Valley. Supercell, rotating, could produce a tornado at any time. Okay, let's come back to the monster storm. And I just want to just back out of this one more time, Lace. I'm going to show the folks at home. Um, come back to the local radar. Just how big this storm is compared to the other storms. Yeah, see the difference in size? Look at the difference. Those two storms together aren't as big as that storm. Man, is that a new hook developing? Uh, that is, yes. That, is that a new storm going up? New storm? Let's see. Yes, that is a new storm that just went up. Okay. All right. And we're going to, okay. I, I, Justin, let's get, let's get some guys headed southwest. New storm going up. Okay. And this is a concern. Uh, uh, we got, also, we got to watch out for some flooding developing. How much rain have we had down here? Anything? Those numbers crazy, Lace? Uh, I'll take a look. I have not. Okay. I can promise you there's okay. going to be several inches. Yeah. So here's, here's South Oklahoma City. Big hail. See the new storm going up? A little bit of a hook developing on that. So that is a problem. And that's going to be lifting off to the northeast. So more severe weather, more big hail. Southern, southwestern Oklahoma City now up to tennis balls running from Will Rogers to downtown Oklahoma City, eventually south of downtown on this first storm, over to Dell City, 
Midwest City. If you didn't get hammered the first time with the big storm, the other two big storms, you're going to get it with this one again. All right, big hail now just west of Valley Brook, about ready to cross I-35. Boy, that's a big hail core. That's, that's tennis balls. Folks, that is a major, devastating, multi-million dollar hailstorm. South Oklahoma City, the second or third of the day. Oh my gosh. Yes, yeah, so they're on the hail swath and it paints the story there. The insurance adjusters are going to be running amok tomorrow. Okay, so you can see the hail tracks with these. Yeah, lots of hail tracks, lots of hail. All right, let's get back south now. Let's talk about the tornado warning. Big hook, big supercell, big rotating thunderstorm. This is all hail and rain in here. Circulation now is just north of Slaughterville. And let's watch it come in here. There's your circulation right there. It's occluded. It's lifting a little farther north now, west of McGuire. What does shear rate look like? Has it weakened? It has weakened. Definitely not as strong. Okay. Shear rate still says we have many things going for it. Area of shear, you area of spin. Just gone northwest of Slaughterville. Yeah, just barely missed Slaughterville. I mean, yeah. By a mile, half mile, Slaughterville. If I live in McGuire, I'm going to my safe spot. If I live in Needmore, little community over here, I'm going to my safe spot. And once again, uh, yes, it has weakened. But I'll say this, though, there is going to be some attenuation, too. Yeah, it, I mean, it's still spin like crazy. Look at it on reflectivity. Yeah, it's still there. What does TDWR uh, show? That's it. And it still shows circulation. And maybe now it's kind of southeast of Noble. Yeah, damaging winds all through here. You folks in Noble, um, just to the north and northwest of the mesocyclone, you're going to get a rip in north and northwest wind, 60, 70, 80 miles per hour. You might not get a tornado. There might not be a tornado in here now, uh, but it's close. What does CC look like? Anything ever pop up with that? Not when it was to the west of Slaughterville. Hang on. And then it did. Right here. So we'll see. That's not. It's in, it's, it's in the right spot. It's in the right spot, but I'm with you. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no matter what, folks in Noble over towards McGuire, yeah. anyone between Noble and Slaughterville, this thing could easily be okay. on the yeah. ground, and it's close. Yeah, it's it's too close. I mean, uh, we're we're splitting hairs here. Right. I mean, it's just yeah. So if no Slaughterville north of town up to McGuire, we'll take it as far back west as Noble, safe spot, tornado safe spot, lowest level, center part of the house, get out of the mobile home. And that's tough to do when you've got gargantuan hail falling on your head of tennis to baseball size hail like we have over in Needmore, back up to uh, East Post Road, and then from there all the way back um, to the uh, medical center. And uh, there's Noble. And on the north sides of Noble, big, big hail here. Okay, so let's back out of this. What's going on in Norman? A lot of folks in Norman. Kids are still in school. Um, let's come back to the north here. Let's just talk about Norman real quick. See if the yeah, hail's falling there. On uh, Lynx. Are you on Lynx 4? Uh, yes. Okay. I was, I was updating the rain on Lynx 2. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, you got it finished? Yep, it's done. Okay. Come back up here. I'm just, uh, Norman, rain coming in. Nothing crazy going to normal, uh, Norman except rain. And some hail. And what, what, what do hail sizes here show? Golf balls? What do we have? Quarters? Golf okay. balls. Uh, quarters coming back in. Maybe some golf balls. But for sure quarters coming back into OU, campus, Norman. Golf balls are down here, but I guarantee it there's bigger than golf balls down here. There's going to be every bit of golf balls. There's going to be a tennis ball, maybe baseball. Okay, let's go to Lynx 3 control room. And then we'll take a look at that video. We'll take a look at the video next. Let's go to Lynx 3. And uh, Lynx 3 has the uh, rain totals. Lynx 2. Sorry, my bad. Lynx 2. Lynx 2 control room. And uh, over three inches of rain has fallen between uh, Norman and Amber. Over three inches of rain. So that's why we're going to have some flooding down here. I'm sure we already do. Matter of fact, flood warning now in effect from South Oklahoma City down to Moore, Norman. Flood warning in effect there. As, let's go north just a little bit, up in the Edmond area, village, half an inch to an inch of rain, nothing crazy, okay? No flooding up in here. Just We've had just tons of hail. 
All right, let's get back to it. Let's go back down south now. Go back to reflectivity. Okay, let's go to Lynx 1. And Lynx 1 control room. South Metro Big Hail continues here. And this is a uh, big, big storm. Now coming back into Midwest City. Nickels, dimes, quarters, golf ball, maybe tennis ball size. Running from Midwest City back to and just south of Will Rogers. Westmore, southwest Oklahoma City, north of the Orr Family Farm this time. Big hail here. Let's go to that video from earlier, if we can, of the tornadoes. And uh, Hook trying to develop. There's a tornado when it was west of coal. Large tornado on the ground doing damage west of coal. West of coal. Barely missed coal. Made a hard turn. Went around coal. Lifted north. You can see the right side of the tornado. Right here. There's the left side of the tornado. Brandon Pennell was right down in front of this along with Jeremy Carter. We had it live on the air. And let's, Brandon, right now, yes. let's go to Brandon Pennell live. Let's go back to Brandon. That's what it looked like earlier. Brandon, give us an update and your location. Go ahead, take it. Hey, okay, David. So I'm going to be just north of Slaughterville, looking back to the northwest. Um, this thing wrapped up in rain, but you can see right over the top of that house, we just had a significant funnel that looked like it was, I mean, uh, it disappeared behind the house. So that's why I was yelling tornado on the ground, just because the way things have been evolving today. Um, it's still a little bit wrapped in rain. Let me zoom out just a little bit. You can see the whole bowl right there. Well, right to the right of that telephone pole, just as you were coming to me, it consolidated all the way. I mean, if you were recording on me, you'd probably be able to go back and rack it up. But um, there, there was a tornado on the ground probably 45 seconds ago. Um, this thing is continuing to move off to the east, and it's just doing it over and over. It kind of goes through a cycle, and then it puts out a tornado, and it moves off for a, a while. You know, it was significant 30 minutes ago. I'm not saying that it can't still do it again, but this is still a significant lowering north of Slaughterville, moving off to the east. It's probably right, oh, just probably east of uh, Highway 77, no, probably two miles north of Slaughterville, give or take, uh, moving off to the east northeast. It looks like. Back to you. Okay, great job, uh, Brandon. So he's again north of Slaughterville, and uh, he's looking off to his northwest, and he has seen the tornado on the ground. A couple of times in the lightning flashes, it's cycling over and over again. It strengthens and it weakens. It strengthens and it weakens. And when it ramps up, we get a tornado. But it's just a merry-go-round of tornadoes, right? The whole thing's spinning, and you'll get a tornado on one side of the mesocyclone. It'll sit down for maybe 30 seconds or whatever. That lifts. It tightens back up. You get another tornado genesis. You get another one. So that's what we're doing right now. So let me go back to links one. Show you where the tornado is, north of Slaughterville, right there. There's the tornado. And you folks in McGuire, tornado warning for you. And this is going to be east, southeast of Noble. So you folks in Noble, this is east of you. Okay, you're here. You're, you're getting wind and rain and, and hail and all that. You bet. But the tornado threat is right here. It's, uh, what count the miles here? One, two, two and a half miles, three miles to your east, southeast. Okay. So uh, what does velocity data show here, guys? It's still there. It's been kind of broad at times, but it's tightened back up. Yeah. And right now, this is not showing a strong tornado. It's overall, it's a weak tornado. Radar says that. Brandon says that. Shear rate says that. Velocity data says that. Not a strong tornado. And with the storm further southwest near Sterling, had a report of tennis ball size hail with that one as well. Wow. Okay. That's that little soup down there, right? Yes. That's a big, that's a, it's an impressive storm. Okay, so, uh, wow. Look at the hail core now south of the lake. Yeah, well, the lake's gonna get hammered with, there's two hail cores here. These are crippling hail storms, okay? Uh, one west of Lake Thunderbird, uh, east sides of Norman, big hail here, coming into Lake Thunderbird. The lake's gonna get trashed, and big hail between Lake Thunderbird, or really from Highway 9, down to just north of Etowah, this hail core is even more impressive. And folks, that's going to pink. All of this is going to pink, Tecumseh. If it lifts northeast like it's trying to do, Shawnee, prepare now for the possibility of a damaging hail event and the possibility of a tornado. All right, so severe weather now in the south metro. It just continues to rain. We're going to have some flooding issues developing if this doesn't start to end, and right now it's not ending. New storms just keep redeveloping. And uh, lots of heavy rain, lots of big hail. 
And uh, I'm guessing all flights out of Will Rogers have been canceled for hours now. I mean. They're, they're going to have significant delays and yeah, anything else. Yeah, big delays. So yes. yeah, well, either way, if you're expecting somebody to be flying in this evening or trying to get a flight out and you're, you're not going anywhere, they don't take off in this. Big planes will not land in that, and they don't take off in that, and for good reason, because that will bring a big plane down. No problem. All right? Big updrafts, big downdrafts. Okay, so um, this is a supercell, a little bit of a hook now, beginning to develop uh, down in northwestern Cleveland County, southwest of the airport here, about four miles. All right, here's Mustang, Wheatland's right there. Big hail between Will Rogers and just south of downtown Oklahoma City along I-240, big hail from Will Rogers down I-240 all the way back to I-35. Big, big hail. Golf balls and larger. Okay, and that's going to Midwest City. That's going to Tinker Air Force Base again. Okay, also big hail now uh, to the north of Lake Thunderbird. Okay, big hail to the west and north of Lake Thunderbird. Right here, that's pretty good size hail. And also southeast of Lake Thunderbird near Etowah. Big hail here. And that's headed towards Pink. That's headed towards Tecumseh and Brooksville. Okay. Racing northeast. I say racing. What, what's our speed now? Racing earlier. What are we doing now? Well, the actual storm itself is moving at about 15 to 20 yeah. to the east. The, that little hail core, though, is racing. It, it's got to be way faster than that. Probably 35 to 40. Yeah, it's moving. But I... Um, so there's different... This is the different elements of the yeah. storm because the storm is so massive. Yeah, it's huge. It's... It's, it's the biggest storm of the day, and it's, the, it's I'm guessing, the biggest stor storm in the, probably in the country right now. Probably the biggest supercell in the country. Um, looking for storm strength. Um, still holding its own. That storm's coming up. That storm going to Marlowe is a big deal. Yes. Okay, uh, let's go back down there. Okay. And let's just make sure, see where we are. Not, uh, okay, it's okay, it's still a little bit elevated until you do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's not wrapped up completely. It tried as it was crossing seven. Now it's a little more tilted, a little more elevated. That's a good sign. It means more wind and hail than anything. Yeah, it and has the hook. tennis balls. Yeah, tennis balls. Wow. And that storm, I mean, compared to the other storm, that, that's an impressive storm on any day. Supercell, rotating thunderstorm. But today, compared to the monster to the north, that storm looks pretty small. So, Marlow, prepare for tennis ball size hail. Rush Springs, um, I'd go ahead and also prepare for if this wraps up and tightens up, we get a tornado on the back side of this. Be right here. Okay. And then west of Empire City, another supercell here. Uh, look, notice how different they look. This has a hook. This is a screaming eagle. It's V-notched, shaped like a V, right? This is two, but a lot smaller storm. Doesn't mean it can't produce a tornado but just a, a lot smaller storm. And uh, that's going to be severe. That's going to have at least quarters in it. Yeah, coming to Duncan for sure. Yeah, Duncan, that's coming to you. You're going to have quarters. That's going to Marlowe right now with some quarters, golf balls, and maybe tennis balls in Marlowe, in between Marlowe and Rush Springs, crossing Highway 81. Okay, let's go back David, to the... Go ahead. Uh, Hank is on the Slaughterville storm, and yep. he has a big blocky wall cloud and maybe a small needle funnel okay. uh, poking out of that so it, it's still very well organized looking at the blockiness of that wall cloud that he's watching yeah i mean this thing is still just it's it's taken on a, a complete uh, environment of its own um it's moving again northeast at about 15 to 20 not very fast now compared to what it was hank's right here circulation is going to be to his north let's get an update from hank and is it yeah he's he's back in he's back up shot looks good Go ahead, Hank, looking off to the... Oh, there it is. I just saw it in the lightning. Sure enough, wow. Yeah, Hank. Uh, Hank, what's your exact location? So I am in Slaughterville right now at Slaughterville Road uh, and 77, and I'm looking to the northeast, and we've been watching a couple of different areas. There's a smaller wall cloud just to my due north, but then to my northeast is this big blocky wall cloud that you see and we keep seeing some small tags uh, hanging down that could be uh, needle funnels. You know, at night through the lightning, we look at something and we see, does it look like something different each time it, it lightens? 
and that kind of tells us that it's rotating. So uh, right there uh, in that shot right now, again, just to the right of that big block, I've got a lowering again. You can see it's either a stud tag or a, I'm, I'm going to call that a funnel. So right there in the center of my shot, to the right of that big lowering, there's a funnel, a big lowering there. So I'm looking northeast from Slaughterville, and it's going to be, oh, probably three or four miles to my northeast. Uh, it almost looks like a, a new bell-shaped wall cloud uh, forming, but I really think it, it's circulating, and I really think it, it was a funnel. Wow. Okay, well, let's keep watching it here. Um, and, again, this storm was the same storm that produced the damage and, uh, and the significant tornado we had earlier near um, and west of Cole, which uh, we know we have confirmed damage for sure. Checking on injuries and for any fatalities right now, and uh, we hope we don't have either, but when you have a tornado that strong, um, things can get just a little bit haywire. Okay, um, let's go back to uh, our trackers here. Who else is down south? And they'll, God, look at this thing now, guys. Yeah, it's really, really wrapped up. Okay, so we're we're back. Um, yeah, it, it's it, yeah, it's it's producing again. If it's not, it will be shortly. Again, we said this earlier. Back to links one and uh, McGuire. McGuire. Um, it's going to be just on or southeast of McGuire. There's Slaughterville. He's looking off to his northeast. Hank is, and uh, there's the tornado, right here. And then from there, it's going to Etowah and going to Needmore. Going to Etowah and going to Needmore. Look at the big hail here. Tornado warning continues for Etowah. McGuire, tornado's right here. There's your tornado. What does Max Rot look like on that? Not as impressive as what it looks like on reflectivity. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so, yeah, that's a big deal. So, um, no doubt about it. I mean, this thing is... It's wrapped up. And the hail core over Oklahoma City, David, I mean, just watching this in motion over the south sides of Oklahoma City, it's just not yeah. moving much. Yeah, that's we were not... talking about the flooding, but I mean, just so much hail in South OKC right now. Yeah. Uh, Lacey, go ahead and take it just okay. for a second. Give me, uh, give me one minute here. I'll be right back. All right, we're going to go to our live radar. We can stay on Lynx 1 here, and I'll just show you the hook, but also zooming out. So, yes, the tornado threat, definitely the concern from Etowah and then crossing over into Pottawatomie County, eventually over towards Macomb, and we'll have to watch for areas like Tecumseh for the potential for the tornado threat, and then farther to the north, it's definitely going to be the hail threat for Shawnee, and we'll have to see how much to the north that thing can jog if it does. And then the next storm up the line is the one that's to the south of Lake Stanley Draper also has a hook on it, and it's actually kind of a combination of several storms. It's not organized at the moment, but could produce some hail over Lake Stanley Draper. And then look at this core over South Oklahoma City and watch, this is a lapse of 15 minutes and it's been raining so very heavily. The core to the north weekend, and this is, we've lost count, fourth or fifth core to come up and cross I-240 and now producing anywhere from golf ball to maybe tennis ball or maybe even some baseball sized hailstones once again over I-35. Uh, this may come right up to downtown Oklahoma City. It's actually lifting a little bit more to the north. We'll see if it doesn't kind of weaken and those hail sizes come down. That's kind of been the trend. But basically that's running from I-44 um, all the way over to I-35 and then across I-35 to Sooner Road. Valcaster's been there um, driving in and out of that hill core and monitoring that storm. No circulation, no tornado threat with what we're seeing in South Oklahoma City. Definitely will start to see a flooding threat with this continuing. So if you don't have to get out and travel, obviously you don't want to be out and about with the hail anyway. But we are going to start to have to really be concerned for a flooding threat. And of course, the stronger storm is the one to the south. And we've been mentioning the southwest storms. And I just want to give you an update because you're kind of in the clear right now in Blanchard and Middleburg, Chickasha. The next storm down the line is the one coming up to Rush Springs. And you'll notice the warning there is a different color, that peach color. So your thunderstorm warning lets you know that that thing has the chance to do some, have some destructive hail with it. So a much more severe alert, if you will. And that's for Rush Springs. That's going to be heading up towards Ellick, eventually Lindsay. And further down the line, way down the line, Purcell, Wayne, we'll have to see exactly what that storm does as it tries to hold together. The Duncan storm, nickel dime, quarter size hail, and hail detector has had some golf balls with that one. But as David mentioned earlier, neither of those storms are rotating to the extent that it looks like a tornado is imminent or even close. They're not that organized 
as of right now, but they're moving into a more favorable environment as they move farther east. So folks in Paul's Valley, Davis, Falls Creek, Ardmore, you still have to pay attention to these storms back to your west. And the one tornado warning is still the storm that Hank is on, that Jeremy is monitoring also, that is coming up. And actually, there's the very latest scan coming in. And man, you just look at that. Look yeah. at how that has spun all the way in on itself, David. Wow. I mean, folks, uh, yeah, Lace, I mean, that's about as bad as it gets, right? I mean, this thing is... Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, we're going back to the. Okay, what? Anything? Let's see, look, this is the latest. Okay, there's and McGuire. There it is. There's your tornado. I don't see any. Oh my gosh. Man. Okay, so it's, folks, it is back on the ground. Uh, yeah, this tornado. Okay, so where's. Five miles to the west southwest of Etowah. Justin, is Hank eastbound and down? Okay, can't hear you, but okay, I can. Okay. Are you, are you talking on air right now? You're not. That was my bad. Uh, yes, he's eastbound. Okay. All right, he's here, and uh, this is going to be, okay. Um, okay, so Pink said this earlier. Pink, get ready. Here comes Big Hail. Hailing all over Lake Thunderbird, some of it big, some of it small. Uh, Norman in the clear for now. You have storms just to your north. North Norman lifting to the northeast, but this is a monster Monster supercell. There's your tornado right here. This is going to be where the debris ball is. Looks like to me it's expanding. Possibly some debris in the air. Let's go back to CC. See what it looks like. Do we have debris in the air at all? Oh, it's, it's getting a little messy. It's getting a little messy. I don't know. It's close, guys. That's close. Okay, we might have... If the tornado is not on the ground yet, it will be. I mean, we're, we're so close to it. Need more, a little small community of Need more, small community of Etowah, safe spot, get out of the trailer, get out of the mobile home, you gotta go. You cannot ride any severe, crazy storm out, tornado producer or a wind producer in a mobile home, modular home, whatever you wanna call it, you just can't. They're great to live in 99.9% .9 of the year, I get it, but on days like this, you can't, you can't ride them out in that. Damaging winds will flip those houses over and injure you and or take your life okay you got to get out of the you got to get out you got to get east or whatever you, you got to get away from this whatever that means for you uh maybe moving to a neighbor's house uh storm shelter whatever okay there's the tornado right here and we'll do a storm track on that look at the hook on that good oh my gosh definitely on the ground now yeah, I'm afraid this next scan, we are going to see debris in the air now. Definitely on the ground. David, that track is on links three when you need it. It's 150 knots a shear. Did you see that? Yes. Or 150 mile per hour shear. Yeah, Either gate way. Gate to gate, yeah. Gate to gate. It's bad. Okay, folks, this is going to be another significant tornado east of McGuire. One, two, two miles east of McGuire. Uh, going to need more. Uh, it's, we'll see if it occludes. Let's see what it's going to do here. Ah. Uh, Going to, going to need more and going to Etowah. David, that track is good on links three. Okay, let's go to links three and Etowah, you're the bullseye. Etowah, 8.53. You've got 13 minutes or less in Etowah. 9.20s, Tribby. 9.30s, Macomb. Brooksville's 9.41. Bernard Elementary School, 9.54. And Tecumseh. Now we're getting into some of the bigger cities. Tecumseh, 9.54. All right, let's go back to Hank. Hank's right here. Hank's east of Slaughterville, right? Let's go back to Hank. Hank, give me your exact location. What do you what do you what do you see right now? Hank, it looks like it's on the ground for sure. David, Slaughterville Road and 132nd Street, east of Slaughterville. I've got power flashes to the north of Slaughterville Road. We just saw two power flashes under this huge blocky wall cloud. Uh, the trees are obscuring the the uh, the vision at the very bottom, so I can't see the tornado, but we just saw two power flashes right underneath this monster of a wall cloud. It's going to be a few miles north of Slaughterville Road, and I am at 132nd East, so uh, I'm just a couple of miles. Another power flash it's right there in the camera. Look at that big old block wall on the back side of it. I'm just a mile or two east of the quick stop. Uh, that's east of Slaughterville, or yeah, east of Slaughterville on Slaughterville Road. I think there was a uh, uh, Pot County Fire Department there. Uh, yeah, I've got a big old cone right here, David. There's a big cone right there on the left side. Uh, there's another power flash. 
Yeah, so this is going to be two or three miles due north of my location. I am directly south of it. It's directly west of Etowah. And to me, it looks like it's moving more east than it is northeast. It's moving right towards Etowah. Yep. Hank, great job. No doubt about it. Tornado on the ground now, like you said, going towards Etowah and just north of Etowah. Let's leave Hank shot up here just for a second. Tornado's on the ground. Wait for the lightning flashes and then wait for the power flashes. There's the Hank, is it on the left side of your screen? Is that what you're looking at, the tornado? How big is that? If that whole thing is a tornado, it's a quarter of a mile wide. Okay. I don't know that that whole thing is a tornado, right. but sure. if the whole thing is, it it is every bit of a quarter to a half a mile wide. I believe that whole thing is a tornado because wow. I am seeing feeders off the ground on the right edge, and I'm seeing that solid vault on the back side of it. I, I believe, that, David, this is a big tornado. Okay. Like I say I can't see it on the ground because of the trees, sure. but it looks like a big tornado to me. Okay, Hank, so looking at your screen, that's on the left part of your screen when we have the lightning and power flashes, right? Especially with the lightning. Yeah, it's, it's yes, kind of sir. Right lightning. there. You can see that. Yeah. Center it up. Go yeah. left. Yeah, left. Go left a little, little bit. Little right bit there. There you go. Yeah, oh, right there. Oh, my so, gosh. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, David, David, we need to, I, uh, I'm going to freeze that, okay? Control David, room. We need to grab that and freeze it. Go ahead, Hank. Take it. You're hit. You're hot. Going into Etowah. Going David, north of Etowah. Take it. I, I hate to say it, but it, it almost is a wedge. If if that whole thing is yeah. a tornado, yeah. now it is nighttime, folks. I do not know, but if that whole thing is a tornado, it's almost a wedge. It is a huge lowering that looks to me that it's in contact with the ground. Now, we have seen multiple power flashes, but there's not a whole lot of things for it to hit. So there is if it was in the city, we would see all kinds. But, David... It looks like to me that this is probably uh, eight to a quarter mile wide tornado right now headed towards that wall. Okay. All right. So there it is in your shot. There's the tornado. It's right here. Control room. We need to have uh, editing. Take this, the last two minutes of this. Freeze frame it. Freeze these images. Okay. Grayson, help me out here. Let's go ahead and freeze these images of the left and the right side of the tornado. This is a big tornado. It's right here. That's a big tornado. Hank's all over this. That is a big tornado. Okay, let's go to it. Back to uh, Lynx 1. And, okay, there's Shear Rate. There's Etowah. If I'm in Etowah, I am going to the shelter now. If I'm in Etowah, north of town, south of town, I'm going now in Etowah. This is what the debris looks like with Shear Rate. The debris itself looks like this. This is going to be the debris in the air. And this is what reflectivity looks like. This is the hook, and this is debris right around the tornado itself. That's the tornado you're looking at just northeast of the little, small, tiny community of Needmore. And this is going to be maximum rotation right here. They all line up. Hank confirms it. Big tornado. At least a quarter of a mile wide, it looks like to me, in his lightning shots there. It's a, it's a big tornado for sure. Wow. Okay. Um, let's go back to, we'll do a storm track on that. And let's go back to, let's stay with Lynx 1. Let's go back just to reflectivity here. Okay. And, okay, let's back out of this. Talk about this. Tornado, again, just west through north of Etowah. There's the tornado itself. It's moving east-northeast. We'll get a storm track going. Cass, holler when you get it. Down the line further, Tecumseh. Definitely pay attention in yeah. Tecumseh. Brooksville, yeah. Chisney, down to, yeah. way down to Pearson. I mean, Macomb to Brooksville to Tecumseh. David, that track's ready on three. Okay, this is the tornado now. Just barely gonna miss Etowah. Okay, let's go to, to uh, Lynx 3 control room, storm track, and uh, there's your storm track. Etowah, 851, it's 846. It's gonna be close. It might go just barely north of town, but I wouldn't count on it. If I'm in Etowah, I'm in my safe spot, and I'm there right now in Etowah. Okay, Tribby, for now, this is gonna go to your north, Macomb, it's close. You're still in it. We still have you in that line, but it's probably going to go a little north of Macomb, up towards Tecumseh and Brooksville. Okay, so Macomb at about 928. That would be the most southern, far side of this whole thing. Brooksville, 939. Tecumseh, 951. Uh, Tecumseh, 952. That's going to be downtown. And, uh, yeah. So, tornado on the ground with that. Let's go back to Hank again and get an update, and also let's find out where Brandon is. Let's go back to Hank. Hank, what do you think? Power flashes, lightning flashes, what do you think, what do you see? 
David, I'm moving east. I'm, you know, kind of chasing through the jungle here, so I'm looking through the trees. I haven't seen a power flash in the last minute or two, uh, but I still see this huge wall cloud to my north. Um, hang on a second. I'm getting a little better view here. I can slow down. I, you know, it doesn't look as as big and wide uh, on the ground as it did. So uh, hopefully that means that, it, that it's lifting uh, or, or it's starting to occlude. Uh, but still, my vision is a bit obscured by uh, trees. Let me just. I'm not going to show that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hank, are you with us? Here's the deal. When you get east of I-35, for you folks that live down here in this part of the state, you know what it's all about. Cell coverage, not so good all the time, right? The streaming video looks great. There's the tornado again. Looks like it's still on the ground. There's the tornado. It's right here. Tornado on the ground. Um, just to the west or on top of Etowah. Okay. All right, let's go back to radar here. It may be just north now. Uh, yeah. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah. New okay, there we go. Which means it is slightly lifting a little farther yeah. to the north, which is not so, good news for Tecumseh. No. Yeah, and, and by the way, uh, we know we have, uh, so we've seen the damage. We have our news crews there in, in uh, Cole. Uh, earlier has significant damage. So Cole, where Brandon went ripping through there, they have they have a lot of damage. Okay. All right, so there's the tornado now. It it either it went across the northwestern sides of Etowah. There's the tornado. Wow. It is on the ground right now. There's Lake Thunderbird. All right, there's Macomb. So it has completely gone due east and occluded. And like they've done all day, they go due east, they occlude, they lift north, and then we get another mesocyclone developed to the south. Hopefully that won't happen. But like we said earlier today that the tornado parameters uh, are more favorable during the evening hours after dark, and that's exactly what has happened. And while you're looking at that, just our live radar really starting to show a pronounced hook over Norman. It's, it's weak rotation with it, Yeah. but it's kind of doing that same thing. Yeah, wow, look at that. Um, Wow, right over the Max Westheimer Airport. Yes. North Norman. Yes. That's the hook. Okay, so but there's there's not anything in it that's crazy. Right. But still, still don't want to hook over Norman. And uh, the hail up here where Tom is, is oh, it's still pretty good size. Yeah, Tom down to Lake Stanley Draper. This is going to be golf balls. It's going to be tennis balls. Turn off these warnings for a second. So this is East Moore, uh, down I-35 down to the far northern sides of Norman. This is a supercell. Hook, rotating thunderstorm. Another Hank cell. Has the shot of the tornado again. Okay, let's go back to Hank. OCU, downtown oh, Oklahoma wow. City. Look let's go that. back to Hank. And wow, Hank, big tornado on the ground, at least looking at velocity, big debris ball. Big debris ball, Hank, go ahead. Yeah, just to the right of that power pole, uh, you'll see the tornado. As soon as the lightning lightens up, uh, right there's the tornado. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm at about 156th Street now, and Slaughterville Road. So I'm east of Slaughterville, several miles, looking due north. It's it's uh, probably three or four miles, maybe three miles to my north. But you can see that big bowl-shaped funnel, and you can see the condensation funnel all the way to the ground, right there, just to, to the right of the telephone pole, just to the left of that uh, T post. You can see that's a, uh, oh, it looks like it just lifted. Okay, so it just lifted. So it's been on the ground. Uh, is that another one to the right? Oh, great. Um, yeah, let me turn my lights off and let me see. Back out just a little bit so we can gather some more light. Okay. Uh, you think now, you have Okay, so it looks like the tornado has lifted. So that big bowl uh, wall cloud right mm. there. Patty says that she doesn't think it's lifted, uh, but now yeah, I, I start right seeing a condensation funnel coming back down again. Yeah, so, you know, right here. Confucius says, listen to your wife. So uh, she says <laughs> it's still on the ground. And, Smart man. <laughs> um, you know, not to make a joke in here, but, uh, yeah, so yeah. it's, it's going to be north of Fish Market Road. The good thing, or Fish Market Road, I'm sorry, Slaughterville Road. The good thing about it is we have not seen a power flash. So hopefully it's yeah. just going through open field. And, and it's not hitting any homes. Right. Um, it's not near as pronounced as it was about a minute ago when I pulled up. You could see that almost the stovepipe all the way to the ground. It's not that pronounced anymore. 
I can kind of see it looking a little bit more ragged. Right. Um, so hopefully it, it's dissipating and lifting. However, we've been following this thing for an hour, yeah. watching it do this and cycle and re-tornado, and I have a feeling that uh, it was oh a big gosh. tornado uh, 20, 30 minutes ago. Yeah, hey, Hank, look at it, radar data. It's a big tornado with a big debris ball yes. just across Cedar Lane Road, and it's going up... Uh, what road is that north south? Is that Austin? Austin, approaching the county line, Pottawatomie County line. Pot okay, let's go back to links one. Big tornado, strong tornado, big tornado. This is debris. So it's not hail or, you know. No. Uh, th th right here. This is debris. This is what we call a debris ball now, and it's lifting north. There's State Highway 9 to the north. This is Austin Road. This is the Pot County line. This is Cleveland County. This is Pottawatomie County. This is East Road 125. This is a dangerous, potentially deadly tornado on the ground. Hank has it live. Debris now, signature, easily showing that we have debris being lofted. Let's go back to CC. Let's see what it looks like. And uh, yeah, we've got debris. There it is. That's it. Okay, so that's going to be another EF2, possibly an EF3 tornado. That'll be our second one of the evening. That is a large debris ball. And that's lifting to the north. And so pink, pink's on Highway 9, farther to yep. the north. And right Hank. now it is lifting north. Yes. Will it make it? Hopefully not. But, man, and it's on that trajectory. Yeah, Brandon right now it's going north, Hank. northeast. What's Brandon that? Brandon and Hank both have the shot of the tornado still on the ground. Okay. Brandon and let's, Hank. Let's go, who does? Brandon, yeah, Brandon and Hank. Yeah, let's go to Brandon. And uh, then we'll go back to wow. Hank. Let's, let's go back to Brandon. Brandon, take it. Give us a shot. There's the tornado now. It's going to be southeast of Little Axe, one, two, three, four miles. South of Highway 9, three miles. And uh, south, southwest of Pink, one, two, three, four, five, six miles. It's going to Pink. It's going to Pink. Big tornado, strong tornado. Could be a killer tornado. Go ahead. Okay, David. So we're looking. There's a tree in my shop. There's nothing I can do about it at the moment. But we have a significant tornado on the ground. Um, it kind of varies at times from a needle and then it kind of dissipates, but I'm this condensate kind of dissipates, but I think that the circulation is continuing to remain on the ground. Um, it's kind of, I know it's not fully condensated again, but I can tell you just by looking, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I might be zoomed in a little too much. Uh, just by looking at it, you know, as it continues to track off to the east, it's just fluctuating from, at times, like Hank was saying, you know, a sixteenth of a mile wide to an eighth of a mile wide, and then it becomes back a needle, and then it comes back again as a big, strong tornado. Right now, again, big circulation on the ground, David, um, just behind that tree. Uh, you can see it in the shot. I'm zooming in just a little bit so that way you'll be able to see that all the way condensated to the ground and the lightning. It's going to be just on the right side of this little tree. Um, but it's, a, it's a substantial funnel. So then, now it's lifted again, but it, I mean, I'm not saying that it's – a strong, I mean, a real strong tornado, but it almost appears to be maybe multiple vortex at times, just the way that the circulation is evolving with needle funnel, needle funnel, and then it really consolidates into one big funnel, and then it kind of evolves back to what it was. Um, I'm, I am north, just northwest of Tribby, looking back to the northwest um, as it continues off to the east-northeast, David. Back to you. Okay. Also, Brandon, remember, the tornado is now lifting north-northeast. And it's headed towards Pink. It's four miles south of Pink. It's now crossing the Cleveland Pottawatomie County line. Let's go back to Lynx One. So, Brandon, need to get north. You got to get north. It's not moving east anymore. I know you know that. And we now have gate to gate, what we call winds blowing one direction versus another of 113 miles per hour up against 88 mile per hour wind. There's the center of the tornado. That's going to be at least an EF2, if not an EF3 if not maybe stronger. That is a strong tornado. David, there's an updated track on three. Okay. And this is all debris in here. This is all debris. There's your debris ball. This is debris around the tornado that the radar is picking up. It's going to pink. We'll do a storm track. And uh, Lacey, go ahead and back out of this. Show the okay. folks at home what this looks like, kind of the, the bigger view. Can you tell where the tornado is? Wow. Look at this screaming eagle. That is a classic screaming eagle the beak like we say is where you never want to be that's exactly what you have going on it looks like a big eagle that's ripping in from the east or northeast another hook in the south metro developing near norman that could produce a tornado more rain and hail moving across the city still severe 
near Tinker Air Force Base, Big Hail, East Moore, East Norman, mainly East Moore now. And the hail has really come up there over yeah. Lake Stanley Draper, near Lake Stanley Draper. West of Lake Stanley Draper, Big Hail, tennis ball size hail there. Another multi million dollar hailstorm, part of this whole thing we've had today with gargantuan hail and a lot of it. And with that hook developing, David, folks over Lake Thunderbird now, I know the north side of the lake, across the lake, and points back basically even to uh, East Norman, really need to pay attention. That storm is strengthening. Uh, yeah. And, the, and with the potential for the tornado, I'm, it's yeah. increasing. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, and even though it's, it's, it's moving through an environment that it's, it's kind of, the atmosphere's kind of worked over because of this storm that's out ahead of it, but you know what, the dynamics are so strong that what's it look like on shear rate? Okay, this is where the tornado is going to be on this. There it is. Uh, two miles east of downtown Norman, near Hall Park. Possible tornado developing here. This is a strong tornado on the ground here. Maybe a violent tornado. For sure a strong tornado now. East and southeast of Lake Thunderbird, southeast of Little Axe. There's your tornado. Confirmed doing damage right now. Not good. Now crossing into Pottawatomie County. Look at that. Now it's into Pottawatomie County. Okay, so here's pink. One, two, three. It. Yeah, it might, it might go on, or it, it's kind of wobbled back a little farther east now. On or just east of pink. If I'm in pink, I'm going to the hole. Let's do this. Whether it's the interior closet or interior bathroom, above ground storm shelter, below ground storm shelter, what have you, do it. Do it, do it, do it, and do it now. If you're in pink, okay? Serious tornado. Strong tornado, large tornado on the ground, doing damage, coming into Pottawatomie County. And just like that. It should be there in 10 minutes or less. Okay, let's do it. Uh, storm track, do you have one, Lace? It's Cast? on three. On Lynx three, control room. And uh, there it is, pink at 9.09, 8.59. So, yep, like she said, less than 10 minutes. Uh, Bethel Acres, 9.26. Grand Casino, 9.33, folks. And remember, this could weaken. Twin Lakes is right here. There's Dale. The casino is right here. There's OBU, Bethel Lakers, the Shawnee. Right, right now, this is this is headed towards Twin Lakes and north and west sides of Shawnee. And this has been a big tornado with debris in the air. We have damage. We know we have damage. We're checking There's, in on that. There are a lot of homes in that area. I know there's all the trees and you get into that side of the state, but yeah. still, I mean, there are a lot of homes in that area. And we know that Hank had power flashes off and on there for a while. Yeah. And we could see that debris lofted in the air, unfortunately. Yeah. It's a horrible but, sight to see. Uh, but if a tornado cuts the power before it even gets there, then, you know, you won't have power. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of homes down in here. Whole thing is moving off to the northeast. So, uh, this is going to go to pink. And uh, this is going to go on and just east of pink. Let me show you some of the still pictures uh, that we just took from Hanks when he was live on the air just a few minutes ago with the tornado. Some of his still. Oh, it's video. Okay, let's show you some of the video of the stills. And uh, we'll get this together. And you can see the size of the tornado here. I've not seen this. We'll see this together for the first time. I saw it live, and it's still happening right now. I just want to show you uh, the width. Now, this is at one point when we had it going there. And, uh, yeah, that's a... And this is when it was still fairly weak. It gets stronger than this. So this is what we're talking about, the tornado that is still on the ground, okay? So that's bad. That's a big, bad deal, and that's not good. Okay, um, let's go back to, I think we, is this Hank's shot right now? That's the video. Oh, that's the video, okay. Th there's power, there's tornado. That was about 20, 30 minutes ago. Wow. Power flash. David, there speaking you. of power flashes, yep. Tom is seeing power flashes now southeast, west of Lake Thunderbird with that secondary storm. Okay. Tom is. Okay, so there's the eastern tornado. Wow. Let's go back to uh, the metro. I mean, let's just back this up, what, 15 miles? Let's go back to Lynx 1. There's your tornado um, that's headed to pink and east of pink. Okay, new area of circulation now coming into Lake Thunderbird. Uh, there's Tom. Now coming down 12th Street, here's your area of circulation. It's going to be between Rock Creek Road and Alameda. And what's going to be our South 60th Street and 72nd 80. Street and 84th yes, Street? 80, yep. Basically the western side of Lake Thunderbird. Okay, let's get to Tom Pastrano. Tom, power flashes, circulation getting stronger. One, two, three, four, four, almost five miles to your southeast. And Tom, you live in that area down there. And 
You've not had good luck the last decade, so give us an update. What do you think? No, no, I haven't. You know, I can tell you that um, a lot of my neighbors around Lake Thunderbird have lost power, so they won't know that this is coming. So hopefully they're watching the app. But I did see multiple power flashes to my southwest. I haven't seen anything in about a, about a minute, but there could be something over there. Uh, at least strong winds. Back to you. All right, good job. Great job there, Tom. We'll keep busting east and get over on this thing. I know that's what you're doing. And uh, hopefully this will not produce a tornado. It's going through an environment that's been worked over with the previous storms we've had. But the dynamics are so strong that uh, the shear, the spin in the atmosphere, it just keeps cranking out mesocyclones that are cranking out tornadoes. Anyway, okay, so let's go back to Lynx 1 and tornado... Go ahead. Take a look at the velocity here, David, for the storm south of Pink. And I mean, to me, it's it's so much more broad now. It's yeah. weaker. Not saying it's completely lifted. No doubt about but it. But that is a far cry from what it was five minutes ago. No, it's definitely definitely spinning down for now. Now, what we have to worry about, because this has cycled all day long, is getting a, a another area of spin. This dies. That's dying right now. You can still get a tornado out of that. So if I live south and east of Pink. I'm in my safe spot right now, right here, right now. Okay, if you still have power, turn the TV up. If you don't, open your phone up. News 9, you can watch us and stream us all day, all night, right? And you don't have to have, obviously, power for that. Sh phone's got to be charged, obviously, you know what I mean? But if your power goes out and you have your cell phone, hey, let it rip, let it play. All right, so here's, it looks like it's trying to tighten up a little bit. Southeast of Pink, it's weakened now just in the last couple of minutes. It's trying to squeak back up on us. That's going to cross Highway 9. Okay, it's right here. There's the tornado. If it's still on the ground, it's closed. It has weakened. That's going to be one, two, three, four miles east and two miles south of Pink. So you folks in Pink are getting wind and hail, not a tornado. All right, so let's go back to the west now. Here's Lake Thunderbird. And this is the other area of circulation. And Val's coming in from the west. There's Tom. Area of spin. Uh, is it trying to tighten? Yeah, it's trying. Man, it's so close to the other one. It is. So close. Right on its heels, really. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're almost, yeah, we're almost to the tornado criteria um, for this. It's almost there. I mean, these two are what? One. 12 miles from each other? Yeah. Look, look almost like twins. Right. Except this one. God, what a big storm, though. That thing's a monster. Man, we have had so much hail today. Goodness gracious. Um, any reports of any fatalities or injuries that we know of? We had to have had. I mean, I hope not, but injuries? Okay, not confirmed. Okay. Well, we hope not. That'd be great. But we know we have damage. Down by coal, we have crews uh, on the scene down there. And yes, we have damage down there. And David. And I know we have damage near Etowah. Yeah, go ahead, Justin. Just looking at the overall storm environment, there is some indications are that that lid in the atmosphere has kind of been put what? back on. These are the only two storms right now that are literally severe in the hey, states. The one uh, northeast of Norman and the Go ahead. Go ahead. And, and the one uh, near yeah. Peak. Yeah. The other storms, the other two that were down towards Duncan and the Marlow area, those have uh, completely weakened and hardly have any lightning with them. And then additional storms that were north of the metro, they have weakened as well. So overall, the environment is being less conducive, but still these two supercells that we have here on the south side of the metro are spinning and they take time to spin down. And that tornado threat locally with these two storms will continue. But everyone else, it looks like the storm threat is greatly starting to diminish. So if you're not here in the south side of the metro, I just wanted to give you an update that we are watching the other storms, but overall, those have completely weakened for the most part. So that's some great news for the lack of severe weather. I know a lot of people want the rain, but the severe weather threat is now becoming a little bit more localized for the next hour or two here around the metro, the south e southeast side. Yeah, which is, which is good, um, which is great. We still have some wind and hail to deal with, but the big show is, is right here, like Justin was talking about. And the environment is still conducive, so this is going to go on a little while longer. Eventually, these will run out of steam. Let's talk about velocity data. And uh, how far are we from pink on this? Just a couple miles. 
too. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 So this is ramping back up. I could see it on that when we were zoomed out earlier. I'd yes. Like, Hang on. Right. A little bit of an uptick. So this is trying to ramp back up. And there's pink. There's this. Uh, doesn't quite look right. Unless that's still debris lofted, lofted. from earlier. Yeah. Which is very possible that that is still debris. Okay. And also, did you guys help them out on location? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and just look at radar. Take it back. Show them where there's, you know. Okay. All right. So uh, this is the new developing tornado here. It did weaken. Notice how the reds are beginning brighter and the blues are getting brighter. Uh, that shows wind speeds are increasing. And these are winds in the opposite direction, right? The green up against the blue. So it's a tightening, winding up mesocyclone and the possibility of a yet another tornado. That thing has put on a show. Okay, uh, let's show these two storms here. And what a, okay. what a shot on reflectivity. And uh, wow. I'm going to turn Hook. off the warnings. Hook, and uh, wow, that's impressive. Folks, the size of this storm alone is, is really, really one to take note of. Very large supercell, moving east-northeast at about 20. Yeah, and the hail is coming into Shawnee now. Yeah, Shawnee, we talked about Shawnee. We said Shawnee, I swear it was two hours ago, maybe three, when this stuff took off. So, uh, Shawnee, you're gonna try to avoid a tornado, but you're for sure guaranteed hail. And it's coming in right now. OBU, Shawnee, uh, down to just north of Tecumseh is where the hail's gonna be. The hail core's all in here. And this is gonna be quarter, golf ball, tennis ball, size, maybe even baseball. I'd count on some baseballs in here. It's gonna be a crippling hailstorm for Shawnee. And then here's the hook. Possible tornadoes right here. Possible developing tornado now coming into Lake Thunderbird. All right, what's this look like on shear rate? Okay, so uh, this is, uh, it's, it's getting stronger. Man. Yep, Tom is closing in on that from the west. And I mean, it's coming, it's going to cross right over the north side of the lake. And right. Brandon's reporting that uh, lowering that wall cloud that was southeast of pink is becoming a little bit more defined and looks stronger, that couplet on radar. So that might be re-intensifying. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, it definitely has re-intensified. Yeah. I, I believe it's on the ground, David, with the we'll look at the debris in the air. <clears throat> yeah, it's either, yeah, like you said, it's old debris or new debris. So let's go back to velocity here. I I'm with you. I it's not as strong as what it was, but it's still probably, yeah, that's, that's probably on the ground. Not as strong, yeah, that's on the ground. Well, that escalated quickly from what it was. It doesn't look like it's as strong, but it's definitely at least intermittently on the ground, off, it's up, it's down, it's, it's all that. And you don't want to play that game of is it going to be up or down when it comes over my house? So if you live south and east of Pink, we'll do another storm track on this. And lapse this. Let's just okay. make sure this is still moving northeast. Yeah. Golly, it's really making a plan. It's going to go barely east of Pink. <sighs> wow. That's wild. It's almost moving due north at the, that last scan. Yeah. It's, I mean, you folks in Pink, you can hear the roar. I mean, the wind has got to be blowing there. If it's not, it's because you're so close to it. But the tornado is right here, about ready to cross Highway 9. And you can see the tornado warning for the storm back to the west that Tom is on that we've been talking about approaching yeah. Thunderbird. Okay, so here comes the next lax. one. Yeah, here comes the next one. New tornado warning now. Uh, lake Thunderbird. Uh, anybody in and around the lake, tornado warning for you. Let's go to Tom Pastrano. And DeBow's coming in as well. Let's go to Tom here. Tom, just to your east, tornado warning. Here we go again, Tom. Uh, coming into the western sides of Lake Thunderbird. Give us an update as you look off to your east. Go ahead. You're closing in. Yeah, David, there was substantial lowering. Um, you know, I don't really want to call it. I haven't seen flashes. Um, but, yeah, that's over in the lake. Um, I just called my wife, called my neighbors, tell them to go into shelter. They don't have power, so they don't know what's coming. Back to you. So hopefully their phones were charged to friends and family down here and uh, been paying attention and, and see this coming. But uh, Tom, he knows this area like, like the back of his hand, and he's making his way off to the east and southeast. Okay, let's go back to um, Lynx 1. And quickly, let's jump back into the metro here, talk about Oklahoma City. Uh, there's no tornado warnings for the city. We have heavy rain, heavy storms, strong, okay. severe storms now. Midwest City on the eastern sides of town. Chesapeake, downtown Oklahoma City, the airport's quiet. Anything else, let's make sure 
And uh, what's going on down south? Anything down the south? Southwest storms, they are still severe, but there okay. you, you can see the look of them. Nope. Okay, they look uh, they weaker. Weakened, yes. Okay, so those are beginning to weaken, which is good, but they're still going to produce some quarters, maybe some golf balls. And uh, these are going to make their way up towards Lindsay and maybe Payne. And then also the storm just went through Bray. Uh, that's going to Purdy. And if they make it long enough, they're going to go to Payne, Maysville, Wayne, Purcell, and Paola, and then Paul's Valley. Okay? But not tornadic down there. They are supercells. They are rotating, but they're not rotating enough for us to be like, oh, boy, here we go. Okay? This one and that one, yes, those are. Nothing in Lincoln County of any concern, at least now in northern Lincoln County or Payne or Osage. Osage County and Pawnee County storms are pretty strong. But this is, these, these really, these two storms here are the, are the serious storms. And look at the hooks. Look at the hooks. If you're a weather enthusiast, you have a lot of respect for that. And if you're not, you know, you're missing out because that's crazy. It's wild that storm was lifting up towards pink, went to the east, and yeah. it's now, look at that. It went around pink. It, the the it, path of this. That is wild. Yeah. Went, it occluded all the way on the east side of pink, and now the circulation went around pink. We did this uh, last year, right? Yes. West of uh, Seminole. Yep. Tom had that uh, circulation down there that did a complete loop. Was that Earlsboro? Oh, it was somewhere near er there. Yeah. Yeah. Or Little Axe or Earlsboro, one of those down there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was Earlsboro. Did but the big spin. It's wild. Right? Yes. Crazy. Anyway, it takes a lot in the atmosphere to get a piece of air that's spinning so violently and strongly and with all the dynamics going on to take a piece of air, think about it, that goes 50,000 feet up and have it move east, northeast, and just go, you know what, I'm going to make a left turn. I mean, and just make a left turn. It takes a lot. And there's, a, there's dynamics going on with this, physics going on with this, pulling it north. A lot of it has to do with the fact that the mesocyclone is so deep and so strong that it's spinning. That counterclockwise it wants to make it spin to the left. So that's exactly what it's doing. It's trying to spin, and it's doing it. Okay? These two supercells, the hooks are now eight, <coughs> eight and a half miles apart. Eight miles apart. Tornado here, possible tornado developing here. All right, let's zoom in on this. Let's talk about the storm back to the west here. And uh, circulation is right here now. Let's look at some of these streets. Okay. And uh, go ahead and zoom on in there. Let me get my glasses on here. Okay, Alameda Drive is kind of the east-west. Yeah. Yes, the east-west. The north-south is going to be 120th and 144th. Yeah, Alameda, Tecumseh. Yeah, it's right here. And uh, this is Lake Thunderbird right here. So it's right in here. Yes. Yeah. And, okay, so here's... So coming right at Little Axe. Here, here's Little Axe. My gosh. May 10th, 2010. Little Axe. Remember that day? Yeah. It was a bad tornado. Okay, You've had a lot latest. down there. Little Axe is... I, I swear. Little Axe has had more things go over it, through it, or around it as far as severe weather. Hail, wind, tornadoes. Especially the last, you know, 15 years. It's definitely been one of those areas that you're like, ah, just keep getting hammered. All right, so Little Axe and north of Little Axe, safe spot, lowest level. Let's do this. Do it now. Next area of circulation coming in on you. What a shear rate show. Anything? It's, it's been holding its own. Hasn't changed too much. Oh, there it is. It's right over the lake. God, it's coming right into Little Axe. Which then down the line, unless it starts to lip north, will be headed back towards pink, or this one will be headed towards pink. If, if it occludes. Yes. Yes, it certainly will be, which is exactly what we, we don't want. Ugh. Okay, so I, I keep mentioning, by the way, big hail up here, tennis ball size hail. These updrafts are supporting big, big hail. Running from Stella over to Twin Lakes to Dale to OBU to Shawnee. And uh, look at the hook. So this is, this is being absorbed. Look at the feeder bands. Look at the reflectivity here. See the feeder bands? Look at that. That just tells me this thing is staying alive as long as it can. What you got? Oh, that hook is being pulled up now towards Twin Lakes, which is so wild that it was down all the way to the south near Etowah. Now it's moved and approaching the Twin Lakes area. Yeah. I mean, it's weakened. It has weakened. Yeah. But we'll see if the next hook can form further off towards the towards the east. <laughs> it's, Look at that. It's going to go to Twin Lakes. Yes. And Twin Lakes, how many times have they been hit? Yeah, that whole, this whole uh, area. May, May 19th, 2000. 
2013. Twin Lakes, hit. Okay, so this is Twin Lakes, a lot of houses in this community, nice little area. And there we go, look at that. It's a much smaller area, but it is tight. That's, that's a tornado. Okay, so the tornado's on the ground, and uh, what is that? Oh, Fish Market Road, that's what Hank mentioned earlier. Yes. Fish Market Road and North South Farm Road 311, right here, Clear Pond Road. It's coming up on Clear Pond Road. That's the tornado. It's not as wide, it's a small tornado. And it's not a extremely, it's not a violent tornado, okay? I can tell you that. Uh, looks like a low end EF0, EF1, possibly. Uh, it is shrinking and it's occluding, which means it's weakening as it's it's lifting north. As uh, Look at that. There we go. We got debris in the air. Yeah, EF1. It's maybe almost a two. like a drill bit tornado. Yep, it's not very big, but it's doing damage. Another tornado on the ground now, doing damage. That track is on links three. Okay. And it almost looks like, David, it's circling. I mean, it's, it's, it, yeah, it, it has. It's moved, it's almost moved yeah, to the northwest. It has. It's gone north, northwest. Yes. From there. Wow. Okay, so let's back this out just a second. Okay. And so this tornado, uh, remember, went on Etowah, went around pink, and now it's up here. Look at that path that took. That is one of the more impressive occlusions we've seen in a while. That tornado started down here, went over Etowah, went barely on the east side of Pink, and now it's back to the northwest. Look at the big hail back in here over Stella, New Walla. Big hail for you. All right, let's go back to Shear Rate. And, uh, and there it is. See the area near Bethel Acres? Yeah. Take a look at that. It's hard to see on velocity, but on reflect or on a velocity, you can see a little weakness right there. There it is. So now two areas of circulation. That's the old mezzo. Storm. Yeah, that's the old mezzo. Uh, who is, is that? It's Marty. Okay, Marty's right there. What what is Marty seeing off to his west? It's going to go to his north, but There's a lot of rain. God, tons of rain. He's in. Man, so we have this area of circulation here. That's the original mezzo. Oh, that's the first one, I should say. That is, that is so wild to look at. The, 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 the tornado <laughs> that's north of Pink is the original tornado that went near Etowah. This is a new area, I believe, near, near Bethel Acres that's starting to strengthen now. Still broad, definitely damaging winds coming into Bethel Acres and Shawnee. Be yeah. curious to see what Mark Yeah, has. no, you're right. Yeah. Here, I'll zoom it out and kind of, I got so many warnings here. Look at that. To try to kind of coordinate with all the different warnings for the different motions in this storm. There you go. Okay, what about the circulation back to the, is that weakened sound back to the west? I don't see it there. Yes, it has. Val's just south of that circulation now. Okay, let's bring in Val Caster. And uh, let's go to Val, and he's on Highway 9. Val's circulation um, is just to your north, it looks like. And uh, just to your northeast, Val, between you and Pink, what do you see right there? Well, David, uh, we do see a lowering, a pretty good lowering. And, we, and, you know, there's so many trees over here, it's hard to see, but we also have a highway patrol in front of us. But as soon as uh, we get out of the tree and we get an open area and it lightens, you'll be able to see it. It's, it's a pretty good size lowering right there. Did not see anything on the ground, uh, you know, in the several lightning flashes that we had uh, just a minute ago. But, man, I tell you what, it, it was a big lowering right there. And it's right where you said it, it's to our northeast. So um, we're pressing on on Highway 9. We're going to try and stay up with it, maybe get ahead of it here. But uh, it, it is significant, David. Okay, yeah. I mean, these things are, boy, I tell you what, this is, uh, this is crazy. I mean, these things are just, they will not quit. And eventually, yes, we will end this. But uh, we had a lot of instability today. A lot of dynamics in place today, and boom. All right, let's go back to links one now. Let's talk about the areas of spin. We now have three. Yeah, I'm going to turn off the warnings because it's a mess. Yeah. Um, but this is the hook near yep. Little Axe. That's, that's, a, that's the one that's the newest one. Yes. Well, kind of. But anyway, there's Highway 9. There's Little Axe. This is, there's your hook. And okay, that's the first one. The other one uh, is here. here. Yes. There's number two. There's Developing Tornado. Tornado, and then broad area of circulation coming in on Bethel Acres. At least you'll get out of that. It's going to be some damaging wind. 
So one, two, three areas of concern. That, Lacey, this went back into Cleveland County. It did, yes. It went from Cleveland County to Pottawatomie County, circled pink within a mile or less. Yeah. Went up towards Twin Lakes and now is curved back into Cleveland County. And there it is. There's the tornado now. That's going to be the wildest path. And yeah. it's weakened. It has weakened as it's now approaching Stella, believe it or not. From the east. Yes. Okay. Folks, that's a little nutty. I'm just saying. Look Start, at that. Move yeah. from the east to the west. Yeah. We got stuff going, you know. And it happens. I mean, it's not like, oh, my gosh, the yes. world's coming to an end. No. It happens. And there's reasons that it happens. But um, they don't happen every month. And uh, you might go a whole spring and not have anything quite like that. Look at the circulation coming over Bethel Acres now. Yeah, that is, that is one heck of... Okay, so if you're back in eastern Cleveland County, this is going to die out over you. Just east of Stella, three, three and a half, four miles. But wow, okay. And there it is. All right, so this is ramping up now. And we have Hank there. Um, wh uh, Justin, what, what are the trackers seeing? What's Hank seeing? So he's looking off to his north. Let's go to Marty Logan. Uh, let's go to Marty and uh, bring Marty in. Marty's circulation is to your west-northwest, one, two, three, four, five miles west of you, one mile north, coming into Bethel Acres right now. Next area of spin. Okay. Well, I do see a, a base over that way, and the same thing that Hank has had, trees in the way. So let me move back west a little bit and get set up where I can take a look at it. Uh, I was receiving some hail in um, in Shawnee just a little bit ago. And another thing that I saw were some ambulances, non-emergency, moving to the east, which I think what they're doing is they're spreading out resources in case something came into town. Uh, we did that at Woodward when I was there on the fire department. So let me run out west here, get a better shot, and see what I can get into. I think it's back on the ground again. New circulation, new tornado at Bethel Acres, okay? So, Marty, if you can, turn around. Go back north towards Shawnee. It's going to be to your west. It's going to cross probably pretty close to Shawnee or just west of Shawnee, okay? If you can hear me. Um, but we'll, we'll get you turned back around. But uh, let's go back to Lynx 1. And uh, this is it right here. This is going to be the new tornado. The, the other tornado's gone. Other area of spin here that Val is on. Hank's on this. He's going down Highway 9. And Justin, does Hank see anything? Yep. Folks, it's right over. It's right over Bethel Acres. Tornado warning. Bethel Acres. We've been talking about it. Look how quickly that changed. Laps that. Let's see what it. Look how. Oh, it's trying to go negative. Um, laps this. Okay. And just, just on sheer rate, just okay. alone, just to see what it. Look how fast this developed. I mean, it was there, but then it did that in the last just uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, completely. Uh, yes, and it's on the ground, David. That is, oh, let me show you the latest. Okay, on tornado on the ground now, tornado on the ground in Bethel Acres. Damage, there's going to be damage in Bethel Acres. There's going to be damage in Bethel Acres. Okay? Damage in Bethel Acres right now, live on News 9. That's what it looks like. And it's going due north. It's going up north-south Farm Road, 336, between 336 and 335, and Lake Road. There's the tornado. It just went on, and on the western sides of Bethel Acres, we're going to have damage there. And it's wrapped in rain. I mean, that's... Cannot see it. No. There it is. There's your tornado. There's your tornado. Lifting from the south to the north now. These are not moving east-northeast. I think you're thinking, what? Right, people in the Grand Casino see this to your southeast thinking, hey, this is moving away. It's actually not moving no. away from you at the Grand Casino. No, it's moving, like you said, to, and it, it, if it does like the other one, it's going to try to swing back northwest and try to hit Grand Casino. If anybody knows anybody and cares about anybody at the Grand Casino, call them, tell them, yell at them, tell them there's a tornado on the ground now, tornado on the ground, doing damage in Bethel Acres that's moving off to the north-northwest. It's going to try to cross either on Grand Casino, at the casino, or just east of the casino. 
All right. Hey, uh, Justin. Uh, Justin. Is uh, Marty heading northbound? Yes, he is heading northbound. Okay. Marty is heading north. Okay. He's got. He's yeah. He's got to get up there. David, the track has that at the Grand Casino. Hey, okay, real quick. Hey, Justin, tell Hank to take 102. 102 northbound. Scream Road. Scream Road. Take it. Take it northbound. Get up towards Twin Lakes. Take 102. Okay. Uh, there, the tornado is right here. See the little weakness in reflectivity? See that little bit where it kind of goes from the purple then back to the, the red? and the colors around it are a little bit darker, that's the tornado right there. We also can see that on velocity data. We can also see that on shear rate. And it's one, two, three miles southeast of Bethel Lakers. And, uh, uh, excuse me, it's three miles southeast of Twin Lakes. And, and the casino is right here. And it, it would be there in about 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. Let's go to Lynx, what'd you say, Cass? Three. Lynx three, control room. We've got it going north, northwest now, folks. I know it doesn't look right, just trust me. Grand Casino, 937. If you live near the Grand Casino or east of the Grand Casino, if it doesn't weaken, it's going to hit you, or certainly could. Grand Casino, big casino. We all know where it is. If you've been on I-40, you can't miss it. You might have thrown some money in there. Um, Jacktown, 10 o'clock. Warwick, 1038. That's a little farther east right now. I definitely think Dale is in the line of fire at 938. Okay, so that circulation over here we had earlier, that tornado. It is much stronger now, David. If it's you gone. look at the storm northwest of Pink now, which is with the second hook, it is also getting much more pronounced now northwest of Pink, and that one is moving easterly, at least for right now. Okay. Yeah, where's Tom? Is Tom moving? Yes, and just take a look at, at velocity there and right all here. the motion. I mean, this, the whole thing is almost circulating counterclockwise if you just look at all the motion yeah. the, in that shot. The whole environment, th this is a merry-go-round of tornadoes. It's a merry-go-round of tornadoes. The whole atmosphere is spinning, and we're getting circulations over miles that are spinning and rotating go to counter Marty there, counterclockwise. Let's go to Marty Logan now. Tornado, tornado, tornado. Within... 15 miles of each other, all on the ground, nearly at the same time. Marty Logan tornado is on the ground now, doing damage one mile north, one mile north of Bethel Acres, and it's headed towards I-40. Go ahead, Marty. Okay, I've turned to night vision. There was a huge explosion to my northwest, one to two miles. You can see the glow of it right there where that icon is for my night vision. Look right above that, that uh, glow. It's red in... Uh, Right there, cloud to ground lightning. There's a lowering right above it. Now, I can't tell you if that is a tornado, but there was an – right there, tornado. It's a tornado – right there. It's a tornado on the ground northwest of me near I-40 right now. It is massive. It looks like a pretty big tornado. Uh, there's also smoke coming up from that. And whenever it lit off, it wasn't a power line. It was an explosion of some sort. That may be smoke. It's so hard to tell right now. I'm in heavy rain. Yeah. There may be smoke right there instead of a tornado, uh, but that's going to be right up on I-40. I'm watching up that way, guys, trying to tell if that's a tornado or if we have a massive uh, explosion, smoke coming from it. Okay. And I think that's back towards the uh, uh, casino, back in that area. If that's not... I'm telling you what, that is very wide. I think maybe that might be the tornado. Hey, Marty, Marty, give, give me your exact location. Um, your GPS is kind of locked up. You're in a bad sale area. What? What? How, how close are you to Shawnee? Well, are you are you on 177? Uh, I think that's where I'm at right now. I've been driving on some country roads trying to get back up. Uh, all right, here goes an emergency vehicle going by me. Okay. That's the sheriff, so he's headed to that direction right now. That, this is going to be west of Shawnee. It appears to be about I-40, and instead of that being a tornado, I'm going to say that that's probably a smoke plume, and I'm going to have to move up that way. Oh, there went another flash. David, there may have a... heard the explosion from that cloud to ground, so okay. let me go check this okay. out All and right, see well, what we've got. All right, well, keep, got keep, keep going north. What's that? There was an explosion and a 
bunch of firefighters are headed that way right now. What, what was the explosion? Not sure yet. Okay. Okay. Um, but that They're was maybe a, a tank large battery oil tank that got hit farm. by a Oh, okay. So lightning strike, tank battery. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go back to uh, Lynx 1 and uh, let's pinpoint, let's hunt down this tornado. Okay. So we have uh, the Grand Casinos here. Area of circulation is right here. Uh, it was on the ground doing damage. There is a tornado now. It's a mile and a half southeast of the Grand Casino. Hank's right there. Let's get an update from Hank uh, and also uh, Justin. Hank's shot is down. Okay, let's go ahead and take Hank live. Justin, let's talk to Hank. And uh, Hank, tornado is going to be just to your northeast, about a mile and a half. Hank, you're going up 102, and Val, it's going to be just to your northeast. Go ahead, Hank, give us an update. Yes, David, I am in a uh, car wash, rain, and getting hammered with hail. Uh, I'm on 102, and I think that tornado is just east of me about a mile, but uh, I'm just saying, when I'm doing like 20 miles an hour, just because I'm just getting hammered with poor right now. So uh, we saw the same explosion. Marty saw. We didn't quite know what it was. Uh, uh, but right now, we can't see any power flashes. I think I'm in the backside wraparound uh, circulation right now. So I'm on 102 or just 40. It looks like to me that that circulation is just to my east and maybe a hair north, David, back in your... Okay. okay, all right, nice job, Hank. And uh, Hank's going up 102. He's right here. He's going up. Gonna, he's on the east sides of Twin Lakes right now. The tornado that came out of... Um, uh, Tecumseh and then uh, Bethel Acres right here. Not Tecumseh, Bethel Acres. Um, it's now lifted to the north. Looks like it might have weakened some. We have another area of circulation now, which is, golly, it's, it's coming in on top of pink. Do you guys see that? So, wow, there's so much going on. Okay. All right. So, uh, Val, and, and again, just torrential rain in here. There's the tornado right here. Tornado now is coming in on Dale. Looks like it might have weakened. Let's go to Shear, right? See what you think. What's it look like? Not as tight. Yeah, that circulation has weakened. That circulation's weakened. What's going on to the southwest now? What was what, what's happening down here? This is another concern. Yes, that's the yeah. the hook that came out of Norman. And yeah. that's that area over pink that we were talking about. Yep. That's, the, that is, that's still a pronounced hook. Everything else is rain-wrapped and very absorbed in the storm. Right. But I'll show you on reflectivity, that is still a hook. Yeah. And it's still, it, it's actually, the direction is hard to pinpoint at the moment. It was moving easterly. It is trying to lift more north now. Yeah. Um, and maybe eventually make its way back up towards Twin Lakes as well. Yeah. That hook is... It's oh, trying. It's, Look how it's trying to actually protrude more southeast. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's, let's back out. Let's kind of give folks the overview of what's going on. And uh, let's back out just a little bit more just to show. Okay. Uh, I'll nothing, turn on the warnings nothing in Guthrie. A couple of small storms. And this is what's going to happen to all of these. They're going to start to shrink, and they're all going to gradually get smaller, and then they're all going to go away. But we have significant damage. Uh, we know we have damage near Etowah. We know we have damage. Uh, with our news crews, we've seen it from the air, we've seen it from the ground, down near coal. What you got? Uh, okay, so uh, injuries in coal, which from the damage we've seen from our crews and trackers and the debris we had in the air and all that, um, we don't know how many injuries, but for sure we have injuries, which is the worst part of this whole thing. So, okay, that's not good. Okay. Um, we hate it. This is why we do what we do. But that was a big tornado, and it was a strong tornado. It was at least an EF2, maybe as high as an EF3, and doing, doing, doing damage for sure. Let's go back to this one more time, and let's talk about this tornado down here. Let's, let's zoom back in here. Now, I'll point, point out, eastern Oklahoma County, Choctaw, Hera, these storms have weakened. They're moving off to the east. This is the only game in town now is this big conglomerate of supercells that have merged into one. We've got the big one. We've got the other big one coming in behind it. And uh, right now, the eastern storm is lacking a tight area of circulation, okay? But the area back to the west near pink, it continues to get a little bit stronger. So let's go ahead and zoom on in. 
and uh, take a closer look here. It's going right down Highway 9. There's pink. This is going to be circulating right here. And uh, anything on shear rate, guys? And remember, this is going to Tecumseh right now. Okay. Is this trying to tighten up now over Clark Heights? It's Clark broad. Heights? It's broad, but there is definitely circulation there. There it is. Yes. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to turn off these warnings again. Uh, this is OBU. There's OB OBU campus. There's Shawnee, there's Gaddy, Bethel Acres, Dale, right? The casino's right there. This is Twin Lakes. Area of spin right here. Coming down Highway 9. Well, you can see it spin yourself. See that? And that's going to Tecumseh. Tornado warning for you. Lowest level, center part of the house. Tecumseh, if you live on or near either side of Highway 9, safe spot, lowest level. And then the other area of spin right here, uh, developing near Clark Heights. The area that was spinning up to the northwest, that's gone. It looks like to me that's, that's no longer there. Okay. All right, so that's good, but we now have these other problems that have popped up. All right, so what, uh, just real quick here. Yes. Uh, I'm looking at Tom's location. There's Hank. Oh, there's some big hail in here too, folks. Damaging hail. It just continues. And uh, look at the hail in here. Golf ball, tennis ball, baseball, big hail, twin lakes. Let's go to Tom Pastrano, and uh, he's coming in from the west. Tom, uh, give me an update on the hail. We're showing some big hail. It looks like just to your north and east. What's the biggest hail you've had here in the last 10 minutes? Yeah, coming from some, maybe some quarter-sized hail. Hasn't been too huge like earlier. Um, I have come across some damage. I came across about a six foot diameter tree, an oak tree that has been sheared and blown across the road, and then some, some tin. So I'm not sure if this was the path of the tornado earlier, but that's the only damage I have seen back then. Down okay, all right, good job there, Tom. So, Tom. Again, uh, he's making his way east, and the tornado warning does continue, okay? And uh, let me show you what's going on here. We've got a couple areas of spin, and remember, these go up, they come down, and then it seems like they go up, they down, they come down, and then they ramp back up. And it's like flipping a switch, and then they get back into that kind of that crazy mode. All right, so we have an area of circulation on Highway 9, which is here, and another area of circulation, which is uh, right up here. It's, it's a little bit farther north. It's right here. Let's just take a look at that. And uh, where's Val in all this? Lace? Uh, let me zoom out. Sorry. Uh, he's where Hank is. They're okay. in the same location. They're yeah. together? Yes. Okay, they're still in rain, aren't they? Yes, yeah, so you're wanting to go farther north? Yeah, I want to see okay. this, little, yes. this right here. Approaching I-40 now. Yeah. What is, uh, oh. There you go. There you go. Here comes the next tornado. Just like clockwork. We're average about one every about 15 minutes. And that's also near a casino. That one is now two miles west of the Kickapoo. Uh, the Kickapoo's over here, a little smaller casino, right? Yes, down below your, yep. yep. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it says you go into, okay. So that's west of you, but this is going to be another developing tornado. At 45th Street and North South 336 and Gaddy Road. Gaddy Road. Gaddy Road. And Val Caster is right there within a mile or yep. less. Let's go to Val. Let's bring Val in. Val, look to your east-southeast, one and a half miles. One and a half miles, Val, to your southeast, developing tornado right now. Do we have Val? We just got out of golf ball size hail, uh, and, and I, I can confirm the wind direction right before we got on I-40. We're going east on 40, but when we're going north on 102, we started getting probably 60 or 65 mile an hour north winds and golf ball size hail. So that would indicate the rotation being where you said just to our east southeast so right now we're going east on 40 and we're going to try to we ought to be getting out of the rain pretty soon and being able to get a shot of it but uh earlier we all we did see power flashes in that direction so we're keeping a very close eye on it david hey justin let's get tom south and east get him blasting east and then down on that tecumseh thing or we can bring marty back south Brandon's right there on 9 west of Tecumseh. He is? Well, let's yes. go to Brandon Pennell. Oh, your GPS doesn't work. Let's go to Brandon. Brandon Pennell, uh, circulation is coming right down Highway 9, and uh, we now have a substantial hook on and just north of Highway 9, 
one, two, three, four miles west of Tecumseh. What's your exact location? Okay, Kylie. and I'm going to be about, four. can you hear me? Go ahead, take it. Okay, so I'm going to probably be four to five miles straight west of Tecumseh on Highway 9 headed eastbound. Um, there are multiple areas right now that are of concern. Um, it's really hard to tell in the dark with all the trees, you know, what is rotating harder than the next. But just the way that this thing continues to evolve, my fear at the moment is that if, if multiple circulations can find a way to come together because this is the only game in town now, that we could have a significant tornado like we did, like we had back at Cole. I know it's nighttime and it's coming into a really heavy, po heavy populated area. So we're continuing east into Tecumseh, into the Southwest Shawnee area, and we'll be right there as it comes um, down high. Hey, uh, we just have power flashes to our north, um, on the north side of Highway 9, just back to my northwest. So there possibly could be a tornado on the ground, north of Highway 9, um, back to my what northwest um tracking east northeast so if you live in shawnee north tecumseh uh now's your now's your ticket to get under uh, underground and take um, take take your precautions sorry david there's a lot going on um so we're going to continue east we'll be in tecumseh here in just a minute and be able to look back to the west northwest back to you brandon listen to me right now go to tecumseh make a left it is on the ground doing damage it's three miles west of tecumseh and two miles north Go to Tecumseh, make a hard left. You're going to go right up 177, and the tornado is going to be to your left out your window. Folks, this is serious for Shawnee. This has just developed. We've been watching it the whole time. Don't get me wrong, but it is ramped up. There's the tornado now. It's crossing Farm Road, north-south, 337. Watch the tornado develop. Boom. Highway, excuse me, road, 337. There's your tornado. East-west road, 119. Tornado, tornado. Right there, this is Shawnee. Now, is this gonna occlude and lift to the north and head up towards the small community of Gaddy? By the way, Bethel Acres, you've had one tornado in the last 30 minutes. You're gonna get another one out of your southeast. I'm telling you, Bethel Acres, I keep saying it. This place is crazy for severe weather. Um, and it always happens at night over here. It always happens at night. And they get crazy stuff like that over here. Everything else kinda goes west, you know, southwest, clues some, but. Bethel Acres, this whole area is notorious for getting stuff that spins, spins left, turns to the hard left, occludes, does a complete circle. All right, so there's a tornado now. Right now, you folks in Tecumseh, you're not going to get a tornado. It's to your northwest, okay? Tornado's right here. It's on the ground. It is doing damage. It's right here. That's the tornado. This is Shawnee. Let's do a storm track, and let's include Shawnee in that. We hope it doesn't go to Shawnee. It's already finished. It's, oh my it's gosh. On Lake Story. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to come into West Shawnee. Unless it, unless it makes a hard left, it's got to do it now. It's got to do it now. Okay. All right, you folks in Shawnee. Tornado. There's your tornado. It's now crossing North South Road 338 and coming up on East West Road 117. Tornado on the ground. Okay, that's the tornado. It is on the ground. It is doing oh, damage. And velocity just continues to get stronger with it. Okay, this is now, now we've got a strong tornado on the ground. Shawnee, Shawnee, Shawnee. Listen to me. Pay attention. Safe spot from Shawnee West, a mile and a half. From Shawnee West, two miles. Lowest level, center part of the house. You got to go now. You have to go now. That'll be less than 10 minutes. There's the tornado. There's the tornado. It's right here, folks. It can't, I, can't, I can't hand it to you any easier than that. It's, it's going up and crossing uh, north-south farm road, 338. And it's, it's coming into Shawnee. If it doesn't occlude and lift to the north, it's going to Shawnee. Shawnee, right now, Shawnee, Shawnee. It is still moving in that northeasterly direction. It, go to, it has not changed. Go yet. to velocity data. Okay. Here we go. Tornado, let's do it. Tornado emergency for Shawnee. It's a big oh, community. Man. Tornado emergency for Shawnee. You, you got to go to your safe spot. You got to do it now. If, if it occludes, fine, but only God knows that that's going to happen in the next five minutes. If it makes a left turn, if you're west of Shawnee, you're still going to get the, the, the tornado. There's a chance this goes across Shawnee, downtown Shawnee, OBU, okay? 
If it doesn't die or lift to the north, it's going to Shawnee, at least on the western and northern sides. Do not mess around with this, folks. This is a strong tornado now. It's an EF2 or stronger. It's an EF2 or stronger. Yep, strong tornado now. Listen up, 90, 50, yep. Winds of 100 miles, it's a, yeah, it's an EF2. EF2, on the ground, doing damage. On the ground, doing damage, coming into Shawnee. If you're in Shawnee, if you, if you live in Shawnee, back to Highway 177, back west on Highland Avenue or West Road 117, if you know somebody who lives here, call them, text them, wake them up, tell them it's coming into town. Strong tornado, now moving into Shawnee. It's coming into Shawnee. It's doing it right now. It, it, it might turn. It might turn and just barely skirt the western sides of Shawnee, but there's a chance that it it at least goes across the northwestern side. It's getting so close to OBU as we speak now. Here's OBU. OBU, Oklahoma Baptist University. Val is on I-40, just a couple miles to the north, get, along with Marty. Justin, Justin, get Val south. Get, just get him south into, into Shawnee. I want all trackers flooding to Shawnee right now. All trackers getting into Shawnee. There is a debris signature. Okay, let's go back. Three. Let's go back to shear rate. Let's take a look at this. We'll go to velocity data. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom on in here, Lace. Let's go ahead and let's go in tight. Okay, I'm gonna Brandon go back to our live. Power flashes currently. Who, who has power flashes? Brandon. Let's go to Brandon He's now. North on 177. Okay, Brandon, uh, take it. You're hot. Take it. Go, Brandon. Power flashes. Okay. Sean, tornado okay, in Shawnee. David. David, that is correct. I'm at I'm at 177 in Hardesty Road. Um, the power flashes are just a. Hang on, David. Oh, David, I'm right in front of the tornado. I can hear the roar. Um, it's going to be just to my west. Um, this may be a real significant tornado, David. Um, there's a lot of mist in the air. I can hear the roar just out to my west as I, as, as I creep north on 177. We just had multiple power flashes off to the west, northwest. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. There's lack of lightning in the moment, and it is just a big, dark bowl to my west, David. Um, I would say, oh, I, I think I just saw the left side of the tornado, David. Um, it, it, it looks to be like a significantly large tornado moving west or moving northeast. Oh gosh, I got, I'm in a bad, I'm in a bad spot. Hey, I, I got a blast north, David. I can hear it. It's a, it's a large tornado west of 177, south of 270, moving east northeast. I got. 60, 70 mile an hour east inflow going into the storm, David. I'm uh, crossing the North Canadian River right now for people that live in the southwest side of Shawnee. Mm -hmm. So Hardesty Road to 270 on 177. The tornado is still west of 177. Um, it's tracking almost due east just from my wind direction. Um, I'll be back with you in just a second, hopefully with a better shot. But we're taking 70, 80 mile an hour east northeast winds right now flowing back into the tornado, David. Back to you. Brandon, first of all, uh, take care of yourself first. <laughs> um, we don't want to lose Brandon, but he is in a very, very, very bad situation right now. He has a northeast wind at 60 to 70. That's in flow. He is basically on the outer wall of the tornado, and he's trying to get into Shawnee, okay? So we need Brandon to, to, be, to be safe on this. This is going to be a strong tornado coming into the western sides of Shawnee, west of 177. It's a strong tornado. Um, he's as power flashes and all the above. Let's go back to radar. Let me show you what it looks like on Lynx One. Tom Justin, is closing in too. Justin, please tell me what the latest on Brandon when he gets back in. There's a tornado, right? And uh, okay, there's a tornado. This is OBU. Okay, let me go to our live. There we go. Okay, so it's it's right here. What does shear rate look like? Okay. Yeah, this, um, this is this is this is the latest with our live radar of yeah. where it actually is. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, it's 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 right here. I'm gonna laugh that so you can see the hook come up. It's right here, folks. It is coming into Shawnee, West Shawnee. Go ahead and zoom on in. Tornado yeah. right here. All right, I'm gonna go to our live that's pulsing so you can see that. Okay. And, and power is, is out without in Shawnee. It power is out in Shawnee. 177. Okay, what's that? It looks like it is crossing. Yeah, no, right now. Yeah, it's crossing. Yes, it is. And that is Shawnee High School. Okay, uh, right, this is, okay, Shawnee High School right here. This is downtown Shawnee. This is the tornado. It's now crossing State Highway 3 or 177. Tornado emergency for Shawnee. If you're not in your safe spot, you got to go now. You don't have any time.
You got to go now. Shawnee, Shawnee. It's going to go across the western and northwestern sides of town. Tornado in Shawnee doing damage. We have debris in the air. Tornado's right here. It's now crossing Highway 3. This is, this is not delayed radar data. This is live, only on News 9, okay? You're not going to see this anywhere else. Let's do it. Tornado emergency for Shawnee. Tornado emergency for Shawnee. Please, lowest level, center part of the house. You got to go now. Storm shelter, you got to go. You got to go now. Downtown Shawnee, this is going across parts of downtown through west and north of downtown. Tornado in Shawnee doing damage right now. What does shear rate look like? And Brandon's northeast of the tornado, and he had tennis ball size hail, no power in Shawnee. Okay. All right. And we'll go back to Brandon here coming up in just a second. Um, what does the CC look like? There's your tornado. That's still still behind. Okay. Let's, Lefties are alive. Yeah, go back to live. This is the tornado here. All right, let's go back to Brandon Pennell now. Let's find out where Brandon, give me your exact location. Give me your exact location. Has it crossed one, uh, 177? Give me an update. Okay, David, um, we're still north on 177. Um, we've lost power, but we're getting tennis balls falling out of the sky. Um, we've lost power on 177 as well. I mean, massive hail is falling out of the sky now to our north. I mean, right where we at. The tornado is going to be just to my south and southeast. So it has, it's probably crossing 177 as we speak to my south. Um, it's coming directly into the southwest sides of Shawnee and then up towards, again, the mall. I mean, right through OBU. It, it has a beeline from what I could tell as we were in the circulation for the heart of Shawnee. I cannot stress enough if you live in Shawnee. I was just front and center with it. And this is not something to mess around with. There's going to be extensive damage. It is a big tornado, David. People in Shawnee have to take this serious right now. I cannot stress that enough. Get underground. Back to you. Yeah, and again, uh, go to your uh, lowest level, center part of the house. Um, again, you, you can be above ground in a storm shelter or a closet or a bathroom. Okay, you can do that, and, and that's fine. Center part of the house, no. Second floor of a house, get off the second floor, go to the first floor, center part of the house. This is a tornado emergency for Shawnee as uh, Brandon and our trackers continue, and we are tracking it live with our Next Gen Live, our million watt radar tornado now moving through the western and northwestern sides of Shawnee. Hopefully it will lift and weaken. Let's go to Valcaster, and we know we have debris. We know we have some damage, at least back to the west and southwest. Let's go to Val and get an update from Val. Val, uh, we have problems. Shawnee has problems right now. What do you think? Big problems, David. We are at I-40 in Kickapoo right now on a bridge over I-40. Uh, the, the tornado has got to be just to our southwest or south-southwest. South, um, we are listening for the roar. We have northeast winds. We had hail. We still have a little bit of hail, but the golf balls have quit. Go ahead, Val. I'm listening for the roar. I hear something. Okay. Uh, they're off. Tail lights are off. Okay, we're looking for it with roof cam here with with our roof cam. Um, I'm just a little concerned that it might turn left. I can't see it. Um, the traffic has stopped. There's still traffic on I-40. Uh, the traffic in town is completely dark in Shawnee right now. Completely dark. I mean, it's very eerie out here, David. Completely dark. Um, the wind is slowing down. Um, we're getting light northeast winds. And the lightning, I'm looking hard to try to see it through our south and southwest. Cannot see it yet. I'm starting to see some structure now uh, to our south, southwest. Oh, what was that? Look. Um, let me turn the flashers off here. What was that? I see structure. Listen for the roar. Do you hear the roar yet? Yeah. Okay, we're listening very close for the roar. We've got the windows down, We're trying to see if we can hear it. Um, I see, oh my goodness, I see something. Look over here. Look over here to, look to the east. Hey, Val, just hang okay, on. Okay, the wind, look, yeah, look, hey, Val. look to the east. There's something hanging down to the east. Look right there. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it, Val, it see looks. That? It, look at that in our shot. It's right it, here, it, Val. It's, it's a big funnel. It's right yes, here, it's Val. It's, shot. it's a big funnel. Val, it should be almost on top of you. There it is. It's right here. 
It's, there is a left side of it. It's, it's right there in front of us, David. It's on the ground right there. It's crossing 40 right now, a half a mile or less yeah. straight east of us. Oh, good night. I see debris on the ground. I don't know if you can see that or not. Oh, man, wind's picking up. I, I see wind, the tornado. No, the tornado. It's going straight north. There it is. Tornado's crossing I-40. Tornado's crossing. Crossing I-40 right in front of us. Good night. Val, what's in front of you? What are the Woo! lights there? Is that the mall? That's the mall, yes. Is the mall getting a, hit? High-speed wind. The, the mall looks like it's about to get hit, David. I don't know if this is... Okay. <sighs> Good night. Okay. All right, we're gonna, we got east. We got northeast wind. Strong so, northeast wind. I'm going to bust north here. Okay. Val, please be safe. <sighs> oh. Yep, yep. What? Yes. He was saying it crossed his east. Yes, it, but he's at the mall. I mean, let's go back to Links 1 here. Let's go back to Links 1. Yeah, this is Val. There's the mall. And that, he, that video right there, that's the mall where it was crossing. So it's crossed. It went across Shawnee, northwest, west through northwest side. Folks, we did this February 26th. Same place. February 26th. Big outbreak. Biggest outbreak in February history. We did the same thing. It went right across the mall with tornado damage. We're doing it again. This time it's been on the ground for a lot longer. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, for and sure. And I'm not able to talk to Tom, but he is driving through damage right now. Okay. Uh, south west of Shawnee. Okay, um, let's go back to Tom here. Is he in the system? I could not get a hold of him, so I don't think he can hear you. Okay, he's, okay, this is his shot. He's and, on Hardesty Road. Okay, he's at, uh, he and, is southeast of Bethel Acres, uh, three miles. Uh, Tom's actually there, there. He can go to him. Tom, <laughs> give me an update. What's your exact location? Go ahead, Tom. Okay, I'm on Hardesty Road, uh, just about the 177. I, I see some power flashes to my north, and it looks like a large tornado is still on the ground to my north, northeast. Um, and there's just quite a bit of damage. There's lots of huge trees that are on Hardesty Road. I can't go past. Uh, I can't get to 177, so I'm basically blocked off. But it looks like a, a something really big to my north, northwest, northeast. Southwest of Shawnee and, and to Tom, what kind of damage do you see there? Give us just a quick update on, on how big and how bad the damage is right there. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few trees that are down. Um, it looks like they're doing some search and rescue down in this little valley, um, I can't tell. The house looks like it's intact. So far, right now, it looks like maybe some EF1 damage in this location, but it's probably a lot more substantial as you get closer to 177. I just can't get through because of the huge trees that are blocking the road. Back to you. Okay, all right, great job, Tom. Awesome job, as always. So folks, we know we have damage. We've been saying debris, we've got debris in the air, we have debris in the air, and. No doubt about it. But Shawnee took a direct hit for sure. Okay, let's go back to uh, radar here, Links 1. And uh, let's see what's going on now. Val is now to the north of I-40. Brandon is on I-40. And what's that, Justin? He's talking to the trackers. Okay. Tornado's going to be on the ground. Uh, Val, there's the tornado right when it came out. And what is velocity day? Anything showing up on that right now? Okay, there it is. All right, let's go to Brandon Pennell. He's on I-40. Brandon, tornadoes crossed I-40, it looks like, to your north. Give us an update. What's going on? Uh, Val had it cross on I-40, as, as did you. Go ahead. David, okay, we got a, we're taking, we're taking 110 mile an hour west wind, west northwest winds. The tornado is crossing I-40 right now due to my east. Um, we're probably one mile west of Shawnee on I-40, um, looking due east. It just crossed I-40. Um, somewhere, I mean, I hate to say this, but almost the same track as the tornado that I was on in February. Almost literally the same exact track. But I can tell you as it crossed I-40, we took every bit of 100 to 110 mile an hour winds out of the west-northwest being pulled back into the circulation as it was crossing I-40 to the north. Now we've got debris falling out of the sky. Um, a significant tornado just crossed I-40 west of Shawnee. Um, it's so dark, there's zero power. Uh, so we're going to continue east now that I know the tornado has crossed to the north, and we'll be, we'll be, we'll be, we're going to be right here with it. You can see from the mist of all of the – zoom out on that camera, zoom out, zoom out. You can see all the inflow that's being pulled back up in now from the southwest 
um, as this tornado continues to track off to the east northeast. Back to you, David. Brandon, jump back in when you get to the path. You're almost to the path where the tornado crossed on I-40. And uh, folks, this is an absolute nightmare. This is a big, this is a strong tornado. We know we have significant damage. Uh, Shawnee, back to the southwest of some kind. Trackers are there. Uh, we have news crews en route. And uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. There's the tornado now, just crossing, just, just crossing um, I-40 now. And it crossed, you know, right there, bows to the north. There's Brandon there. And uh, this thing is lifting to the north. So we know, we know we have damage to the north and to the west. And again, to the northwest and southwest sides of OBU, of Shawnee, OBU campus. We might have damage there. We're going to have to get in there. This just happened in the last 10 minutes, right? But this is where the tornado is. It's right here. It's like we said, it's pretty close to the outlet mall and crossing I-40. All right, let's go back um, to Brandon. Let's see what he has. Brandon, give us an update. Have you crossed the damage path yet? Tornado looks like it's still on the ground. Go ahead. Have you crossed the damage path yet, Brandon? Uh, yes, David. We, we came through the damage path. I did not see any cars on I-40 in the... Uh, we're pulling up right here. You can see what it's done to these signs. Just completely shredded these signs as it crossed I-40. Um, and this is probably three quarters of a mile further east than what it was when we were taking the 100 mile an hour winds out of the west northwest um so you know it's, what i thought the, when i thought the tornado had completely crossed i-40 we creeped probably another quarter to a uh, third of a mile and we started getting southwest winds at probably 80 to 90 and then you could just see the cloud bank as it was going over the top of i-40 I mean, it was a, just a ground hugger, and I can't even estimate how, how big the tornado was, but just the circulation itself was almost completely on the ground. And I'm going to estimate, just, just by the visual that I could see from the clouds, somewhere between a quarter to a half a mile wide of circulation that no more than 50 to 75 feet off the ground, not including the main tornado. So we're going to continue into Shawnee. Like I said, there is zero power, and I expect to find a significant amount of damage just from what I just experienced here in the last 15 to 20 minutes. Back to you. Okay, uh, Brandon, here's the deal. Uh, you know, I've done this a long time. Are, do we know that cars were not swept off of I-40? Because I see cars that have stopped over here, and they're probably stopped because they just had their life uh, flash before them. But we don't know for sure if cars weren't swept off, right? A car could have easily been swept off and thrown to the north or back to the right. Yes, no, that, that is 100% correct. I just yeah. personally have not seen any cars stranded yet. Now, what you just said, there are cars that are pulled off to the side of the road. It may be because of debris in the uh, – I take that back. I do think now that I've come a little bit further east into what appears to be the damage path. There's, there are a couple of cars underneath. Watch out. And I just drove over power lines. I didn't know they were there. I couldn't see them. Um, but there are cars parked underneath okay, the bridge – at I-40, um, I think this is the Kickapoo exit, uh -huh. right at the mall. Yep. So, and the mall is just completely black. I can't see anything at the moment uh, except for just a few headlights on I-40. I mean, we're still in 50, 40, 50, 60 mile an hour um, winds coming out, out of the west, so it's, the visibility is extremely poor right now. I can see, though, now that I'm coming a little bit further east, um, I can see a little bit of power on to my east. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see the mall, but I, I can't. Okay, let's, let's switch. Let's go to Val. And uh, Brandon's just in a bad cell area. Plus, there's a lot of 911 calls going in, so the cell lines, they get jammed up, and that's what happens when you have a 911 uh, tornado emergency going on. Let's go to Val Castor. Val, um, tornado's going to be just at your front window, buddy. And you've seen a lot. It's obviously north of I-40. You're right there looking right at it. What do you think? Give us an update. Yeah, we are seeing tornado uh we could we just saw a de very defined back edge and now we're starting to see the the front edge uh we are one mile and a half north of i-40 and we're looking straight east tornado is from the ground almost due east of us right now uh that would be in my estimation is where it is um and probably maybe not quite a mile and a half north 40 yet but uh we have there's Highway 18. Okay, so we do have an update. There it is. It is straight east of us. Uh, and the rain just now came over, so we can't see it like we did a while ago. 
but David, it was a wedge. Uh, I kid you not, it, it was a total wedge from what I could see. Um, very, very strong tornado. Uh, we were in the north, I guess you could say the north wraparound, the north edge, and we were probably getting 80 to 90 mile an hour winds north and then northeast and then straight east. Um, now our winds are straight east, but they've slacked off quite a bit. Uh, but I guarantee you the torn, even though it's rain wrap, it's on the ground directly east of us. Uh, this road here, David, is um, Garrett's Lake Road. So this is Garrett's Lake Road, and it goes east and west. So if you live on Garrett's Lake Road, it, uh, you better be in your safe spot now. And it's probably, I'm going to say, either on or west of Kickapoo Avenue, um, maybe even as far west as Leo Avenue, um, right on Garrett's Lake Road. So very bad situation, David. This, this tornado is big. It means business. I, uh, don't mess around with it. I, yeah, go ahead. Okay, let me just jump in here. Val, the tornado looks like it's just to your... It's crossing in front of you, maybe a half mile to your east. With with it's on the ground. It, like you said, it's a big tornado. It's a strong tornado, and it's lifting bow north northwest. It's lifting north northwest. Right. Okay, it's occluded that okay. far, and it, to me, um, I have debris in the air. Val, I have debris in the air, a mile north of you right now. Yeah. Okay. A mile north of you. Um, Road 110. Road 110. Got Road, it. You're on 111. You go north to 110. You're right there. But but if you go east, you'll be in behind it. If you want to turn around and go back a half mile to your road and then go north, you'll catch it again. But please be careful. We'll go back to Val here coming up. Let's go back to radar and let's go back to Lynx 1. And let me show you what it looks like here. There's the tornado on the ground doing damage. That is a debris detector. And it's blue. Anytime you see it going from the reds quickly, and now this is popping up. This is another radar product that we have only on News 9. That's an algorithm that's built into the system that we can confirm it many, many ways that we have debris, looking at velocity data, looking at tracker video feeds and all that, of course, yes. But this also tells you, it looks at the radar data and it says, you know what, everything inside that is, it's not rain, it's not liquid, um, it's not hail, and it's going to be debris. It's going to be trees and homes and whatever else. And then, see the donut hole? There's no rain, very little rain, right, inside of the tornado. That's the tornado there that's lifting off to the north-northwest. So towards Jacktown or possibly Meeker. Meeker. But those are the two. Yeah. Yeah, you folks in Meeker, um, there it is. There's, oh, oh gosh. Folks, yeah, this it, is. It's not changed its look. If anything, it crossed I-40 and strengthened a little. Folks, it's moving almost due north right now. Right now, it's if I'm in Meeker, I'm blowing the sirens and I'm running through town. Between Meeker and west of Meeker, between Meeker and Jacktown, this could occlude and go to Jacktown, okay? So listen up. If you have any interest, any friends, family, I'll say it again, uh, in Meeker or between Meeker and Jacktown, let them know. Heads up. It's coming. I know it's late. Some people go to bed at 8. I get it. Wake them up. If they're a next-door neighbor that live next to you, and you like them or you don't like them, go wake them up. Tell them the tornado's coming. And it's, it, there, there's your tornado. I, I can't get it down to any better street level than that. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom on in on this. Let's get our streets here. Uh, Moccasin Trail. And what's the north-south here? Moccasin Trail and Leo Street. Th there's a tornado. And that's a strong tornado right now, okay? So anybody that lives out here knows where this is. It's crossing mock, there, look at the debris signature. Tornado in, on the ground, debris lofted in the air, 15, 20,000 feet up. Look, look at that no hole. Precip. No precip, why? It's a donut hole because there's a tornado right here. Right here, right now, live on News 9. And it's, it's gonna try to go to Jacktown or Meeker Oh, it's going to split the uprights like on Sunday afternoon and go in between the two. But folks live, this is Highway 62. This is a busy highway. People, there's farms all in here. And this tornado is on the ground right now doing damage. Doing damage right now.
You know, and it is nighttime. It's 10 o'clock at night. A lot of folks, you know, would be in bed right now. Hopefully, if you yeah. know folks, you are calling them, waking them up, making sure they are paying attention. Yeah. That this is this is dark. Our trackers right now are tra are tracking by lightning flashes. You're and not going to see this at all. Yeah. And and it's done some significant damage, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Any new information out of Shawnee? Not, not that I have seen. Okay. No. Um, the last thing, we had wind gusts in Shawnee. This was after it moved by, 84 mile an hour wind gusts yeah. in Shawnee. That, and that, that was just yes. close to the tornado. Right. Um, are we getting, uh, Justin, are we getting Tom into Shawnee? Yeah. Okay. David, I just wanted to chime in. Go ahead, go ahead, Andrew. Show the video camera, but that area southeast hey, Andrew. of Johnson. There you go, got your mic on. Go ahead, take it. That area southeast of Johnson, keep a close eye on, because it looks like it's doing similarly what we've seen happen six times tonight where it's starting to kind of get that absolutely notice to ramp up a little bit might tighten pretty quickly oh right here mm -hmm. yeah you're yeah, right just southeast of johnson moving northeast yeah yeah no yeah yeah i see it yeah yeah look at it on reflectivity there's the main circulation okay and this one over here is trying to stay alive yeah nor north of neil and uh, yeah and this has yeah. a shot of a car that was obviously i think hit by the tornado there oh my gosh yep let's go back to hank Okay, so folks, we'll check back in with Val. Let's go to Hank. And to Hank, that is what a tornado looks like after it's hit. Oh, no. Or excuse me, after a vehicle's hit by a tornado. Hank, give us an update. Uh, you've been a volunteer, firefighter, policeman. You've done it all. What do you think? Give us an update as you look at the uh, damage there. Go ahead. Well, I see a car that's in pretty bad shape, uh, highway patrol. Uh, there was a, a whole convoy of them coming, and they've kind of split. A couple of them are here. I've seen first responders go up to that vehicle, and then I'm seeing them with flashlights walking through the field. So I'm going to say that's not a good sign, but that car was obviously rolled uh, and tumbled. And just from my experience, if they are looking in other places, they are looking for perhaps occupants that were ejected from the vehicle. Um, I don't know that. That's just my observation from this far away. But that's that's what I would uh, would think that they are checking to make sure there's no occupant. Hopefully, this was just a broke down car that was on the side of the road when the, the tornado come through, and they'll they'll tag it and clear it and go on. Uh, that'd be the best case scenario. But uh, this is an I-40 in Kickapoo, so this is right here where. Uh, Brandon and Val were both talking about um, now seeing first responders moving out of the way that's a good sign to me so perhaps this was just a disabled vehicle uh, but I do see you know obviously the tornado came right through here there's signs that are damaged there's debris laying in the road uh, and I've heard scanner reports of multiple people uh, trapped in homes in Shawnee so uh, law enforcement, first responders are kind of converging on this area and starting to do what all these guys and gals do. So uh, that's here from my 40 and kick through. Back to you, David. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully that's what it was, but uh, no doubt about it, that car has, uh, yeah, that truck, it's, it's got problems. I mean, it's been rolled and flipped and all that. So this is where the tornado went through. We hope the folks weren't in it. Since the crews are leaving, maybe that's, yeah, that's a good sign, like Hank said. Okay, let's get back to it. Links one, tornado continues on the ground. Um, circulation out. There's Meeker. Tornado warning for you for Meeker. Back to Jacktown. The tornado, like I said, it might split the uprights and go right and shoot the gap, go right up between. But if it occludes and pulls left, it's going to Jacktown. Or if it makes it a little bit of a right. If I'm in Meeker right now, you got about five minutes, ten minutes. Lowest level, center part of the house. Meeker, 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 Meeker. Okay. You got to go. Crossing into Lincoln County right now. Yes, this is the Lincoln County line. Pottawatomie County's here. Lincoln County's here. Highway 62. It's coming right up 18. There's a tornado. It's, it's, it's crossing. It's crossing into Pot County. Boom. Man. Ate a lot. Man. Ugh. It is still very strong. Gee, many Christmas. Okay, there's the tornado. Say that again. Val has damage. Okay, let's go back to Val Caster. Meeker, Jacktown, safe spot, lowest level. Let's go to Val Caster. He's still on the tornado. 
And Val, you found some damage. Go ahead. Tornado just to your north now. Give me an update. Okay, so David, right now, we the tornado is just to our north. Uh, we are on, this road here is north-south 340 road, and we're north of um, whatever that lake road, it was uh, Garrett's Lake Road. We're just barely north of Garrett's Lake Road. The tornado crossed right here, at least the, the right side of it. What do you hear? Somebody's yelling. Hello? Somebody's yelling. We're going to get out and look for somebody here. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go. Yeah. Is that We're Amy? We're going to go look for somebody is here. Is that Amy talking or is yes. that somebody yelling? That's, that's Amy talking, but we hear somebody yelling. Hello? Okay. Uh, this is the worst part of what we do. Okay. Um, we will get back with Val. Let's get back hey, to the David, tornado. David, David, Hank David. has more damage. Than They're, okay. They're okay. They're okay. David. Okay. Go ahead, hey, Val. Get this shot up here. The family is just now coming back to their house. Okay. Are y'all okay? You're 19, your 90 year old grandma is in the house? Yeah. All right, let's go see. Is she... Okay, the 90 year old grandma is in the house. Is she... uh, the family, have y'all been in the house yet? No? Where's the grandma? Okay, is she okay? Okay, the grandma's okay. She's out. Wow. Hi, how you doing? I'm Val, Val Caster. How you doing? Okay, well, we we think this has uh, a, a great ending. This house has been hit by a tornado. 90-year-old grandma was in there. The family, the other part of the family, out wherever they were, they got to the place just when Val did. And the grandma seems to be okay. Is that what we're getting out of this? So thank goodness. Okay, um, let's go back to Lynx One, and then we'll come back to Val. He'll find out the rest of the story. So, folks, this is reality TV at its worst, right? All this is going on. We've got tornadoes still on the ground right now. Let's talk about this. This tornado is still on the ground. And Velocity data has weakened slightly. It has. With that circulation. The new circulation uh, is now approaching Centerview and Prague. It's not very organized, but it is getting tighter. Okay, we need to, uh, yeah, who do we have going eastbound? Is Marty, we need to get, we need to get Marty going east. Uh, look at that last scan, David, how, how much the velocity has spread out and that circulation has widened as it crosses yeah. into Lincoln County. And it's, it's just doing this, yeah, which is crazy. It's a good thing, that is a good thing. Yeah, no, that, that, yeah, that's what she means by that, yes. It's, it's loosening, it's weakening, it's winds are coming down, it's not getting stronger. And a shear rate is responding accordingly. Shear rate's getting less and less and less. Okay, but th this is still a tornado on the ground. It's just a much weaker tornado than what it was. There's Meeker. There's the tornado. There's the hook. And you're thinking, doesn't it look like hook? Well, it's wrapped in rain. A lot of it is. These were not hanging out. Some of these tornadoes were completely shrouded in rain. New circulation now developing near Garden Grove, which is right here. And we have the original. Well, can't say the original. This thing is cycled so many times. So many times, but this is the other area of circulation there, uh, near south and east of Jacktown, right here. Now crossing into Lincoln County. It's taking his time doing it. Yes. It's um, definitely not fast, but Meeker, the Jacktown. If I'm in Meeker, if I'm in Jacktown, lowest level, my tornado place, and I'm doing it now. Let's go to Hank. Let's bring in Hank. Shot. Hank has damage. Let's find out where Hank is and what kind of damage he has. Hank, how extensive is the damage from what you've seen so far in Shawnee and exactly what's your location? David, this is I-40 in Kickapoo. So those familiar with Shawnee, the Shawnee Mall is on my north. This is the McDonald's that Patty is showing you on the south side. So there's a Bricktown Brewery here. There's a couple of other restaurants that are all right here. The Lowe's, the uh, IHOP, Staples, all of that in this business district. And I've seen multiple cars tumbled. I almost think that car we were showing you a while ago probably came out of one of these parking lots. Uh, and you can see that the McDonald's here has taken extensive damage. Of course, all the power lines are snapped. In the top left of the screen, you can see the McDonald's sign is, is just twisted. So you, you can tell what the winds were like. So there is an armada of emergency vehicles here. I-40, there appears to be power lines that are maybe hanging down off of the Kickapoo Bridge. 
and I-40 looks to be, westbound looks to be at almost a complete stop. Um, so there's significant damage here. Every building I can see or every sign I can see, there appears to be some type of damage. Now that the McDonald's, zoom in on that McDonald's. Now the McDonald's, while it has damage, you can see that it's still standing. So it either did not take a direct hit or the tornado was, you know, not an F3 or, or bigger or something like that, or it just didn't take a direct hit. You know how we see these things that it hits one and misses. Buildings are still standing. So uh, I'm just going to guess right off the bat it's probably F2 damage uh, around here. But, uh, yeah, it's quite a scene with uh, – multiple law enforcement everywhere and multiple people that are just kind of stuck around here, not really knowing where to go or what to do uh, as law enforcement's trying to get through and first responders are trying to get through and, you know, find people that might be trapped in their homes or in their cars. Back to you, David. Okay. All right. So folks, this is Shawnee and this is just a small sample. Uh, this tornado was a long track tornado. Uh, it was on the ground 15, 20 miles, might've been longer. It was intermittent. It was off. It was on. It was strong at some times. Might have even been what we call a violent tornado. Strong as an EF2 or higher, violent. You get up to the EF3, EF4 range. We'll see. But I know these tornadoes were all, all strong. Looking at velocity data, looking at our debris detector, how high the debris was, lofted into the sky. And you got to have a heck of an updraft to be able to take debris and sling it that high in the sky. An EF1, not going to do that. You got to get into the EF2, the EF3 range with an updraft to be able to support boards and everything else that's been picked up that is lofted thousands of feet up, okay? So uh, we called this on February 26th. We were saying EF1s, EF2s, EF3s, and uh, that's exactly what we ended up with, and we're doing that again tonight. So um, the circulation now moving in Lincoln County continues to weaken, and uh, that's good. Let's go back to reflectivity, and I want to take a look at that on... Uh, Okay, and let's see. This was a new area that is absorbing. The whole storm has shrunk in size significantly. Yes. Well, go to uh, go to Ville okay. real quick. Let's see what Ville looks like on it, and we'll look at the intensity of it. Uh huh. Still has a little little bite to it. It does. It's, it's <laughs> the whole storm itself has shrunk. It's weakened. But yes. It's, it is not done. It is. It's definitely smaller than the gargantuan storm that that it was couple hours ago. Remember, this is one storm and another storm combined and just were huge. And it's still large. I mean, if you take that and move that over Oklahoma City, I mean, it runs from, it runs across the entire county. It's still a big storm. Well, if you remember, when it, whenever it produced the tornado over coal, that's what happened. It combined with another, another storm, storm, produced the large tornado near yeah. coal, absorbed the other tornado near Norman, and produced this tornado near Shawnee or in Shawnee. So... It's like all the dynamics, you know, crashing together, and that transfer of energy has been doing some wild things today. Yeah. Oh, gosh. We, I mean, look how many mergers we've had. I yes. mean, like you said, I mean, and they merged, and they did what we said possibly, and they ramped up. and Right, instead of weakening and getting disrupted. Yeah. They might have for just a few minutes, but, man, when they came back from that organization that was going on when the two storms merge, and they're spinning, you have two mesocyclones that come together, and those things come together, Give it a few minutes, and we go one way or the other, and we went the other way, which was the bad way. All right, um, supercell tornado warning continues. This is going to be to our east, to our friends over in Prague. And the storm continues to weaken a little bit, still severe, large hail, tennis ball, up to baseball size hail. What do our trackers have in the field? Look at the circulation real quick, David, coming into Lincoln County. I mean, you, you, it's hard to find it now, which is amazing. Right here? Yes. And then... Where did it go? Yeah, I, you know what? I'm going to guess that it's... In between Jacktown and Meeker? It's right, like right here. It's you like just east of the Highway 62. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's right here, it's, right? The storm is trying to vaporize, which is the best thing that can happen. But it is, the spin is still, yeah, basically crossing Highway 62. You know what? The spin is actually leaving, leaving the updraft. I mean, the updraft is leaving the, the, the storm. The storm. The part of it, yes. And that, that thing will spin for an hour. Big column of air that was a big tornado, it's going to keep doing this. It'll just spin down. Just like a, you know, just like a, it's just a river, right? Everything's just flowing. All right, so um, we've got damage in Shawnee. Oh, let's go back to Hank. And uh, let's take Hank's shot here and uh, get an update from Hank. Oh, 
Okay. Hank, go ahead, give us an update. Uh, on I-40, exactly where are you? Do we have Hank? Yeah, he was talking to the truck driver, so he might not oh, okay. be here yet. Okay, good. All right, well, hopefully the truck driver sounds like he's fine. I hope, he, you know, these things flip over, and sometimes these guys and gals are good, and they're great, and they get out just fine. Other times, it can go the other way. All right, so... Uh, Folks, this thing, as far as the tornadoes go, let's go back to Lynx 1, and then uh, we'll get an update from Hank. And uh, what a day. I don't know how many tornadoes. Uh, we've, uh, for the day, I don't know if it's a record, but we've had, uh, I don't know, we've had a lot. Maybe 20, 15, 20 tornadoes, 15. Yep. All that'll be worked out. Surveys will be done. We'll figure out the EF scale and all that, but it'll take... Uh, a good week or maybe longer to figure out how many numbers. But we, this has been an outbreak, I mean, hands down. This has been a significant outbreak of tornadoes in April. Along with the, the amount, amount of hail. large hail. Hail. Because usually it's one or the other. You'll get the tornadoes and some smaller hail, but not baseball and nearly softball-sized hail in multiple locations yeah. with a significant tornadoes. So right. definitely a big April day. No doubt about it. Okay, um, let's go back to uh, Lace. I'll tell you what. Let's... Let's check in. Let's go back to reflectivity here. Okay. Um, on links one. Okay, on link. Yeah, my bad. Links one. Let's take a look on links one. Okay, I'm, I just want to make sure there's not another hook developing. We have big hail in Meeker, big hail over to Prague, but the biggest hail is east and southeast of Meeker. This is going to be golf ball, tennis ball size hail. Let me know when Hank's back in this in he, the truck. He's back. And, and for the first time, David, since what five o'clock? We no do not have warning. a tornado warning. No tornado warning. Okay. All right. Let's go to Hank here real quick. Hank. Uh, give us an update on what you found. Are you ready? The Tony Mall and FedEx truck has flipped over. Uh, we talked to the truck driver to make sure he was okay. He said his ankle's a little banged up, but, uh, you know, he, he's okay. He, he may need a ride home later. But, uh, yeah, he said he was in this truck when it flipped over. He, was, he pulled into the parking lot, and, yeah, when it came through, came ripping and roaring. There's significant damage all around semis that I have seen so far that are flipped uh, and multiple cars damaged everything all right Hanks in that uh, rough cell area over there uh, again if you live over there you know what he's going through all right so guys one more time let's go back to reflectivity here no tornado warnings in effect for anybody this is the only game in town now big hail the tornado threat continues to quickly weaken. No tornado threat now with this. We're going to watch it. Big hail coming into Prague. Um, center view, we're going to have winds, 60, 70, 80 miles per hour. Quarter golf ball, tennis ball size hail. And let's stay on reflectivity. Let's back out of this for a second, Lacey. Let me show everybody else what's going on. And a little activity in Osage County. This is the only game in town. Okay? This is the only game in town. So Carl and Amanda... What an afternoon, what an evening. This escalated quickly, and uh, we have injuries. We have a lot of damage, uh, started down to our southwest, and uh, now we're ending the night with uh, severe storms still going here. But, man, we have a lot of damage out there. Trackers are still out, news crews are out, and, guys, back to you at the news desk. All right, David, great work tonight by you, all of our meteorologists, and, of course, our storm trackers out there in the field. We're going to be checking right back with David, so don't go anywhere. He'll be keeping us up to date on the weather going on right now. But because there is not a tornado warning right now, we do want to bring you up to speed on what we've learned in terms of any injuries and also all the damage reported out there. And our crews have kind of been everywhere going, you know, report here, report there. So they have been covering a lot of miles and... Uh, there's a lot of damage that they've had a hard time getting to just because so many trees and power lines are down. Uh, and so we're just kind of starting to get these damage reports coming in from Shawnee. Uh, but uh, the reports out of Cole, uh, McLean County, where we are getting kind of a better handle on the damage there. Uh, obviously, quite a bit of damage. We do understand that homes are destroyed. 
not sure on the injuries in McLean County, but uh, uh, State Operations Center putting out updates uh, this evening, basically saying that uh, right now uh, they have hired, uh, brought in Task Force One. Task Force One, usually firefighters, and some of them actually Oklahoma City firefighters taking part in this, and they are going to do kind of a, uh, a search, a, a grid search of the tornado's path, the one that was going through coal. So that's what they've started to do along with the McLean County Sheriff's Office and other emergency personnel. If they get a call that somebody's trapped, that's where their grid search goes to. So that's what they're doing right now, going through where the path of the tornado went. If you are in need of a place to stay, we want to let you know the Red Cross has been working with the Sheriff's Department. They have set up a shelter right now. That shelter is going to be at the Washington Event Center. Um, this, again, the Red Cross has helped coordinate that. So as soon as we get some more information on that, we'll pass that along. But the latest we have right there, Washington Event Center for the shelter. And OHP has that command post as well, uh, Highway 24 and Highway 74. So hoping to get some updates out of there. Also understand Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, Forestry coordinating with Oklahoma large animal responders to see if there's farmers out there yes. uh, uh, that have barns that have been destroyed and so they want to help those farmers with those animals. Let's go out to one of our crews now. Uh, Tevis Hillis is there at a command center where OHP has set up along with the sheriff's office. Uh, Tev Tevis, you are in the town of Washington. Give us the very latest from around that area. Amanda, I want to update you. We just removed from the Washington Event Center, which does not have any power right now, to the Washington High School. So that's where we're at right now. We're starting to see more and more people um, from the coal community showing up. What they're telling me is that their houses were leveled, that everything's taken away. We've tried to get inside of coal where 74 B, State Highway 74B is completely shut down. That's a mile in and out of coal. We're hearing really bad damage right now. We also know all the power lines are down. Those towers are down. So a, a lot is coming in at this moment. Again, we're at the Washington High School. This is where a shelter is being formed right now. On the inside, people are getting information taken down. Uh, we have water here. We are hearing that there should be food coming soon, and more and more people are showing up. We're going to get the very latest from uh, State Highway Trooper Eric Foster, and we will bring him to you in just a few moments. But again, Washington High School is where they're sheltering for those that were affected by the tornado in Cole. Amanda Carl. Tevis, we're glad you're there bringing us the very latest. And Tevis, if we still have you, have you heard anything in terms of injuries? We are hearing there are some injuries. We haven't heard anything about fatalities, nothing confirmed yet. What are you hearing out there in the field? Again, we haven't heard of any fatalities. We have heard of injuries. We don't know if anyone's been transported to the hospital yet with injuries. We also know that some people are trapped inside homes, and when they hear those calls, they're going straight to Coal Street into those homes trying to get those people help. So whenever they get those 911 calls, they're going straight out there. And just Tevis said that the damage, I know you've been to a few places tonight, just the damage that you have seen from this storm. Uh, what kind of damage are we talking about? I know it's tough to get to these homes with the, the power lines and yeah. the trees down. Well, those power lines and trees are really blocking anything. So we were trying to get on 74B. That's completely shut down a mile out both sides. So it's been difficult to see. We have seen, of course, debris down power lines, trees. We haven't been able to see on the inside of coal where we are hearing reports of flattened houses. That's what we're hearing as well. A lot of homes there uh, along Cole Road, also the southwest part of coal as well. Um, thank you, Tevis. We'll let you get some more information and we'll be checking back in with you throughout the evening, especially as you get video and you can bring that to us. Um, getting reports of damage, and we got this earlier on, as the, as the tornado went through the town of Cole, which is not too far from Blanchard, uh, an event center there, Silo Event Center, uh, they have silos, they host weddings. The owner there says that their place is leveled. Of course, it's wedding season, so uh, there could be some very yeah. devastated couples there. Um, that's one event center but then a lot of the homes along that that area as well hearing from emergency managers that they have quote significant damage they're unable to get us a number at this point yes yeah, scissor tail silos is the name of the uh, event center the uh, wedding venue that was destroyed tonight um, and we're waiting to hear from the uh, the sheriff of McLean County just to see how many homes are going to be there uh, we're also going to hear from OHP we, we, we mentioned task force one uh, in McLean County um, they are actually going to head, be head to Shawnee now to help out with the uh, search right. and rescue efforts there. 
Also, I just want to give you a list of road closures. As you can imagine, power lines are down in all of these spots. So if you don't have to get out and you don't have to go to any of these areas, do not. It's, it's really dangerous tonight. Some of the specific road closures here, the first ones I'll tell you right around the, um, the Blanchard Coal area, 74B from State Highway 74 to State Highway 76. The Blanchard Police Chief says that Highway 76 and 260th Streets shut down the eastbound lanes. Highway 76 at 205th Street they are only open to residents. We'll get to some more of those road closures in just a moment, but we have some breaking news. Let's hear from Trooper Foster now with OHP on uh, more on what happened tonight. Okay, so tonight, obviously, tragic events occurring in McLean County and across the state. Um, the Oklahoma Highway Patrol is here just assisting. Um, McLean County Sheriff's Office is doing a great job in coordination with a lot of other agencies, multiple agencies. I can't even name them. Uh, but you're going out as far as Tuttle and Bridge Creek and lots of different agencies coming together to assist in searches. Obviously, in these rural areas, you know, the majority of the state of Oklahoma is in rural areas. These rural areas are spread out on dirt roads, on gravel roads, and it makes searching very tedious, meaning we have to go from place to place to and walk up driveways and things like that to search these areas. Uh, I've been on many of the scenes where there uh, significant damage to structures uh, and so we are still searching those uh, right now. The town of Cole was, uh, was uh, hit significantly uh, and there's a lot of infrastructure damage. There were some power lines, significant power lines that were down in that area blocking state highways as well. Um, and so uh, we will continue searching that through the night. There, there are I would say hundreds. I've been down there. There are hundreds and hundreds of first responders and other equipment going in uh, to, to search these different residences, these different shelters uh, that they have on these properties to make sure that everyone made it out okay. Um, and so uh, with that, if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And McLean uh, County Sheriff's Office also, I mean, uh, as I said, they've done a great job in coordinating a lot of this, uh, but there's so many agencies involved. I know, it's, I know it's early on and you're still searching and it's been difficult to search, but how many injuries, if any, have been found? Or we won't know that number for a while. And like I said, because it's dark, literally there's no power and it's in the middle of uh, woods and, you know, just these rural areas where trees are down, power lines are down. We're having to park and walk uh, miles to get into a lot of these places. And so it will take us time to search that. We do know that there are injuries. We do know that there is significant damage to properties. Um, and we're just trying to, by one at a time, search those properties to make sure that we account for everyone there. Um, you know, I, I ran into, when I was there, I ran into a group of kids walking down the roadway. Uh, and, and got great information from them telling me everybody who lived in those houses and that they're accounted for. So that, that's, uh, we're having to search in that manner. Um, and so it's been a great response. We're coming together uh, uh, to make sure that we do that safely. Anywhere else in the state can you talk about uh, uh, the, the tornadoes that have touched down there? Um, where, uh, you know, the Oklahoma Highway Patrol is in a lot of areas right now. Uh, and so those are all, all active uh, areas and so uh, we'll talk more about those as as we get more information about that but specifically right now this the town of Cole uh, our prayers our hearts go out to them uh, and and they they are a you know they're strong I was down there uh, they're all coming together to search these different properties in terms of injuries Fire hospitalization, or is it minor? How, how would you describe those injuries? Well, they're, they're injuries significant with, with, you know, major with tornado damage. I mean, uh, there, there, are, there have been some transported uh, to hospitals. There have been some uh, that, you know, just have minor cuts and bruises. And so, okay, okay, we are listening to this news conference. We'll be monitoring this, talking about the town of Cole, which is just about 15 miles south, southwest of the center of Norman. And folks, we have another tornado warning to tell you about. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist David Payne now with the Thanks latest. All right, guys. Yeah, you know what? And uh, this storm was was weakening. It was getting a little bit smaller. But man, Mother Nature is just like, uh-uh, <laughs> game's not over. So uh, another tornado. And here's the deal. We have two areas of circulation now, right? We have one east of Johnson. This is going to be Prague. 
And uh, this is on the eastern side of our viewing area, but this is clearly in our viewing area. There's Meeker, and we have Preg right here. So let's talk about circulation right here, and uh, we'll go back to that shot coming up. Lots of damage in Shawnee, lots of damage from Shawnee back to Etowah, back south of Norman, and then all the way back into uh, near Cole. And folks, there's just a lot of damage, okay? There's this tornado here, right? And this is good. There it is, showing up clearly on shear rate, just northwest. There's your tornado. It looks like it's on the ground. It, it looks like that's going to be a little bit of debris. It's very close. Very close to, yeah. Okay, so uh, Jeremy's coming in from the west. Okay, so this is going to be a new tornado warning for you folks in Garden Grove which will ex extend over to Centerview and even Preg. Look at the big hail in here. Tennis ball size hail in Preg or west of Preg right now. Big, big hail. And this is going right down Highway 62. So folks, that is the same storm that's been doing all that's been doing, but it's now starting to move now, but it's tightening up. We're getting this big hook here on the southwest side. So yeah, let's see what that looks like on uh, yeah, right that's the latest velocity and look at the motion of that it's yeah. almost moving south <laughs> north to south yeah yeah what's what's happening up here this was broad at the beginning is there something right here over preg i mean you can see it in velocity for sure in the wind field there's something right here it's not crazy but between center view and preg this is interesting to me right here because this is what it's done all night. We've had an area back to the west, and then we've had another area to the east that's ramped it up, and over. we get a tornado. So if I'm in Preg or east of Preg or on top or northeast of Centerview, over to Payton and Bowley, I'm watching this. This is a developing tornado, and this is a tornado right here. Lace, it looks like this might have weakened some. Yeah, it moved from north to south and slightly stretched out now. Yeah. It's not as strong as not as strong as what it was. Okay, so that's good news. Um, Still showing up the debris signature there, and actually getting very close to Jeremy. Yeah, looking at the Vilcor and actually storm tops. This is the the strong as it's been in the last hour. If you looked at the storm tops being the highest in the Vilcor as right. well, so some definitely very large hail with this. Oh yeah, and what's the what's the storm top? What'd you get out of that, Justin? How tall? Uh, I'll have to look back. I think it was. Uh, 55,000. 55,000 feet. You're, when you fly from here to Dallas, you get up about 35. 55,000 feet up. Yeah, that's legit. Okay, crazy. All right, so once again, tornado warning for you folks in the Garden Grove area, but this circulation has weakened. You're going to get damaging winds. You're going to get some big hail in here. There's another area, though, right here that I'm a little bit concerned about. This continues to intensify. And I hope it doesn't get any stronger, but between Preg and Centerview, and this is going to be lifting off to the northeast, okay? So we got to keep an eye on that. And uh, Jeremy Carter, he's got, uh, let's get an update from Jeremy. Let's take him in. And uh, Jeremy Carter, that uh, it looked like the tornado was on the ground and looks like that circulation was moving, believe it or not, back from north to south, just to your east. I mean, like literally right in front of you. What do you see right now when you look out your front window there as you look off to the east? Well, so, David, there was actually a power flash right there in front of me. And, and with it coming back my direction, I just kind of wanted to give a little bit of room. But, yeah, there was a power flash. I noticed the gut, but came down on it. But I'm going to get well out ahead of this storm where I can really get a good view of it and kind of get in that inflow wind so I can get a clear shot of this, see what's going on here, David. Back to you. All right. Well, great job, Jeremy. Stay with it here a little bit longer. Let's just keep going east with this thing. Let's see what it does. Let's go back to uh, reflectivity on links one. And uh, here's Jeremy coming in. And we're going to, uh, we'll have Jeremy just kind of keep drifting east on this. We'll see what it does. But man, folks, this, this is big, big hail. Preg, prepare for a damaging hail event. It's coming in right now. Tennis balls, maybe baseball size hail. And that is a big deal for sure. Okay, so that's coming into Preg. Um, let's go back to Shawnee. Let me take this shot here from Hank. Let me find out where Hank is. Uh, let's go to Hank and Patty Brown in Shawnee. And uh, Hank, what's your location there? I'm assuming looking at uh, GPS back on the north side of Shawnee. Go ahead. Tell us your ex exact location. What, what kind of damage? How bad? Do we have Hank? 
Okay? Well, we have a shot. And uh, obviously, tin roof. This might be the mall. Is he at the mall? He is at the mall. Okay. So the Shawnee Mall took a direct hit from the tornado tonight. Back in February, it barely missed it. Like on the northwest side, back in February 26. Today, not so much. Uh, there is significant damage, it looks like to me. And I, I, again, I can't see everything, obviously. I'm seeing what you're seeing for the first time. Is Hank still in there? Do you see him hot? He is, but the cell phone s service, as long as he's been in Shawnee, has been okay. very spotty. So. Do me a favor. Hang up on him, then have him call back in. Yeah, we've done that like three or four times. Oh, but I'll do it again. Didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I'd ask. Ask him for a friend. My bad. Okay, yep, let's do it. And uh, guys, so we're tracking the, the storms to the northeast, and uh, we're still tracking that. They've weakened a little bit. We're still tracking that. Our trackers are still out. You guys have more news crews down in Cole, which was hard hit today by that strong tornado, at least an EF2, maybe an EF3. Carl and Amanda, back to you. All right, David, thank you. Uh, we appreciate it, and uh, we appreciate uh, our team here at News 9 uh, keeping track of all these storms as they fire up. Been so many. We, we heard the term, what, merry-go-round of tornadoes. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's been nuts today, and our, our crews are now uh, kind of getting into a spot where they can uh, provide a little bit extra here as well as, well as uh, the damage and begin to show us that. As far as the injuries, Trooper Foster was saying there, there has been injuries. Some people taken to the hospital for minor injuries. As to how many, we're still waiting to learn that. But our crews are there on the ground in coal. In fact, our Sylvia Corkill was there right after the tornado went through, surveying the damage. She is near 280th Street and Pennsylvania Avenue in the small town of Cole, just about 15 miles south of Norman. Sylvia, give us the very latest there. Amanda Carl, according to a family we saw coming up this road, this is actually Washington. Their address is Washington, Oklahoma. We were driving, looking for any sort of damage. We saw that traffic was backed up, and we were just caught off guard by four lights flashing in the background. It turned out it was a family with their flashlights walking down a pitch dark road after, in their own words, their home was wiped off the face of the map. They tell me they were in their trailer home. They said they were listening to the news and were told they had five minutes to get to safety. They took their two sons, uh, husband and wife, took their two children, ran into a shelter, waited in there and said it was so loud even from that shelter. Uh, this is a family that owns a large farm here. They said when they came back out, uh, it looked like a bomb had gone off. They said for whatever reason, they still expected their home to be there. It is gone. The only thing that they saw were their possessions. They saw their barn had been flattened. Um, they were just in shock. We spoke with uh, Mr. Newburn, and he told us that he, he kind of chuckled, and he said, I've got to laugh in order to keep from crying. Um, their two young boys, they said, consoled their mother, who was very afraid. She's claustrophobic, did not want to get into that shelter. They told her, Mom, you've got to get in here. And she did, and she said it was her children who actually gave her the strength to make it through this tornado. So glad that she went in there, said that they're so glad that they all made it out of here alive, still shaken. I can tell you when we saw them, they were, you know, you heard the expression deer in the headlights. That's what this family looked like, um, almost speechless, unsure of what was going on. As soon as we got out of the vehicle, we heard uh, the cries of animals. Um, we had some volunteers that were coming through here to see if there were any people that may be trapped in their homes. We asked them, are those animals? They said, yes, it is a disturbing sound, but right now our focus is to see if we can find any people who need help. So clearly some injured animals in this area. Uh, we can hear the cry from, we, we saw a couple of lambs, uh, a mother with her baby lamb crying, lost, covered in mud. Uh, just uh, a heartbreaking scene here. 
Um, you see behind me all of all of this tree damage. This is something that that family I was telling you about the obstacle they have to walk through and uh, any rescuer is searching for anyone. They're having a difficult time because it is pitch black out here and there are down power lines everywhere. So you have to be very careful. There were a couple of times that we were walking through here, looked up and realized that we were standing directly under a fallen power line. So just getting through here, very tricky. Um, the family that we spoke with telling us they had to leave all of their animals behind, all of their livestock, their cats, their dogs, um, and just hoping that tomorrow help arrives so they can salvage whatever they can from their home. Live reporting, Sylvia Corkill, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. Sylvia, so heartbreaking when we hear what's going on out there. We want to give you a chance to walk around there. We're going to come back to you in just a few minutes and, and see some more of the damage there in the area of, she said, Washington. That's really close to Cole, and that's really close to Blanchard. So if you hear us talk about those towns, they are all very close together, and that is where the tornado went through yeah, this evening. Same tornado. Just getting word now from OHP that I-40 is closed at mile marker 185. So we're talking about both directions there. That's right around Shawnee. So just right be, Shawnee. be, be yep. aware of that. We have all sorts of road closures um, to report. Uh, here's another one. We have, a, we have a tree blocking the entire road south of uh, Waco and Gaddy in Shawnee. So. And, and when we're talking about Shawnee, I want to pass along, if you are in the Shawnee area, the, the Pottawatomie County Emergency Manager is wanting you, if you can, get on their Facebook page. Again, I'm talking about the Pottawatomie County Emergency Manager. They have a post on there. What they are wanting to know is where is the damage? Because they want to be able to send crews out there to make sure that everybody's okay. They want to do their own grid search. So if you go there in the comment section, that's where you can put in, if you have damage in your area, give them the location. I, I want to uh, pop up Tevis Hillis's shot if we could. She's at the command post there that OHP has set up, I believe, in Washington. And, and Tevis, uh, what's going on there right now? The true Oklahoma standard, Carl. I mean, we already have food, drinks. We have hot dogs already here at the Washington High School. That's where they're going to shelter those people from cold that need it. A true Oklahoma standard right now. So this is what we know so far. OHP tells us there are injuries. They do not know the extent of those injuries. Some are cuts and bruises. They're still doing a grid search to see who they can help, who's trapped inside their house, uh, and, and who they can help out. So that's what we know right now. We also know that OG&E and OEC, they're, they're working to restore power. This is the third place that they've created as a shelter because other places do not have power. Other places are, are not working. Washington High School is the place to go shelter. I do want to let you all know about a phone number that we just received. It's 405-955-4600. Again, that number is 405-955-4600. This is the number that they ask if you are in coal to call to give some of that emergency 911 a relief. So there's some new information as well. So I'm going to step out of the way and see if we can get any more of these, these men and women just bringing in food. I've seen hot dogs, snacks, everything. They're setting up right now the Washington High School. Those people that are in coal that have been affected can come here. Now they do ask if you do have a house, if it is still standing and you can stay at home, please stay at home so we do not overwhelm the shelter. Again, Red Cross will be out here any minute as well to help. So we are live outside of Washington High School right now. Tavisillas, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. Tevis, this is all so fresh, so I imagine people are still around their mm -hmm. property and maybe even having trouble getting out. But have you seen anybody show up there yet to the shelter? I have seen a few people. Now they're inside and they're taking notes with other sheriffs, other officers. So we haven't been exactly able to speak to them because they need to get that information down. That's the most important thing right now. I have been able to speak to some people that say my family no longer have a house it's flattened we've also spoken to a few other people that say the restaurants i used to go to they're flattened so it's all going to reveal itself come early morning when we can see it but right now those are the early reports amanda yeah tavis thank you um you know this obviously it, th this is obvious here but uh, washington public schools will be closed tomorrow uh again washington high school is is a shelter and uh, as tavis just mentioned we have people showing up there right now Tevis, thank you. Yes, Washington Public Schools putting out, check on your neighbors and when it is safe, do what warriors do best. Help one another. God bless our community. Again, Washington Public Schools closed for tomorrow. So that's in that area of Washington and Cole. Uh,
Pottawatomie County back there, the Shawnee Trailer Park. We are hearing that trailer park, the Western Trailer Park, as it's called, near Hardesty. Uh, has been hit also by the tornado. We are working on figuring out the extent of the damages there. Yeah, um, in, in Shawnee, obviously the power is still out in Shawnee, and so the reports are coming in slowly, but uh, the lows also sustained quite a bit of damage there. The lows in Shawnee, along with uh, a number of other structures, but uh, as, as the night progresses, we'll get a little bit more. Shawnee Airport, by the way, uh, also had a lot of damage. The, you were mentioning some of the stores, some of the workers apparently at PetSmart there in Shawnee also had to take cover and were um, trapped for a very short amount of time as the roof there got ripped off. So extensive damage in the Shawnee area and really in so many different pockets of Oklahoma and not just from the tornado either. We had reports early on and I'm sure you have seen a lot of pictures of the hail causing a huge amount of damage. The hail causing damage to a lot of vehicles and a lot of homes as well. And before the tornado hit, there were some roofs ripped off because of some wind and also uh, just hail damage in those areas. The, the, the hail core was incredibly strong and not only was it just kind of a, a few storms that went through, but it seemed to come over and over and over again. And we saw this is uh, Newcastle here. You see the size of that hail. Um, got a lot bigger than that though didn't it well close to baseball tennis ball size hail look at that right there from Edmond tonight uh, and Edmond got hit with a couple of storms with with hail Oklahoma City did as well that hail core coming through uh, several times and so uh, this was this was some damaging hail we saw some cars with the windows punched out and big time dents and this this wasn't and, and it came down David was mentioning that uh, the hail this time of the year with these storms is particularly hard so this is this is not going to break apart so easily especially when it's that big and, and it's going to cause some damage and it did all over the place tonight saw some windows busted out in chickasha now not too far from the area that we have been covering for you is the town of blanchard also hit angelicia bruton standing by for us right now from there with the latest from that area angelicia Yeah, Amanda, it is pitch black here in Blanchard. I'm hearing that there's no power in the town. I can't even tell you what street I'm on. That's how dark it is out here. And emergency crews are going to be working around the clock. They're probably going to be out here all night. I've seen ambulance trucks fly by me. I've seen police cars fly by me. And they're blocking off several communities, several different neighborhoods, because there's, they told us that power lines are down. I'm not sure. If you can see this power line down right here is blocking this whole road right here and there's neighbors out assessing the damage and they're um, at their house and you can probably see this tree line is completely bare like there's there's tree limbs that are snapped and I talked to a homeowner she didn't want to go on camera because she says that she's going to be home throughout the night she doesn't want looters coming by and trying to go through her stuff but her house is fine but she tells me that her garage is completely gone she doesn't know where it is she said she rode out the storm in her hallway and when she went outside to look at the damage her garage was gone a few of her cars in her driveway were moved to the other side of her yard and she says that she can't really tell what's here and what's not but she's gonna wake up early tomorrow morning and assess the damage she is thankful that her home is still somewhat livable um, she said she's had the house for over 50 years and here comes another emergency crew. I'm not sure if you can see. We're gonna go ahead and pan. I'm not sure if you guys can see. There's an emergency crew checking on this house, trying to see if there's any injuries. We haven't heard of any injuries. Thankfully, the lady that I spoke to earlier says that everything is fine, but coming tomorrow morning, she'll be able to see what's left of her home. And we'll be back out here tomorrow morning to see um, more of the damage. Live in Blanchard, Angelicia Bruton, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. All right, Angelicia, we appreciate it there. We'll be checking back in with you. Angelicia was talking about how dark it is out there. I just want to bring you up today, and this is another aspect of this story, all the power outages out there right now. Statewide, we have more than 18,900 customers without power, and that is statewide. About 15,000 of those right now in the Shawnee area, Pottawatomie County area. And uh, obviously hearing reports that... Uh, uh, Shawnee has been without power now for a while now. The other airport, Lowe's, PetSmart. Uh, we have 1300 North Broadway. We got large trees down there from backyards uprooted and uh, uh, 
on top of homes out there. Uh, we mentioned uh, Waco, East of Gaddy. Uh, there's a barn there that has sig significant damage and also a tree blocking the road. We mentioned this before uh, at Waco and Gaddy in Shawnee as well. Western Trailer uh, Park near uh, Hardesty and Coker. I think we mentioned that has significant damage as well. And uh, US 177 closed uh, due to power lines down. So that's what's making it so difficult for these first responders. They want to get in there and help people, but the power's out. Uh, you, you, we heard from our crews, our trackers out there, and they were kind of driving over power lines. They had no idea until they were over those power lines. So it's, it's still dangerous out there just to kind of go check out these neighborhoods. So that's why uh, our trackers are being extra careful. That's why our crews are being extra careful as well. And, and that's why first responders have to do the same. It, it's, you heard uh, Trooper Eric Foster, they, they want to go, you know, home by home, structure by structure, make sure no one's hurt, but to do that, it's, it's painstaking. It's gonna take a while. So that's where we're at right now. And the Oklahoma Task Force made up primarily of firefighters from really all across the state. They were originally going to go, at least Oklahoma City ones, were gonna go to uh, the coal area and they were that way. And then the tornado hit Shawnee and they got rerouted. The Oklahoma City Task Force one got rerouted uh, that way to Shawnee. Uh, one thing we mentioned early on is that a lot of the flights got canceled or at least delayed there at Will Rogers World Airport just checking some of them are actually taking off now some of them have been delayed until about an hour from now and so um, there are some planes taking off tonight and I, I think we have this I, I'm not sure if we can put this up but we have damage at uh, OBU's baseball stadium the OBU baseball field we got a picture in and it shows there look we go that. thank look you look at that right there um, CM Painter uh, sending this in to us. So looks like a brick wall has been blown over. It looks like there's some damage also to maybe some lights that are there in the baseball field. Um, so some significant yes. damage. We know uh, we've gotten some messages from people wanting to know about OBU, the campus itself. So that's our first glimpse there of the tornado damage right there yeah, on saw, campus. Sorry, you saw that picture of that, uh, those stadium lights right there. I mean, those are the, the towering lights overhead. And it looks like uh, at least one of them is uh, now on the ground. So significant damage uh, throughout Shawnee uh, and that right there, the baseball field at OBU. So I'm just reading over some notes that are coming in from our crews where uh, Tecumseh Police just gave an update. And he is saying that the New Hope area has damage there. There are barns in the middle of New Hope Road, in the middle of the road. They are calling on all available help from their law enforcement um, officials to c come in and to help out. They do have, again, this is Tecumseh Police. They do have reports of injuries, but no details yet as we take a live look right now from Hank and Patty Brown in Shawnee. In fact, uh, Hank, if we have you, can you just give us an update of what we're looking at right here? Yeah, Amanda, so this is a storefront here that uh, if you look inside, you can see that uh, the roof is collapsed. There's quite a bit of damage. Uh, most of the damage we're seeing here at the mall, uh, I'm going to guess, is F0, F1 damage. It's mainly sheet metal damage, uh, a lot of tree damage. Uh, this particular uh, store here, I would assume that one of these trees busted them front windows, and then that wind went through and lifted the roof and what caused it to collapse. But uh, we haven't seen any buildings that are, you know, like structurally damaged the walls knocked down like that most of it is is pretty superficial damage uh but there's sheet metal and tin everywhere wrapped around cars in the parking lot and then we've got two semis that were in the west parking lot at the shawnee mall that were flipped over so uh, you know there's still a lot of foot traffic out here a lot of people that were at work in the different restaurants and they, we talked to some people at red lobster and said they took shelter in the freezer uh, and said, man, I think it landed right on us. And I was like, yeah, it did. <laughs> um, so uh, I know on the other side of the road, uh, I've seen some damage at uh, the McDonald's, the IHOP, uh, the Bricktown Brewery. So there's pretty widespread damage, but nothing that's, uh, you know, un that, that structural type damage we see where buildings are collapsed, at least up here. I hear there's further or more significant damage further south and southwest into Shawnee. Back to you. Hank, thank you for that update from Shawnee. Hate to see the damage there, but we are getting some news now out of the coal area. Yeah, and this is the uh, OHP command post that they have set up. Uh, 
This is in Washington. We have Tevis Hillis now with an update on uh, the injuries, including fatalities. Tevis. GIBB ONS. And your dog title. Um, deputy PIO. Okay. Uh, what, what can you tell us? What is the new information? Uh, Unfortunately, uh, the updated news is we do have one confirmed fatality. Uh, we did have to wait till next if Cannon was notified. Um, it is reasonable to expect possibly more based on the damage that we've seen thus far. Can you confirm the age of this individual or male, female? I have not been given that information yet. Inside the town of Cole? I believe so, yes. Um, when you say we, you, there could be more, um, what, are you, what are your guys assessing right now? Um, so we are still conducting a grid search. Uh, it's roughly a 10-mile radius um, that could grow or shrink as the night goes on. Um, with that said, um, based on the damage reports that we're getting back, as significant as it is, reasonably there could be more injuries or deaths that we don't know about at this time. And any new injuries that uh, you can tell us about? None that I'm aware of since we last spoke. Um, just the fatality that was confirmed after next of kin notification. Did this person pass away at the scene or were they transported to a hospital where they later succumbed to their injuries? I believe it was at the scene, but I'm not 100% sure on that just yet. And can you tell us if this person was inside or outside the home? I do not have that information. Okay. I guess, can you just speak to how important it is to get some, when you hear of these warnings, get to somewhere as safe as possible and just how dangerous these tornadoes are? Um, being an Oklahoma native, I mean, obviously they are um, important for us to take heed when we get those notifications. Um, the notifications that we received to date probably saved a lot of lives. Um, we do, uh, one of our responses tonight, we had numerous people that were trapped in their shelters, um, which means they were alive because they heeded the warnings and went to their shelter. So we were able to send units out and get them safely out, so. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the update. Absolutely. So, Amanda, Carl, we just have confirmed a death here in Cole from one of the tornadoes. We do not know if that person was inside or outside their home at the time. They're still trying to piece together this information, but we'll bring you the very latest. Live in Washington this evening, Tevis Hillis, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. Well, that is heartbreaking, Tevis, and uh, when you see the damage, you're, you're wondering when these reports are going to come. And, and here it is. We have one fatality, and law enforcement believes that uh, there could be more. They're, they're doing this, uh, this search still. A 10-mile radius there doing these grid searches, making sure everyone's okay. Such heartbreaking news. Again, a fatality in the town of Cole. We don't know where that person was or anything more about that person. Of course, we, we will probably learn more tomorrow. In terms of injuries, no official count yet other than that there have been injuries. Some people taking the hospital. The only reports we have are minor injuries so far, and hopefully it stays that way. The, the good news that you heard there from um, uh, Scott Gibb was that people did heed the warning people got below ground when they were told and so uh, what's happening is some people are actually you know trapped in their shelter right now so they're going over and and checking with all the shelters making sure everyone's out of there make sure everyone's able to get out but uh, because they're trapped there it, you know it may have saved their life right they, they listened and did the right thing and got to the, the safest part in their home so you know it, it, the whole thing about these uh, these shelters is I know in Oklahoma City it's a big thing. You want to register your shelter, right? Always register yourself to the city. So if you have a situation like this, the city knows where to look for you, right? So they can clear your shelter. So um, just it's a big thing here in the metro. So if you have a shelter, make sure you do get it registered with the city. And that way they know where to go in case mm -hmm. uh, there is a tornado in your area. Of course, we are covering that all that damage there in the Cole Blanchard, Washington area. And then we can't, uh, of course, we're going up to Shawnee. And that's where there's been so much damage. Our Hank and Patty Brown, they have been there covering it for us, our storm trackers. If we can take their shot, if they're still there, they've been outside the Shawnee Mall. And there is a live look right now and is this Hank and Patty Brown shot Hank okay Hank uh, can you tell us what we're looking at here yeah Amanda so this is just wads of I'm gonna assume that was some type of roofing that came off of maybe buildings and flew this way from but this is just piles of sheet metal and that's kind of what we're seeing all is just these piles of sheet metal and poles are obviously, you know, collapsed, uh, and multiple cars that were hit by the sheet metal, and some of them get their energy out by just kind of driving. Actually, uh, 
Well, the, the, yeah. the cell signal is breaking up a little bit, but not your not your shot there, Hank hey. and Patty. So thank you for giving that yeah, to us. Yeah, you can see the power of the storm. Metal sheets just being wrapped up like like paper there. Uh, let's go to Sylvia Corkle now, and I know she's in coal or was uh, was covering the aftermath there in coal there, right uh, near Washington as well. And uh, Sylvia, you sent in a picture. You were talking about this family where they had to convince the mom to get in the shelter, and obviously from your picture there. It saved her life. It saved the whole family's life. Yeah, Carl, Amanda, that's absolutely right. We are actually standing here where their home once stood. You can see over to my left, that's this shelter that they rode this storm out in. You can see it right there. Uh, are, are we on that right now? Uh, you can just see it's nothing. There is absolutely nothing left. You can see uh, just debris everywhere. Uh, we've been just stepped here and, and, and found this picture of Michelle, her time in the military, her military service over here to my right. This is something the family was talking to us about. They just bought a brand new pickup. You see what's left of that. Again, nothing but debris all around here. The family saying they know if they did not get into that shelter, they had five minutes to get in there in order to survive. Now, I don't know if you can hear uh, that sound behind me. You can hear it's a hissing. It is very loud. We could hear it from about a mile out as we started to approach this, this road. That is a gas line, a broken gas line that is spewing gas. We know that they are trying to work to get that capped off. Uh, uh, just a short while ago, you could smell it very heavily in this area. Again, this is just uh, a little bit of what we're seeing in this area. Live, Sylvia Corky, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. Yeah, okay, Sylvia. Sylvia. Yeah, be, we want to keep you be safe. Be careful out there. Wow. So yeah. we may be just having you get some video and then move out of there, at least until they get that capped. Um, back to Shawnee now, yeah, because than, that's where we have our Val Caster. Yeah, and he's at uh, OBU's campus there. Uh, Val, what can you tell us? What's the damage like? We saw the baseball field earlier, and it was a mess. And look at this. Wow. And yeah, so uh, the whole campus is a mess. I mean, the the, the only real structural damage, um, and we talked to a lot of people out here, there are students walking around everywhere. They, they couldn't get back in their dorms because all the power was off. Uh, there's also a gas leak in the library, from what we are told. You can see a lot of the students right here just walking around. But that is Bailey Hall. At least that's what we're, we're told. And you can see the side of the building right there is just completely taken off. And these are all out here. These are all well-built brick buildings that uh, are really, really strong. But as, as Hank was saying, there's sheet metal pretty much everywhere. There's sheet metal wrapped around cars, around trees, around poles. There's a lot of trees down. I would say on the OBU campus, there's probably more trees down than there are still standing. So it's a real chaotic scene out here. There's emergency vehicles going in and out. Um, you can hear them going up and down the roads out here. They really, they're, they're still trying to get a handle on everything that's happening. But the great news is we haven't heard of any injuries on the OBU campus, which I know all the parents out there would be glad to hear that. Back to you. That Absolutely. is definitely a big concern mm -hmm. right now. So we're checking to see probably cancel, uh, classes we're thinking might be canceled tomorrow at OBU. We're working to confirm that. I can tell you that Dibble schools, they've called off classes for tomorrow because there is damage in the town of Dibble as well. Uh, you know, I just want to say kind of hats off to the technology that we have that can track these storms because these were tornadoes that were wrapped in rain and we had our tracker shots up and, we, you know, it was, it was tough to see what we were looking at. Then when the sun went down, it, it was almost impossible, but then you'd have these like power flashes, lightning flashes, and all of a sudden it kind of light up a, a, like a wedge in the sky sort of thing, a, a, a tornado. Uh, and, and David, we've been kind of going back through this video and putting it all together, and uh, we're getting a better look at just how powerful these tornadoes were tonight. Yeah, you know, and here's the deal, guys. And we were saying this on the air by looking at velocity data and our debris detector, how high the debris was being lofted. That will tell you some idea of how strong of an updraft and uh, what kind of a tornado it will take to do that. So we were calling out EF1s, EF2s, and I think we've seen some EF3 damage for sure uh, down in the coal area. But right now we're talking about power outages as well and uh, 14,000 customers without power in Pottawatomie County. And as expected, obviously the damage there and also in Cleveland County, 800 here in Oklahoma City. So 
Yeah, um, a lot of that going on. So it was kind of a central Oklahoma thing. We talked about this during our earlier newscast, and even this morning, we were saying we had a little bullseye right across the metro into western Oklahoma. And uh, that's kind of what played out, right? Just in a bad way. All right, so tornado reports. Now, this is way early. We're just putting all this together. I can't tell you how many hail reports we had, hundreds, right? Running from Edmond through the metro. We had multiple hail storms move through the Edmond area, south metro, golf ball, tennis ball, baseball size hail, even parts of the metro down through southern Oklahoma saw the baseball size hail. And then we had the tornadoes. We had these live on the air. I'll show you some of the video coming up. Uh, Val had the tornado near uh, Lake Stanley Draper, live on the air. And then we had just a swarm of tornadoes, uh, outbreak, if you will, tornado outbreak that came out of Blanchard and pushed off to the northeast with all of these multiple storms down here, merging into a couple of big storms. There has been a tremendous uh, weather event unfolding here this evening, for sure, with all the dynamics in place, okay? Let's go to links one, and let me show you what I'm talking about as far as where the severe weather is right now. And it's off to our east, not tornadic, but uh, this is the only game in town. Still a big, gnarly, nasty storm, but uh, it is moving. It's now, look at the hook on this. Brandon's still watching it, <clears throat> and uh, it's going into and just north of Okima. Not tornado warned. It is still rotating, big hail. It just went through Boley. It's going to Wealthy next. Going to have tennis balls in that, maybe a little bit larger, but big hail there. And the hook's going to go right over Okima. So we got to keep an eye on that. It is rotating as it continues to push off to the east. And you're thinking, how long can these things go? They're supercells. They're called that for a reason. Uh, they're very high into the atmosphere. They take over the atmosphere, and they take a long time to die, okay? Looking at velocity data, nothing in here is too scary. We do have an area of spin uh, right back here, a little area right here, a little area of shear. That's the hook. We're watching that, but it's nothing crazy. Shear rate shows that as well as this is moving from west to east. All right, so let's go back to what's the... Uh, What's the radar you have that shows the loop? Lacey. Links one, okay. We're gonna go back to how this whole thing began. And uh, during our four o'clock newscast, this all took off in southwestern Oklahoma. These were all supercells. And we'll just kind of step you through it here. And uh, some of them died. This is how it works. The dominant everything in mother nature, in the world we live in. Uh, you know what I mean? I mean, the, the dominant storms win, they took over. And the smaller, weaker storms died. And so we had this that finally these things got their act together coming out of Grady County into Cleveland and McLean, all super, 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 super cells, rotating thunderstorms coming into and through the city, big hail, moving across the city, storm one, that split, went into Edmond, next storm came through. Uh, this is a storm that produced the tornado near Lake Stanley Draper that uh, uh, Val was on right here and tornado warning right for the, again, North Norman into Moore. And then we had these two storms back here that merged as one. And when that happened, it was lights out. And the low level, what we were saying, the low level dynamics, the tornado parameters were getting higher during the evening. It's exactly what happened. Hook, hook, hook. And everything just kept moving east. And this is the storm. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in on that. That went down through coal. And let's go back to coal. And this is where we have all that significant damage. The tornado's right here. And it went right down the highway. There's the tornado. And then, I mean, you can track the path here. It went over coal with damage and uh, kept moving to the east, and then it made that turn, right? So it started back here, went to the north, and died. And that was serious, right? So that went away, and then everything kept chugging to the east, began to reform again. We had other supercells developing off to our south and southeast, or basically new mesocyclones developing, and that ramped up. And this whole thing's spinning and going, there you go, tornado on the ground there. Um, just southwest of Etowah, that was a significant tornado on the ground doing damage there that we know of. Went north, tornado on the ground, went around pink, and then weakened. And then the next area of circulation developed down here. Here we go again. And watch this ramp up. Now watch, this keeps getting stronger and stronger. <clears throat> and this is the new area. That first area lifted north. This was the significant tornado that went into and through the western and northwestern sides of Shawnee. There's your tornado. Went right across Shawnee, hit the outlet mall, or excuse me, the Shawnee mall on the north side of town, crossed I-40, and uh, trackers were there minute by minute, mile by mile. I can't say enough good things about our trackers and Jim Gardner and our weather team today. I mean, just nobody's better than these guys and gals doing what we do and doing what they do, and that's hunting down crazy Oklahoma weather because we, gosh knows, we have a lot of it. 
So uh, right now we're thinking, again, maybe a dozen tornadoes or so. And that number will change. I've seen EF1 damage. I've seen EF2 damage. Velocity data was uh, supporting that. Uh, other tools that we used were support, supporting EF2 damage. And I think we might have had some EF3 damage in there, at least, on a couple of those tornadoes. Done by Cole and then also uh, southwest of Shawnee near Etowah and southwest of Shawnee. All right, so pretty crazy stuff for sure. All right, let's show, show you some of the video here and just let it roll. I think we have Brandon. Oh, that's from Jim Gardner. Tornadoes on the ground. There's your big cone. That's about an eighth of a mile wide. You're thinking, hey, I can see the, I can see underneath it. Yeah, I know. Trust me, it's on the ground. Condensate's not all the way down at this point, but it was. And uh, there's the big cone. This is coming into coal, right? And that's what went through coal. And uh, that is a significant large tornado from Jim Gardner in Bob Mill Sky News 9. So big cone, lots of motion. And you're thinking, what's all this around that? Looks like smoke. That's all just rain that was trying to wrap in around the, the tornado itself. But um, this thing would tighten up and strengthen. You get the condensate going to the ground. But this is when it was south of Norman, about 15 miles. And that is a significant uh, EF2. And it might have been an EF3. We'll see. Surveys will be done. And uh, we'll determine that, okay? That'll come out over the next several days and over the next week, maybe a little bit longer. But uh, this thing went on and on and on and on. And the, you know, and this is where it just, it gets, it becomes a horrible story if we have that one fatality down in coal. We don't know the age or anything right now, but still, and there's a tornado. Now we have condensate clearly all the way to the ground there. All right, let me show you some of the video from Brandon Pennell. And Brandon had a white knuckle ride. If we can get that video, if we can get it racked up. Let me show it, Brandon. And it, and Brandon was, was right there, and it was coming over the hill. He was west of coal, and then he went through coal, okay? So when he was west of coal, this is what, uh, what it looked like. That's, that's not it. That's I-40. That's going to be I-40 video. I'm talking about the, the uh, Brandon video. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Um, there's Brandon's video. That's a tornado right there, clearly. Um, that's a, uh, what we call a strong tornado, EF2 or stronger. And uh, this thing was coming right at him, right? He's on the west side of Cole at this point on the highway. And uh, this is the one that came right into town. So he let it come pretty close to him. It was coming over the hill. He stopped, went east. Remember, he's doing play-by-play, -play, also trying to survive. But see how smooth this is? On this left side, it's fairly laminar. And uh, that's also a sign of a fairly intense tornado. So it's wide. It's coming at him. And he turns around. Heads east, goes through coal. Coal gets hit just a few minutes later, and uh, and then it puts on another show and it and it gets fairly fairly big again. So um, this would have been on the ground for I don't, Lacey. What do you think? 10, 15 miles, something like that, give or take, give or take 15 miles. And then the problem was that it became wrapped in rain. That tornado was on the ground. There's the left side. The right side, it's hard to see, but trust me, it's on the ground, and. Um, this is what, you know, what it was looking like down there. So there's Bridge Creek. We had one tornado here, and this is the one that uh, hit coal. Here's coal right here, right? And first they got hammered with big hail, and then the tornado came right down the highway. So, yeah, just horrible, just horrible. Um, let's go, oh, we have another shot here. Let's go back out and check in with Hank. Let me see what Hank has. Let's check in with Hank. I wanted to talk to him earlier. And uh, Hank, if you can hear me, um, we're going back through some of your video here, and I tell you what, Hank, some of the video, <clears throat> the wall cloud was huge, but it looked like at one point when you were talking about how big the tornado was down near Etowah, that it, it could have been at least a good quarter of a mile wide tornado. Looking at your video that we've taken, we froze it, looking at those lightning strikes and power flashes, it's a large tornado. And you were saying that the whole time. You were saying it's a big tornado, and uh, it certainly was. Tell us where you are now, what you're looking at. I see you uh, still in Shawnee. Where are you now? What building? Yeah, uh, this is at the Shawnee Mall. This is actually the sign uh, to the Shawnee Mall. But you can tell the whole red iron. And, uh, yeah, multiple buildings here. But like I was telling Amanda earlier, most of this. Well, he, uh, he's in a bad sale area. And also we have... Many, 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 many people using a lot of bandwidth right now over in Shawnee. Lots of people, right? Families, friends, uh, rescue, all that going on, right? So everybody's got a cell phone on right now. And so there's only so many 
o only so many spigots, right? But uh, this, he was saying this is the Shawnee uh, sign over there at the mall in Shawnee. So Shawnee Mall took a direct hit. Took a direct hit for sure. Um, okay, let's go back to, uh, what, what is, does Jeremy have something? I think he's just driving through town, right? He doesn't have any damage. Uh, let's go back. Yeah, oh, Val's on the other side of that building. Let's go back to Val. He's on the campus of OBU. And if you remember, when this was going on, we were saying west, northwest side of Shawnee, tornado emergency, going to Shawnee. And I kept saying, OBU, OBU. Val, tell us where you are and uh, exactly how bad the damage is. That's significant damage for sure. I mean, and it's all over the place, it looks like, at least scattered. Go ahead. Yeah, so, um, David, this is, uh, they're calling this Bailey Hall. It's their business building. It's where everyone goes in and has their business classes. Uh, they probably will not be having classes uh, tomorrow. It's the whole side of this building in the upper story there is ripped off. And, I mean, if you've ever seen the OBU campus, you'll know that all these buildings here are brick all the way up. You can even see the steel girder up in the top. They're very well-built um, buildings out here. And so that one is that one is just ripped. The whole wall is ripped out the side. David, this whole campus is, is basically just has junk everywhere. Trees, tree limbs, sheet metal, uh, all kinds of stuff. There's cars with uh, windows and windshields broken out, quite a few. Uh, one of the students that we talked to said, well, we, we couldn't go back into our dorms because the power was out, and we can't get in our cars and leaves because there's too much glass uh, everywhere. But the great news is, and we talked to one of the officials on campus, and they confirmed that everybody on campus is safe, and several of the students that we were standing there uh, were watching Channel 9, and thank you for your good warnings uh, putting out, you know, for the Shawnee area, because they, they all just basically batten down the hatches, and everybody's safe here. So that's fantastic news as far as I'm concerned. Back to you. <clears throat> that's why we do what we do, but... Um, you hate to see what, what really is coming to, you know, it's so easy to, to, trackers are out in the field, they're doing their thing, we're in here doing our thing, and we're all connected together, but man, when you, when you start to see stuff like this, it really hits home. I mean, it's, it's a reality of what radar is looking at, what our trackers are looking at, and just how fast this can go from everything's fine to within a few seconds, it's not fine, right? And uh, today was a loss. I mean, we, we had a, we had a fatality, and anytime we lose an Okie to, um, uh, anything at all, but to weather, you know, um, it's, it's, it's really, it's heartbreaking. And we did, I had a fatality down in coal due to the tornado. So, and we don't know what else is out there tonight. We had a big tornado near Etowah, big tornado, obviously across I-40 over near Shawnee. So, you know, they're, they're still looking for people right now. There are still people that they're like, hang on, let's just make sure everybody's accounted for here. And we're checking and they're going house to house and that's going to go on through the night. And uh, anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's just sad. Okay, so let's take a look. Oh, but the other big story today, we're, Jess and I were talking about this, all the hail. I mean, big hail, not just quarters and golf balls. We had tennis balls. We had baseball size hail. Uh, Edmond got hammered. Uh, Oklahoma City got hammered. Down through Moore. Nor I, mean, nor I mean, all of the major cities in Oklahoma City, except for places like El Reno, which didn't have really any. Well, I take that back. You're going to have a big storm. Yeah, they had hail out in Yukon, didn't they? Boy, how big was the hail out there? Okay, it was like golf or uh, tennis ball or something? Tennis ball in Yukon. So Yukon had big hail. So we were all in this together, and there, there's a lot. I don't know what the dollar figure is on this, but it's going to be millions and millions of dollars in hail damage. Cars, homes, roofs. Yeah, that, that, that's all going to unfold here the next uh, several days. So there's just a lot of damage. Okay, so big hail, and uh, right now, again, that number of tornadoes is at, at about a dozen. So tracking severe weather off to our east, over near Mason and Castle. Brandon's over there. Um, they're still tracking that east. He's talking. Go ahead. I was just, uh, you were yeah. talking about earlier, is the, this supercell that we're tracking right now still has gone over 160 miles. It is now 1130. This first showed up on radar at 408 in southwest Comanche County. So if you pull up Lynx 5, I kind of showed this on the radar yeah. map, is a, a Lynx, Lynx 5, 5, it shows the storm track. It's Lynx 5 are the traffic, 158 miles. And so 
at 408, you see that little speck on radar there south of Snyder. This is what the evolution of these supercells developed. As you can follow that now into Caddo and Grady and Chickasha, it absorbed another supercell to the west, and it, then that's when it, it really it. started yeah. going out in all that track. And that one supercell is still ongoing there east of Prague. But you can see we had numerous big hailstorms and, again, numerous tornadoes reported. But that one supercell here seven and a half hours later is yeah. still spinning its way in eastern Oklahoma. So big weather day. Yeah, that's incredible. And good observation there. Yeah, I mean, and that's why they call them supercells because they live, they breathe, and then eventually they die. But, man, they have long, long lives, right? Yeah. Jet stream and all that. And you get that. And Jeremy and Brandon are still on that, and you can tell the basis of that storm has, uh, it's much higher up, more elevated, and it's slowly shrinking. But like you've said numerous times, once those storms get rotating, they'll spin them their way out All the way. several hours later. Oh, yeah. It, th this will probably die out near Muskogee or give or take. So I'll have to figure out tomorrow or later tonight how far that, I mean, that's going to add another 40, 50 miles on that. So we're close to 200 miles. Yeah. By, by tomorrow morning or, you know, overnight, the length of that one storm. Uh, it's, it's pretty wild. Okay, so a dozen tornadoes. Lace, I see what you're doing. Let's go back to, are you on Lynx 1 or 2? Let's go back to Lynx 1 here and just kind of give you the perspective there. Nice job, Justin. All right, let's, um, uh, and again, these are sheer tracks. And this okay. is uh, very, very clear on where the storm is spinning, what radar was, the storm was giving us, radar was taking it, interpreting the data, and you can see the sheer tracks of, of the more Norman storm, and then you'll see the next cell that takes off and moves to the east. So this is the, the storm spinning. We were showing shear rate. This is just a montage of all the shear rates put together. There's your tornado path, Etowah, Pink, Shawnee, Makes a curve, goes into the mall, right? And then uh, lifts north. So, you know, uh, Oklahoma City, we're, we're pretty lucky. We had the one tornado in the south metro <clears throat> down by Lake Stanley Draper. Excuse me, Lake Overholzer. And so, yeah, it, you know, could have been much worse. That thing could have, we could have had tornadoes all across the city, but it just, it is what it is. And it was all just to our, you know, south metro, then down towards Cole and over towards Shawnee. Shawnee is still considered, I think, is the metro. It's People live here, and this is almost connected now all the way. So, so tracking severe weather to our east. Trackers are still out and uh, still finding a lot more damage. Guys, back to you. David, thank you. Yes, 30 miles, just 30 miles east of Oklahoma City is Shawnee, and that is where the campus of OBU is. Let's take Val Castor's shot. Val and Amy are out there right now. They've been and as we take a look at their shot, I just want to read you the latest from Oklahoma Baptist University. They say, due to the damage inflicted on campus from the tornadoes, remain inside if safe and do not wander around campus. Administration is assessing the situation and will follow up okay. with next steps. So as soon as we hear anything more about the campus there, we will let you know. Hey, Val's been in a couple of spots yeah. on OBU's campus, and he says it's just an absolute mess out there, and you can see the damage here, and it, I think... Uh, he said that uh, these are well-built buildings, right? It's a brick building right there that, with a big hole in it that the wall just kind of ripped off there. Also, the baseball stadium, uh, the pictures from the baseball stadium, a, a lot more crumbled brick and uh, lighting down. But, uh, yeah, it, it's a mess on campus there. As we talk about the campus here, I do want to pass this along. If you live in the area, Pottawatomie, there's the baseball fields. That's what Carl was just talking about. Pottawatomie County Emergency Management. If you live in the area and you have damage, go to their Facebook page, Pottawatomie County Emergency Management. They have a post. They are wanting people to go to that post and write down if they have damage and write down your location, cross streets, roads, so they can get to them and they can assess the damage and um, just go to those areas. Just if it's any uh, clue to the widespread amount of damage, already 200 comments in that one post of different areas of damage there in the Shawnee area. And there's going to be a command post set up in Pot County as well. Uh, look at Hardesty and Gordon Cooper Boulevard, the Fire Lake Rodeo grounds, and we understand Trooper Eric Foster, who we heard from earlier, he is headed there to assess the damage in Pot County. 
Our crews are out. We have a crew working. In fact, she is in Shawnee. Now we'll talk to her in just a few minutes. Took her a while to get there because I-40 at one point was closed down. May still be closed down. We'll get an update on that in a second. But we want to go back out west now to uh, the town of Cole, right around the Washington area where a shelter has been set up. Tevis Hill is standing by outside that shelter for us. Tevis. Amanda, this tornado is now a deadly one. We just confirmed with the McLean County Sheriff's Department that one person has passed away. They notified the next of kin. We do not know how old this person was. We do not know if this person was inside or outside during the tornado. We just know that one person has passed away. And we're hearing some devastating stories out of the coal area right now. Some people have been able to come to this shelter here at Washington High School where they say their house is completely flattened. So, you know, when the sun rises, we'll see more of that damage. But what McLean County Sheriff's wants you to do right now is if you are trapped inside, of course, call 911. But if you are inside, you don't have power, you just need some assistance to please call this number. I will tell it to you right now. That number is 405-955-4600. This is, again, a number to relieve their 911 um, crews right now. It's 405-955-4600. So I am at Washington High School where they are se setting up a shelter right now. Red Cross just arrived where they're bringing in extra food. We've already seen Oklahomans bringing in food. We have hot dogs, we have soda. I asked some members of the school, hey, what can we tell the public that they need right now? They say right now we do not know. They're still assessing. They're still seeing what the Red Cross can bring in and then they'll tell us that information that we can convey to you. We do have a few families that are inside right now. The Washington superintendent has opened up the high school doors. This is our third shelter that we've been to just because the power is completely gone and coal it's wiped out in parts of Washington as well. So, you know, they're trying to restore power. og and &E is and we'll see what that happens when the sun rises tomorrow. They do want me to let you all know that if you are in a house that just does not have power, please shelter in place. But if you are at a house that's completely torn down, you don't have a place to stay, to please come to Washington High School. Their address is on my Facebook page and their Facebook page so you can find a way here. A lot of people without power, a lot of houses destroyed. It is devastating out here. And again, we do, we have confirmed that one person has passed away. Amanda, Carl. Hey, Tal Tavis, one more time, if you could just kind of describe the scene there with, with people bringing donations and, uh, you know, doing mm -hmm. whatever they can right now. It's, it's so late in the night, but you have uh, dozens, probably hundreds of just volunteers, law enforcement, whoever it is, uh, out there trying to do whatever they can. And, and you were saying they were bringing in uh, uh, food, water, whatever it takes for uh, people working and people who lost their homes. Yeah, so the Washington superintendent is the person that I've been able to talk to this entire time. He says they have hot dogs coming in. One guy said, hey, it's going to be a camp tonight. We're all going to gather together and, and get through this together. They have soda, they have water, they have everything you'd need to, to fill up your stomach, to, to feel good before having to go out there and look at the damage because we are hearing some devastating stories of houses completely flattened, restaurants completely flattened. Again, we haven't been able to see that just because it is dark outside, no power. But when the sun comes up, we'll see that devastation. But again, it's the Oklahoma standard out here. We have people that are, are sitting outside making calls for others. We have power here at Washington High School. We have people inside getting hot dogs ready. So, you know, people will be fed tonight if they need that. Carl. All right. Tevis Hill is reporting live from Washington High School, the site of a shelter there in case you need it. And it's at 101 East Kirby in Washington. And it's not lost on us what today is, April 19th the day the Oklahoma standard was born, and we are seeing that right now already taking place out there outside of Washington High School where the Red Cross is showing up and other people are showing up to help anybody displaced that has their homes damaged in that area. All right, we have Angelusia Bruton. She is now in Blanchard. Uh, the significant damage in Blanchard at the beginning of the evening was all that hail. The massive hail we saw was all coming out of Blanchard earlier, but then that tornado uh, came through Blanchard as well, and Angelica said you, you have more damage to show us. Go ahead. 
Yeah, Carl, I mentioned earlier that it is pitch black here. The only thing I see are just emergency crew lights, the flashing lights coming up and down the street. There's flashing lights at the end of this intersection, and I'm not sure if you guys can see behind me, but there's flashing lights at the end of this one as well. And I've seen several different emergency crews um, working and driving down the street. I've seen Oklahoma City Fire Department. I've seen Dibble. I've also seen Bridge Creek in Grady County. It seems like several different departments are working together here to assess the damage and several of the departments are blocking off the intersections because of things like this. There's this down power line. The post fell and the power lines are blocking the entire street and it looks like that throughout Blanchard. Several neighborhoods have power lines down and the town is completely without power and you guys can probably see this tree line. It's completely bare. There's debris in several of the power lines and also in a lady's home that's on this street. I talked to her. She didn't want to go on camera, but she told me she was home when the tornado hit. She said she wrote it out in her hallway and when she opened her door, her garage was completely gone. She said she's lived in this neighborhood for over 50 years. Um, she said her house didn't sustain a lot of damage. She is going to stay here tonight. She says she doesn't care how dark it's going to get. She's going to be spending the night in her home and she's going to wake up tomorrow morning to see what's left. Live in Blanchard, Angelicia Bruton, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. Angelicia, thank you very much. Reporting there from Blanchard. Let's get back out now to Tevis Hillis with a quick update there uh, at Washington High School. Tevis. Carl, Amanda, devastating news. We have now confirmed a second death out of coal. We do not know the age of the person where they w were killed, whether that was inside or outside during the tornado. But again, a second death has happened. So this is a deadly tornado outside of coal. We are seeing that we are hearing that houses have been flattened. People have been trapped inside. We are getting reports of dozens of injuries. We do not know the extent of those injuries. They say that could range from just a simple cut on the knee to more severe injuries. But again, we are confirming that second death. Amanda, Carl. Wow, Double that's... fatality there in the Washington coal area. Tevis, we appreciate of... the report. We hate to hear that news. Um, keep us posted out there. And dozens of injuries. Uh... And OHP is having to go a lot of places by foot because, or I shouldn't say OHP, they're helping, but a lot of the um, emergency yeah. personnel, they're having to go by foot to get to some of these homes because so many trees are down, so many power lines are down in those areas. Same thing with our crews too, right? I mean, yeah. uh, not only is, is traffic just kind of a bear right now getting out there, I-40 has finally reopened. Just got word because right. I was just talking about that I-40 eastbound, westbound at mile marker 185 right there at the heart of Shawnee. That finally did get reopened there, but it was closed for some time. Yeah, but, but you know, our, our crews, when they got first on the scene there, especially in coal, it was it was just kind of tough to, to drive anywhere with so many downed trees and power lines. And so uh, yeah. that's just, you know, that that's just for the news crews out there. and. Uh, and law enforcement, but uh, they have to, you know, walk to these all these all these homes, these yes. spread out farmlands, and try to go to all these structures to make sure. But they're uh, they're doing a great job. They have a lot of help. A lot of agencies are helping out with this. But uh, it is slow going. It's door to door, and we're talking about at least a 10 mile radius down there in the coal area. It is so dangerous out there. Just getting word that Shawnee Public Schools. That school district has canceled classes for tomorrow. Not only is there a lot of damage in that area, but as you're talking about power lines down, it is dangerous right now. So they don't want anybody getting out. Of course, cleanup will be happening tomorrow. So again, talking about Shawnee Public Schools. Uh, let's take a look from Shawnee if we can, and I'll give you an update because we're just getting it from the Pottawatomie County Emergency Manager talking about what they're doing there right now. It looks like Task Force One, as we mentioned, they were redirected there to the Shawnee area because the search and rescue efforts, those are still underway right now. They have set up a, a post right now, the Task Force One, with that will be their command center, and they're dispatching crews out from there. That's right. And, and uh, you heard from Tevis there at uh, 101 East Kirby Avenue in Washington. And we also know of uh, additional uh, shelters as well. Um, there's the uh, Shawnee Shelter at 1701 Gordon Cooper Drive. Uh, there's also the one Ottawa or Etowa in, uh, it's at 4601 East Etowa in Noble, Noble High School. Okay, there you go. So damage assessments are really ongoing in all areas 
Uh, this is Val and Amy Castor's shot. Let's talk to Val for a second because, Val, now you're starting to drive through the streets of Shawnee. You left OBU's campus. Tell us what you're seeing out there. be able to hear us right now. Val, if we have you, if you can just tell us what you're seeing. If not, we'll just watch your shot here and just see, because this is our first look through the streets of Shawnee. Oh, yeah. So um, there, I'm not for sure exactly how wide the damage path is, but you, know, you drive around the streets over here. Here's what you're seeing. You're seeing sheet metal wrapped around poles and signs and trees. I'm going to turn in, into this neighborhood street right here. And we're going to look around. You're also seeing trees down. You're also seeing emergency vehicles everywhere. Okay, so here's a good example. Look at that yard right there. Um, just tree branches and whole trees down, parts of a roof off. Uh, there was a home back behind us that we just came through. And, you know, this is not even the worst of the damage path, but there was a home with the porch completely ripped off and part of the roof rip, ripped off also. So I'm gonna I'm gonna drive around and I'll go back west into more of the damaged path and see what we can find here. But we're having to constantly dodge trees that are laying around the road. I've had to go in the ditch and actually scrape trees. I don't know how many times here. So it's still a, it's a real chaotic scene. So I'm turning back to the east. There's some tin right up there wrapped around a telephone pole. Um, that's that's everywhere. Trees down in their yards, uh, trees out on the roads, and, and people just walking around, and uh, emergency vehicles. So, you know, our hopes and prayers are that everybody's okay in Shawnee. Um, I haven't seen anything of what I would call F3 damage. Um, you know, everything I've seen so far has been less than that. So that's that's a good sign right there. Back to you. We are hopeful yeah. the injuries are to a minimum there in Shawnee and no fatalities that we've heard of so far in Shawnee. Again, though, two in the coal area. This is uh, Marty Logan's night vision. We saw this earlier. He's in Shawnee there at the Shawnee Mall. And Marty, I understand you've been talking with someone who uh, rode out the storm in a trailer. Go ahead, Marty. Yeah, this trailer is flipped over on its uh, passenger side and her pickup is off over here to the left, not this farm truck. That farm truck hooked onto that trailer with a chain. They tried backing up and going to roll it back over on its wheels, but there's a little too much weight there for that half-ton pickup. I'm going to try to get an interview with this lady. We'll tape it, and uh, she's going to explain what happened here. And this is right on the north side of the mall. Uh, there's a freight door back behind me, a garage freight door that's been blown out and also up on the roof I can see one of the huge air conditioning units uh, that is toppled over and then their entry sign the brick sign it's all gone so quite a bit of damage here and then when you run on north I think it was Kickapoo I'm not real sure power lines leaning over all the way probably for a mile and uh, significant damage in town gas leaks they have roads shut down in Shawnee uh, haven't heard of any injuries. Also, an apartment complex in town. Talked to a police officer there, and there was a roof, partial roof blown off of one of the apartments, and he said he found no injuries there, but a lot of chaos at that scene. So that's it for right now. Back to you guys. Marty, thank you for bringing us that from the Shawnee area. At 7.37 tonight, that is when the tornado went through the small town of Cole and just devastated that community. And it, it looked for a second there, at least on radar, that it may have skirted Cole just a tad, but that wasn't the case. We know of two fatalities in Cole. We're hearing from uh, other families that had to ride this thing out, uh, including uh, a family our Sylvia Corco caught up with when she first got there. Uh, they have a farm there in cold. They went down to their shelter, and their place is now totally lost. Their farm's destroyed. They had animals crying when Sylvia showed up. Heartbreaking to hear. Uh, let's hear from them about riding out this storm. This is Dennis. Go ahead. Tornado wiped us out. That's really all I can say about it. Joe. Lost everything, five cars, house, barns animals 
and everything else we own. This is what we have. <laughs> I'm laughing to keep from crying. My husband said, we've got five minutes to get out there. We need to go. It is a mobile home. And so if we would have been in there, I don't think we'd be here talking to you. Oh, so, so sad. Um, he had a laugh, so he didn't cry. Um, it's just devastating what's going on there right now as homes have been leveled and sadly two people have died in that area tonight. And I think with that family, that was the one where the mother is, is claustrophobic, didn't want to go down the shelter, the grandmother. And so the, the whole family had to convince the grandmother to get below ground, what she did. And you saw that picture. I don't, I don't know if we could pop that up, but that picture, the, the house is destroyed. Everything's gone, but you see that shelter. That shelter is, is underground, and, and they're safe. They made it. And that is there in the coal area. Just if you're not familiar, because it is a small town, if you just, you know, where the center of Norman is, just go about 15 miles south, southwest, and that's where you're going to find coal. It's not too far from Blanchard, and then we're talking about Washington. It's right around there. And there's what you were talking about, Carl. Yeah, that's their house right there. The people you just heard from, that, that's their house. That, that's the mobile home that was just completely destroyed. And then you see the shelter there on the right. That's what they wrote the thing in. And the, the grandmother didn't want to go in at first, but then the, you know, they convinced her to get in. Uh, and everyone's OK. Now, their, their farm's destroyed. Uh, everything they own is, is gone right now, but they they have their health. They, they are alive. They are alive, mm -hmm. and that is a blessing. Uh, that is in the coal area in Shawnee. We have our reporters there. We'll be talking to momentarily. In fact, Natalie Cruz is there right now, just outside of OBU, where she's been talking to students. Natalie? That's right, Amanda. It's completely devastating. We just got here to Shawnee. We are actually on campus right now at Oklahoma Baptist University, which is down the street from the airport. A lot of the public are walking around helping clean up. A lot of sheet metal on the floors. You can see the severe damage behind me right now. The fence is completely knocked off. A lot of sheet metal just flying around, so it's dangerous. We have two students here, Addie and Natalie. You guys, tell me about your reaction to this so far. Where were you when the tornado hit? Uh, we downstairs in the basement of Rayleigh. Whenever the tornado hit, we hit, we heard it go over us. Um, yeah, I, I immediately started panicking. And so thankfully she was like, okay, it's okay. Like, we're in a safe place, you know? And then just like going out and seeing everything, my immediate reaction kept me like, holy crap, you know, because like there was a huge tree overturned, like there was glass that was like stained glass, beautiful, shattered, gone, you know. And thankfully you guys are okay. I saw you guys had your dog with you. You said your dog is okay as well, so yes. that's good news, of course. Where did you guys take cover? Can you guys explain that? Um, yeah, so we were in the uh, in Rayleigh Chapel in the basement. A lot of community members will take shelter there. Um, most of the students who live on campus are required to shelter there during storms. So we were down there, um, specifically in a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Mostly because the dog was overstimulated and needed a quiet space. Yes. <laughs> well, absolutely, right. I mean, they tell us all the time, if you um, feel like you're not in a safe place, get to the restroom, take cover, put a mattress over you, mm -hmm. lay down in the bathroom tub. So that's good. It sounds like you guys did everything you needed to. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me, like I said, we just got here. So how badly damaged is OBU? I mean, it's hard to tell because there's so many, like, because it's so dark outside, but you know there's just like trees uprooted glasses shattered everywhere um oh, there's wow. yes um there is there's a building that has like part of it has a glass roof and that's shattered there's a big there's a big chunk out of one of the buildings there's a wall missing out of another you know it's quite a bit of damage absolutely and you know, a lot of power outages as well over a thousand so far i believe in Pot potawatomi county um and have you guys gotten in contact with your families are they doing okay yeah, my family actually lives back in Tahlequah, so mm -hmm. I guess the storm's headed their way, but um, they've been keeping tabs on me, and I've been keeping them updated with all of the stuff that's going on. So yeah. yeah, yeah, and my family's okay as well. They live up in northwest Oklahoma, so they're fine. Um, my mom was, of course, really worried. Okay. Um, I saw at one point that she had texted me 20 minutes, like 20 minutes ago, and been like, hey, are you okay? And I hadn't responded. So I was like, oh, yeah, we're fine, Mom, I'm sorry, you know. Well, ladies, thank you so, so much for talking to me. I know you guys kind of cut it short and you guys need to get going, but make it out safely. Um, we're going to stay here in Shawnee and bring you guys the latest updates. We just got here, like I said, we still have a lot of searching to do. Um, I'm not sure if Amanda and Carl mentioned, but Shawnee closed 
Shawnee schools are closed for tomorrow. Um, and again, we'll keep you updated. In Shawnee, I'm Natalie Cruz for Oklahoma Zone News 9. Natalie, good job with that interview. I know that a lot of worried parents out there worried about their kids, the college kids at OBU. OBU did just post another update on Facebook saying no injuries have been reported there on campus, but they do say damage is significant. They are still out there doing assessments, and once those assessments are completed, then they will post, make another post, and we'll pass that along to you. But then they end their post with, we welcome your prayers. Yeah, so, so much damage there at OBU, and I know that... Uh, there was there was a lot of warning that it was coming and and i know that dave there was this moment in our studio uh when you're saying shawnee 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 and it was it was getting intense there uh and and so frightening kind of in here to hear from uh, uh brandon out there also just uh with this was a, a big storm that hit shawnee today and um yeah it's just it's it's a miracle we haven't heard of any injuries yet but uh hopefully it'll stay that way but uh this is an impressive storm yeah, and uh, here's the deal, guys. We had, uh, you know, over six, over a half dozen rotating supercells. We just had the two big ones that merged as one that became the, the Shawnee tornado that uh, came into Shawnee. But uh, we were really, we're looking at the data tonight. You go back, the, 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 the tornado damage and the strength of the tornado was stronger when it was southwest of Shawnee. Southwest of Shawnee was a bigger, stronger tornado. When Brandon was there and his winds and he could hear the tornado with his window down, that's when we had real problems, okay? So here's the deal. The early account is going to be at least 12 tornadoes today, at least 12, and uh, just countless number of hail reports, so crazy stuff. Hey, Andrew, is that graphic ready? Yeah, she's dragging it. Okay, she can drag it, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So this, this 12 here, uh, hey, guys, look at this. This is pretty amazing. Uh, the tornado uh, record today is six. Back in 1968 and 2003, <clears throat> and today... We've had at least 12. So we once again shattered a, at least a daily record. Now, the, the record for the month is 54 tornadoes. <clears throat> we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't touch that. But a, a daily record of tornadoes today, 1968 and 2003. So it says a lot. So either way, storms now are moving. They're out of our viewing area off in eastern Oklahoma, so we're doing fine now. If we can, if we can roll some of the video one more time, let's go back to uh, maybe Jim Gardner stuff. And... Remember, Jim was, was east of the chopper. Uh, excuse me, it was east of the storm in the chopper. Looking back to the west here, you have the sun in the western horizon, and there's the tornado. There's the debris shroud. Everything that's a little bit darker, that's the debris <clears throat> underneath the cone, right? The cone's on the ground doing damage. So, and when I was seeing this from that shot and from Brandon's shot, EF2, possibly an EF3. I've seen EF2 damage, I know for sure. So, anyway, what, what a wild day. Guys, crazy day for sure. Uh, calmer now, quiet night ahead. Might have a few more showers later tonight. Guys, back to you. All right, David, thank you very much for that. Uh, we're getting uh, a better look at the damage in Shawnee now. We have our Val Caster who has uh, been driving around, and every place that Val has gone, you've seen v significant damage there on campus. Val, what's the story right now? So, Carl, we're not on campus now. We're just northeast of campus, and actually the damage is worse over here. Uh, what you're looking at right there in front of my truck, that is the front half and the roof of the Boomerang Diner on MacArthur Street in Shawnee. It's a total loss. Uh, there's parts of it still standing, um, but um, it, it's basically a total loss. Also, there's damage in the Brahms parking lot over here. The damage right here is actually worse. I'm going to pull back. And I'm going to turn back around, and you can see there's some big power lines down right in front of us. Look at look at that. And, and this is th this is a common sight around town to see power lines down like this. Pretty crazy stuff going on here. And we're not even over to the Shawnee Mall yet. We're still south of it. Uh, and by the way, we were sitting on the bridge when the tornado came through right by the Shawnee Mall, right before the tornado came through, before we got out of there. So... Man, it's, uh, it's a crazy place up here right now. Back to you. I would say so. Val and Amy Castor with a shot there of Shawnee. Just checking Pottawatomie County right now. 15,000 customers uh, without power there in the Shawnee in the Pottawatomie County area. And I think we're going to go out now to Marty Logan, also in Shawnee. And Marty had showed us a, a, a trailer that had flipped, that a family was inside. There was a woman inside who rode out the storm of the trailer. There she is now. 
Uh, Marty, go ahead. Uh, uh, give us the story of what happened there with her. She's going to talk to you. Oh, okay. Okay. Hi, Matt. Thank you. Appreciate you doing this. I understand that you rode out this thing in a trailer that flipped. Uh, how are you doing? Or were you injured at all? Who was in there with you? Uh, I am here with uh, Marty Logan. And, yes, I rode out this uh, tornado in the middle of a travel trailer. Hey, ma'am. I was stuck a, it's between the bathroom door and a bed mattress and some boxes and a bunch of blankets on top of me and just felt it when it started rolling over. Just kind of rolled with it. That is so scary. We didn't catch your name. Could I get your name? Yes, ma'am. My name's Trinity Johnson. Trinity, how scary. Okay, what were you thinking when all this was happening? I was just praying to the Lord <laughs> that I'd be okay and nothing would come through and enter my body. You know, no no tree limbs or anything like that. Uh, Trinity, uh, kind of talk about the situation here. You, you knew the storm was coming and, and you couldn't uh, find a, a safer place to go. Just... Uh, how, how scary is that? And just kind of describe what you had to do to make sure you thought you could be in the safest place possible. Yes, I um, actually heard the sirens and it was too late for me to get anywhere. So I started pulling uh, blankets and boxes down around me in between the bathroom door and the bed in the camper, in the front of the camper, and threw everything over on top of me and braced myself up against some boxes in the door. And then as soon as it started rolling over, I just kind of rolled with it. I could feel it shaking and trembling and things were hitting the camper and I could hear the trees popping and all kinds of stuff. But um, I survived with no broken bones or anything. Thank good the Lord. Yeah. Boy, once that storm passed Trinity, what did you do? I sat there and tried to find my phone so I could call 911. And as I was doing that, um, some people were trying to come up and see if anybody was in the trailer. What type of damage once you got out of there did you see? Um, the, the, my truck is totally fine, which is amazing, but the camper is totally totaled. There's nothing I can fix on it. <laughs> the camper's on its side now, right? Yes. Wow, well, we're sorry to hear that. We are glad you were okay. That's that's incredible. And, uh, and wow, I guess your, your praying worked, Trinity. It is. Trinity, does this that's change? That's all I could do for the longest time. <laughs> does this change your perspective on anything? I mean, when you go through something like this and a tornado goes right over you. Yeah, yeah, you. It does. It really does change everything really quick. I don't care where I'm at next time I hear the sirens. I don't care if I got to run. I'm going to try to get somewhere. What's tomorrow entail for you? I know there's a lot of damage around that area. Yeah, I've got some friends and stuff that just got here that are going to help me um, try to get the trailer turned back over and get all the stuff out of it for me and uh, help me get somewhere tonight. Well, we, I got some good friends up here helping me. It's great to have good friends at a time like this. Trinity, thanks for talking to us. And, uh, we appreciate you sharing your story with us tonight. Yes, thank you both. All right, good luck to you. Thank you, hon. Oh, wow. how scary. Glad that she walked away from there yeah. without a scratch. Well, I mean, I, I know that there was, there was fair warning on this storm, but there, it, it does reach a point that if, if you don't make a move, if you don't have anywhere to go, you, you got to bear down where you are. And that's and, what she and that, did. And, and that was a tough place to be for this storm. Uh, we have Natalie Cruz, who's also in Shawnee now with uh, more. She's been talking with students, also taking a look at the damage there in Shawnee. Natalie. Yes, Carl, I'm here in Shawnee at the OBU campus at one of their entrances. It took a while for us to get here. If you're coming in from Oklahoma City, part of I-40 is shut down to get into Shawnee, so you have to take the Kickapoo and take a completely direction. A lot of activity going on. I've counted probably 10 ambulances on my way here. Um, we saw one airport hangar that's completely destroyed. A lot of people are walking around, starting to pick up damage, which is incredible to see. That just shows how small of a community this is and see them come together is just amazing. We talked to Addie and Natalie 
earlier they said that they were terrified good thing is is that they're okay they took cover got into a bathroom like what uh, david payne tells us to do all the time if you're in a situation like that so let me show you now what we're seeing here this is a fence right along one of the entrances here at obu this is completely just off. I mean, completely damaged. We have sheet metal flying around, as I mentioned, which is really dangerous in these winds. Um, one got close to us. We had a backup. So you definitely want to be careful if you're outside because you do not want that hitting you. A lot of power lines down as well. And those high lines up that are also um, down as well. We've seen a lot of emergency crews out trying to get things back together. There's several power outages here in Shawnee as well. We're counting around 50,000 uh, from OG and E, and I'm sure we're going to continue to update you on that as well. Um, so like I said, a lot of fences down, people walking around trying to help as much as they can. We just got here like 15 minutes ago, so we're going to keep you guys updated. We're going to head on back down to the airport because we know that there's a lot of damage there as well and see if we can talk to anyone else so they can tell us what they're seeing and what they've experienced. So we're going to stay here in Shawnee all night long. Natalie Cruz for Oklahoma Zone News 9. Natalie, thank you. Thank you for showing us what's going on there. We know the damage is extensive all throughout different spots of Oklahoma, including Shawnee there. We have crews responding. We have crews out there making sure everyone's safe, going structure by structure with the searches. We also have some shelters that have been opened up, and we have three shelters we want to show you here. Uh, to tell you about right now, show you the address as well. That Washington High School, that is one of them. That's at 101 East Kirby Avenue in Washington. Also, you have the Noble High School, that's open right now, 4601 East Etowa in Noble. And Shawnee, the shelter there is at 1701 Gordon Cooper Drive. Meanwhile, Task Force One made up of firefighters from across the state are in Shawnee right now. They are going and doing a grid search, checking to make sure everyone is accounted for. Our storm trackers are out as well, giving us a firsthand look at some of the damage. We want to leave you with a look at some of that damage from one of our storm trackers. We have Brandon Pennell who has been out there. And oh, well, first, this is a photo from the coal area. A house gone, but a family survived right. in that shelter you in see right there. In that shelter right there. And uh, we'll show you some of the other video tornado, but this is Brandon's shot. Brandon Pennell sh shot, and this was uh, incredibly tense moments here. Uh, the, the winds right around him started gearing up. He actually had to move uh, just to get out of the way, and uh, it, it got tense just here. We were just all glued to the screen watching this video play out as Brandon was, was motoring out of there as safely as he could just to make sure he wasn't caught up. Sadly, two fatalities tonight in the coal area. We're working to confirm injuries. Keep it right here on News 9 for the very latest. We'll have the very latest at 4 a.m. starting tomorrow morning.